Chapter 261 Reality 41 and Game 72 I've prepared a surprise for you. Wu Xing held the door handle, but didn't rush to push the door. He turned his head and said to Yi Xingwen mysteriously, Guess what it is? Yi Xingwen looked at the time and ruthlessly reminded him, I have another experiment later. Are you sure you want to waste time on this kind of question? You can't guess it anyway. Wu Xing stopped when he saw that it was going well. The main reason was that the other party's schedule was really too full, and there was no extra time to waste. So he pushed the door open and showed everything behind the door to Yi Xingwen, waiting to receive the other party's shocked expression. The familiar holographic game cabin was placed indoors, showing its presence. The group of people moved quite quickly. He Xingwen muttered in his heart and showed a surprised expression. Holographic game cabin. Why did you bring me to see this? Wu Xing walked into the room. This is your lounge. Wu Xing stopped beside the holographic game cabin and winked at He Xingwen. This is your holographic game cabin. My holographic game cabin? I moved it from your rental house for you. Wu Xing noticed that He Xingwen was not so excited and his high mood also subsided. He was puzzled. You are not happy to play holographic games? If it was just an entertainment facility for me, I would be very happy. He Xingwen said with an expression of I have seen through you a long time ago, but I think you are not considerate enough. What you said? Wu Xing touched his nose and felt a little guilty. Of course this is an entertainment facility. We are not able to make any changes to the holographic game cabin designed by His Majesty the King. He Xingwen glanced at him distressfully. So you can play however I want? You still have to follow instructions. Wu Xing changed his tone. You don't know how lively the holographic game is now. We are short of people. He Xingwen really didn't know how lively the holographic game was. But he was very clear about one thing. China's population base was there. And it was impossible to lack people. He said with a very distrustful tone. You are short of people? You are short of talent. Realizing that He Xingwen was too hard to deceive. Wu Xing had to tell the whole story. You also know how special you are. The expert group's opinion is to give full play to your potential and not miss any possibility. After all, you are still using me as an experiment. He Xingwen glanced at the holographic game cabin and was not very happy. Of course, I am happy to play games. But if the game becomes a job, then the game will not be fun. Wu Xing looked at the time and retreated to advance. The next experiment that requires your cooperation is about to start. What do you have? Ask for it quickly. You can play games. But you can't remotely control my every move. I want to play games freely. Wu Xing bargained with him. It's not necessary to remotely control your every move. Look how long you haven't played games. Your level must be behind. We should at least send someone to help you level up. Right? When your level is up. If there are any large-scale activities. You must be with our own people. Right? How can this be considered unfree? It is obviously a mutually beneficial. Win-win situation. Wu Xing's speaking level has risen sharply. He Xingwen sighed silently and didn't respond. You think too much. Wu Xing said earnestly. The reason why we move the game cabin here is entirely for your physical and mental health. And to add entertainment facilities for you. He Xingwen didn't believe it completely. But he didn't believe a word of it. He didn't respond. Waved to Wu Xing. Indicating that it was almost time. And left directly. He had to take it slow before facing the holographic game cabin. A killer. Wu Xing didn't care that he didn't get an accurate answer from the other party. He had a lot of things to deal with. As soon as He Xingwen left, he also walked in another direction. The lively meeting continued, and Wu Xing's sudden joining did not attract any attention. Wu Xing sat back in his seat, flipped through the documents on the table, glanced at the projection, and turned the documents to the page being discussed. How is the investigation of missing persons in China going? It has been confirmed that many missing persons have died unexpectedly. Some of the missing persons, who have not been confirmed, are being urgently investigated. According to the previous profile of His Majesty the King, the suspected person A, the suspected person B, Wu Xing found the information of these people. They are college students, have good family conditions, and have harmonious family relationships. They have been missing for about the same time. At this time, you can deeply feel how large the population base of China is. So many profiles match dozens of missing persons. And it is impossible to narrow the scope to single digits in a short time. After a paragraph of the report on the relevant situation, another voice sounded. I have a question. Even if the news we received said that His Majesty the King's last whereabouts were to the world projection of another world, 
Will this affect His Majesty the King's whereabouts on Earth? This question arises because they still cannot confirm how His Majesty interferes with the other world. Going to the other world in person is one possibility. But it is also possible that he only enters the consciousness like the player. If he went there in person, then His Majesty's behavior of going to the projection of the world may cause him to lose contact with the Earth synchronously. But if it is just a trace of consciousness, it is difficult to say whether His Majesty's behavior in the other world will affect his normal life on Earth. It is also possible that His Majesty's loss of contact was intentional. As an idealist, after achieving his ideal, he gave up everything without hesitation, which is in line with our previous character profile of the other party. There were discussions at the scene, and people with different opinions argued endlessly. Wu Xing yawned obscurely, not interested in this usual debate. After reading the information, he simply retrieved a copy of He Xingwen's information from his own documents and stared at the information he had read countless times. The colleague beside him also shifted his attention out of boredom. What are you looking at? He Xingwen's file. That guy? He Xingwen's name is so well known that colleagues all speak of him with a sense of familiarity. Why? Did you find any problems? I just feel a little magical. Wu Xing recalled the first time he met He Xingwen. When I first met him, I didn't expect that we would have such a deep connection in the end. You're not even old enough yet. But you're already feeling nostalgic? You should find a girlfriend sooner. The colleague changed the topic. He Xingwen. That otaku. Can find a boyfriend. It's a bit unreasonable that you're still single. Wu Xing flipped back two pages of the file. I'd better give up my high-risk job. Besides, I can't catch up with others in finding a girlfriend now. They are almost getting the marriage certificate. The colleague came over to look at the file again and said in surprise, He Xingwen. He Tong. Hey. Does the name He Tong look familiar? Wu Xing raised his eyebrows. Knowing that his colleague remembered another name on the first marriage certificate after the passage of the same-sex law. And said disapprovingly, There are so many people with the same name. Yes. There are so many people named He Tong in China. The colleague looked away and asked casually, Is He Tong's information clear? If it's not clear, how can it be in our hands? The colleague completely lost interest. Maybe I've read too many character profiles of His Majesty the King recently which makes me a little nervous. But don't you think it's a coincidence? Excluding the fact that He Xingwen dropped out of school. His character background can actually match the character profile of His Majesty the King. I said that the restrictions of this profile are too loose. The university has expanded its enrollment so many times. The streets are full of college students. If you look closely, everyone looks like an idealist. After the colleague complained, the surroundings became quiet. Wu Xing stared at He Xingwen's file for a long time reached out and pulled out He Tong's file and compared the files of the two people. I don't know what he was thinking. He Tong put down his chopsticks, wiped his mouth, and smiled at He Jiangwen beside him. Dad, your braised fish is amazing. He Jiangwen said proudly, That's right. My skill. Who in the neighborhood doesn't know? In the extremely ordinary conversation, the information flowed past silently. He Xingwen opened his eyes and heard He Tong's voice. Wu Xing has doubts about your identity. He Xingwen was stunned, but not surprised. After all, Wu Xing had too close contact with him, and the traces left by His Majesty, the King, were not impeccable. He Xingwen was aware that his vest was in danger. Does it need to be handled? He Tong asked. Some corrections to the end of the information. The other party will not notice any abnormalities. He Xingwen thought for a moment and shook his head. After the experiment was over, he Xingwen walked back to a deserted place and said to Yi Tong, after dealing with the matter of the Special Investigation Bureau, we will go to deal with the matter of the great scientist. He Tong, who was washing dishes, was slightly stunned and subconsciously turned his head to look at his father and mother in the living room. What about uncle and aunt? He Xingwen laughed. It's not like I won't come back. He Tong didn't laugh out loud. He lowered his head and wiped the dishes in an orderly manner with a certain stable pattern with a close connection between you and the Special Investigation Bureau now. Once you go to see the great scientist and disappear on the Earth, even if it's only in just a moment, your identity will be exposed. If you come back later, so we have to solve the problem of the Special Investigation Bureau before that. He Xingwen has been thinking about this for a long time and has considered it very carefully. You can't just walk away. Right? Shall he? Wang Heling called He Tong in the living room. I think tomorrow is a good day. You can get the certificate first. And we will choose a good time for the wedding. 
I will listen to you. He Tong responded and said to He Xingwen, Then how do you plan to solve the problem of the Special Investigation Bureau? He Xingwen was very honest. I haven't thought about it yet. I'll just take it one step at a time. What are you mumbling about? Wu Xing looked at He Xingwen suspiciously. There are no other experiments scheduled later. Let's go and play games. He Xingwen ended the conversation with He Tong and said casually, I'm cursing you behind your back. What have I done to let you down? Wu Xing led the way and said, Play holographic games with you. You've let me down in so many ways. He Xingwen raised his head and said confidently, If you feel guilty. Well, if I feel guilty. Wu Xing sang the same tune, Let you go home early today. That's good. He Xingwen's attention was instantly diverted. It's agreed that I'll go home early today. It's still early. You play the game first. Wu Xing pushed He Xingwen into the door. And when he saw him lying in the holographic game cabin familiarly, he slowly frowned. The eyes went dark, then quickly brightened again. The vast sea of stars spread out in front of He Xingwen, and the planets under his feet slowly rotated. Strictly speaking, this was the first time He Xingwen entered the other world in this way. So he was at a loss for a moment at the login interface. But soon, everything became familiar to him. Golden light lit up in front of him, replacing the vast sea of stars and rows of data popped up. He Xingwen glanced at it roughly, and the first few words caught his eye. The number of people who can be revived at present, followed by a long string of numbers that seemed to have no end. He Xingwen glanced at it, and gave up the idea of continuing to read it. The numbers were out of stock, and completely lost their original meaning. What's more, the game's main console is not really a program that runs according to logic. He Xingwen made a straightforward request. Give me a player template. The data in the golden light changed and became the player's personal panel. He Xingwen picked a template face at random, staring at the full screen of full-level skills and fell into distress. He deleted and subtracted, turning the god-level account into a weak chicken that lagged behind the main force. Finally, he added a few ordinary tasks in progress to this template, disguised it perfectly as an ordinary player, and then chose to log into the game. He Xingwen's eyes went dark for a moment, and then quickly brightened. There was an extra screen in front of him, and the account that he had carefully weakened was looking around in a daze on the screen. Wait, I remember this is a holographic game? Tables and chairs appeared at the bottom of the screen, restoring the dark scene to the familiar bedroom environment of He Xingwen. He Xingwen stared at the familiar scene in front of him for two seconds, got up and opened the bedroom door, and the boundless golden light came into his sight. That's right, this is not a dream but he is playing a computer version of a holographic game in a holographic game cabin. It took some time for He Tong to access the data in order to avoid affecting the main console of the game. He compressed his information flow to the greatest extent. So the explanation came late. You can't use your consciousness to enter the other world like them. Your connection with the other world is at the junction of the two worlds. If you don't appear in the flesh, you can only, like now, use a virtual way to manipulate the empty shell provided by the main console of the game just like a real game. Real game. This word has too many complaints. He Xingwen suddenly remembered his first encounter with He Tong the young and ignorant He Xingwen expressed his dream of playing holographic games. But he has come all the way to now. Even saving the earth and the other world. But he has not played a real holographic game? Isn't this a bit unreasonable? He Xingwen sighed. Although he wanted to continue to immerse himself in this inexplicable emotion but he had already seen a player patting his shoulder next to the character on the computer screen. He Xingwen sat back at the computer desk, with indescribable emotions, put on headphones, and put his hands on the keyboard. If you put aside the memories of the other world and holographic games, the game presented on the computer screen is actually no different from other online games that He Xingwen is familiar with. No, there are still some. The game in front of He Xingwen is obviously more shoddy. The chat interface is in the lower left corner. The character avatar is in the upper left corner. And there is a small column of task boxes on the right. Oh, by the way, it also shows the direction and distance of the ongoing task target like every normal online game. There is a small map on the upper right side of the screen. A bunch of icons on the lower left side of the screen. And a picture in the center of the screen that can be adjusted at any angle. The little people walk around the resurrection point, And bubbles representing speech float out of their heads from time to time. He Xingwen instantly found the feel of playing the game. Unlike the crudely made page. After putting on the headphones, He Xingwen clearly received various sounds around his ears. The discussion of the players. The sound of walking. 
These gave this scene a certain sense of reality, and once again separated this rough online game page from the holographic game. He Xingwen glanced around, and even found the voice communication button in the row of icons in the lower right corner. I'm fine. He Xingwen hurriedly stopped the player from shaking him, and took a closer look at the player. The other party was staring at a player nickname, Washing. If you remember correctly, it was Wu Xing's game nickname. Xing Han Kian on. Wu Xing read, He Xingwen's character nickname, if it comes from it. Chow Chow's viewing the sea. Cultural man. He Xingwen searched in the expression column, and gave him a thumbs up. But why is it still you? I am responsible for you. Who else can it be? Wu Xing muttered, I am a super god. Just wait to be carried away. Show me your personal panel first. Let me see how far behind the main force you are. He Xingwen slowly clicked on his character panel, and chose to open his personal panel to be honest. After such an operation, He Xingwen completely lost his expectations for the game. This page is too crudely made. And this operating system is too much like a domestic online game. He Xingwen turned off the voice call button and seriously gave the game console a suggestion. Although I am the only one using this thing. Can't you provide some VIP treatment? At least make the game interface better? Look at this game screen. How shocking the buildings are in the real environment. But on your page. They are all like shoddy construction. The game console was too lazy to even turn on the golden light. He Xingwen didn't expect it to accept suggestions humbly. He just couldn't help but complain. The monument in the city center. What a shocking. Meaningful building. On He Xingwen's computer screen. It was just a pillar sticking out of the ground, an uneven pillar. And as for the relief? It was blurred into a texture with extremely poor quality. Not to mention being shocked. He Xingwen turned the screen with a blank expression throughout. With only one thought this game must have been made by a rubbish manufacturer to make money. Of course. Since this game can't make money, it can only prove that the game console manufacturer is a complete rubbish manufacturer. Wu Xing checked He Xingwen's personal panel and said in a shocking voice, You are a bit too far behind the main force. Aren't you? You are only level 3 forger? Your self-created skills have not been upgraded to level 1 or above? He Xingwen reminded him, I am a successful entrepreneur. So it is normal that you are busy running the company and don't spend time playing games. Right? Wu Xing said sincerely, but your data can only prove that you are not serious at all. Right? He Xingwen emphasized again, and since I joined our company, I haven't logged into the game for several months. As soon as this sentence came out, the players wandering around cast shocked eyes. He Xingwen also saw that many characters had text bubbles floating above their heads. And of course, the other party's voice also sounded in the headphones at the same time. Doesn't this game have a minimum daily login time? What company can force employees not to go online? Are you stupid? The state can unlock this mandatory rule. I heard that those special forces are sometimes too busy to play games. But even state-owned enterprises encourage their employees to play games. Right? What company can blatantly violate state regulations? Seeing that the eyes of the surrounding players were not right. One of the players pointed out the key point. Hey, is it Master Washing? There must be a hidden story. I remember that Master Washing has an official background. Right? Yes. Didn't he organize several unions to cooperate in dungeons before? Master. Sign for me. Master. Take a photo? The crowd began to commotion. Wu Xing lifted He Xingwen and tore open the scroll of returning to the city and disappeared in the encirclement of the players on the spot. Of course, that was what Wu Xing saw. The picture He Xingwen saw was different. The icon of using the scroll of returning to the city appeared on Wu Xing's game character. And then a cutscene jumped in front of him. After the short cutscene finished the progress bar, the computer transition was completed and a new scene was changed on the screen. He Xingwen thought about it, took out a bottle of Fat House Happy Water from the void, leaned back, and comfortably started his esports journey. The new scene on the screen was very unfamiliar. He Xingwen looked at it several times, but still couldn't match it with any place in his mind. He looked up and landed on the small map next to him. The name of the place was marked on the small map, Diamond Empire. He Xingwen suddenly realized and looked back again. He finally distinguished the shadows on these buildings, as the reality of luxurious decorations. This should be an extremely luxurious and lively human city. Anyway, He Xingwen can still see the liveliness from the NPCs walking around nearby. As for the luxury, it's a little difficult. This game doesn't have a setting to hide nicknames. Wu Xing said half showing off and half complaining. A great player like me is too easy to be harassed. 
I've seen your situation. Let's start with a simple mode. Wu Xing put his arm around He Xingwen's shoulder and raised his hand and said, Welcome to the Bounty Hunter's favorite country Diamond Empire. Chapter 262 Global Public Beta 73 Changes in the Other World What will the other world look like after 20 years game time? When He Xingwen first learned that 20 years had passed, he had thought about this question. For humans on Earth, 20 years is nearly one-fifth of a long life. Enough for a country to be revitalized and stand on top of the world again. But for the other world, 20 years is just 20 years. There are not many immortal species in this world. But there are also not many short-lived species. The majority are intelligent creatures that can live for hundreds or thousands of years. So even though His Majesty the King established a new continental order 20 years ago, injected vitality and vitality into the continent, and brought a new order and scientific path. The biggest changes in these 20 years are still the human-dominated countries and the Knowledge Hall organization that came out of thin air. As for the indigenous people with long lifespans, it is difficult to change anything in just 20 years. After all, it takes more than 10 years for mages to study a spell. He Xingwen moved the game character with the mouse, trying to discern more specific changes in the world from the screen. He tried hard, but the objective conditions were there. The perfunctory texture made it difficult to tell whether the thing was a pillar or some other building. Let's go. Take the mission. Wu Xing led He Xingwen to the building behind him. He Xingwen controlled the game character to follow Wu Xing's footsteps and suddenly realized that it was no wonder that there were so many players here. It turned out that they had directly arrived at the station of Azijin in the Diamond Empire. Wu Xing walked into the door and the cutscene flashed again on He Xingwen's computer screen. Can't this small scene be merged into the big scene? And the cutscene needs to be loaded? He Xingwen was puzzled from the bottom of his heart. Although I know you are perfunctory to me. You can't be so perfunctory. He Tong came out and said something fair. Currently, the main game console is providing gaming experience for billions of players. In this case, we can only do this to open up an external program for you without affecting its normal operation. If we want to continue to optimize He Xingwen's gaming experience, we can only weaken the gaming experience of other players. He Xingwen gritted his teeth for a long time and made up his mind. We will go to the great scientist in two days. As for now, he can only bear with this shitty gaming experience. Although there are many cutscenes, the main game console is not crazy enough to waste unnecessary time on them. After the cutscene flashed, a new scene appeared in front of He Xingwen. He Xingwen can understand why the scene change needs a cutscene. Because there are so many players here. It is much more lively than outside. In fact, because the players have too high a demand for tasks. The main purpose of this building is to accommodate enough players. Therefore, a vast indoor area came into being. Counters with different responsibilities are arranged along the edge of the room in a semi-arc shape. And above the semi-arc, there is a huge display screen that randomly refreshes various tasks. Players call their friends and struggle in the crowd. From time to time, White lights of teleportation and death flash. Many players leave after accepting slash handing in tasks. But there are also many players pouring in from outside. So that the crowding of players in the task hall has not been reduced at all. In holographic games, this kind of crowding is very realistic. But on a computer screen, this kind of crowding can only be regarded as part of the game experience. He Xingwen swept his eyes and found a series of NPCs with exclamation marks on their heads. He Xingwen walked towards the NPC. Wu Xing was still trying to squeeze out of the crowd. And saw He Xingwen had already jumped into the crowd. The action of jumping into the crowd was too slippery. And Wu Xing had some self-doubt for a moment was it because I squeezed in the wrong way that I couldn't get into the crowd. When he tried to imitate it, but caused complaints from other players. He realized that it was not that his way of squeezing was wrong, but that the other party seemed to have special skills. He Xingwen who was bored and pressed the W key to control the game character forward. Yawn. Stopped in front of the NPC. Clicked the NPC. And started a conversation. A task dialog box popped up on the screen. Dear warriors. The mainland is waiting for you to save. He Xingwen directly ignored the background and set his sights on the selection bar. 1. Single player mission. 2. Team mission. When He Xingwen paused on the team mission option, he realized that Wu Xing seemed to have disappeared. He squinted his eyes and tried to distinguish Wu Xing from the densely packed nicknames of players. But soon, he slapped his head and clicked on the chat box in the lower left corner of the screen. This chat box was no different from the online games He Xingwen was familiar with. 
It was divided into multiple channels, including the world channel, nearby and private chat. He Xingwen clicked on the private chat, entered Wu Xing's player nickname, and sent a message, where are you? Take the team mission directly? Wu Xing was thinking about life among the vast number of players, and was caught off guard when he saw the system prompt player Xing Han Kanlin. Has opened private chat with you. And then, He Xingwen's voice rang out in his mind. You are too biased in your studies. Wu Xing couldn't help but complain. You don't study your profession well. Don't practice your skills well. But you open private chat first? Of course, it's a team mission. When the time comes, I will take you flying and let you see what a great god is. He Xingwen clicked on team mission. And a new mission dialogue box was refreshed. Many strange things have happened on the mainland. He Xingwen glanced over these words and looked directly at the selection bar. 1. Strange voice mission details 2. Unknown fear mission details 3. Noble death mystery mission details. He Xingwen clicked on them one by one moving the mouse quickly, skipping the mission introduction, and accepted them all, until the NPC prompted that he could not accept new missions before the mission was handed in. He changed to a new NPC to get the wool. He Xingwen walked around the counter, skipped all the task introductions, accepted all the tasks that could be accepted, and then met Wu Xing again in the corner. Which tasks did you accept? I should be the one to accept the tasks. The players who accept the tasks have different levels and skills and the difficulty of the tasks they accept is also different. At your level, you can probably only accept the simplest ones. He Xingwen shared the tasks with Wu Xing. Wu Xing's chattering voice suddenly disappeared. He Xingwen didn't care. He just regained his game feel by accepting tasks crazily, although the game graphics are shoddy. The other parts are not shoddy. At least it has everything a game should have. Let's go do the mission. He Xingwen looked at his mission list. A qualified domestic online game knows how to consider the player's IQ and clearly mark the distance between the mission target and the player, so that the player can have a game experience of completing the mission easily. He Xingwen stared at the mission location and rubbed his hands. He didn't care that he didn't get Wu Xing's response, and said to himself, Let's go! Wait a minute. Where did you get so many missions? Wu Xing was not shocked to be speechless. After seeing that He Xingwen had received so many missions, Wu Xing immediately sent a private message to his acquaintances and got a lot of free labor. Hua Xing, 20 bounty hunter missions. Are you coming? Yi Quan, coordinates. Wang Xian, come right away. Wait for me. LV Yi, was it your turn to be on duty in the novice village yesterday? You didn't come again? Dudu, we are one family. So where are you? Brother. Luan Luan Luan, 20 bounty hunter missions. There is another big job? Save a place for me. Lee, I'm in the new world. I can't catch up. I remember this brotherly love. Oh, Huang Wang, I just finished the bounty hunter mission. Where are you? I'll come find you. From Ezijin. He Xingwen walked out of Ezijin station. And after another cutscene, he continued, Didn't you say you were going to take Ezijin's mission? The point is that there are so many missions. While replying to the message, Wu Xing casually said, each player can only take up to three Ezigen bounty hunter missions. Why did you take so many? What the hell? I'm just entering the game. And I'm going to be exposed? He Xingwen was shocked for a moment. But then he quickly realized that the reason he played the computer version of the holographic game was because he couldn't enter the other world through the holographic game cabin. In other words, this computer version of the game character has nothing to do with He Xingwen. Even if AI Xijin wanted to give him a backdoor for the sake of His Majesty the King, he couldn't know the relationship between this round guy and His Majesty the King. He Xingwen calmly opened the character panel and found the problem. The game main console provides a full level template. He Xingwen removed a bunch of things to disguise himself as an ordinary player. But some things were gradually developed in the two years when He Xingwen disappeared. The experience of He Xingwen's last modification of the player template could not be applied to two years later. So he missed a data and didn't change it. And this data is called player achievement. Player achievement is not a new thing. This is what He Xingwen did before in combination with He Tong's proposal. And it comes with all races and new civilization illustrations. However, two years ago, achievements were just a new system that had just appeared. And two years later, countless liver emperors turned it into a mature system that had been fully explored. At present, all ordinary achievements have been unlocked by players. And one-fifth of the special achievements have been lit up. The remaining special achievements that have not been triggered have basically been summarized into triggering modes. 
not to mention the race atlas of intelligent creatures and the progress of new civilization exploration. The race atlas of all races in this area of the continent has long been unlocked. And now the masters are working hard towards the race atlas of all races in the entire world. The overall list of new civilization exploration progress has also been pushed to 34%. Considering the large number of new civilizations at the outermost edge of the continent and their brutality, it has only been two years to achieve this point, which is definitely due to the number of player deaths. In short, He Xingwen's full level account can also be called a full achievement account. He Xingwen glanced at the achievement page. His heart trembled, turned off the voice call button, and urgently asked for help from the game main console. This full achievement is too exaggerated. Anyone who sees it will suspect that there is a PY transaction between me and the planner. Please delete all the achievements that no players have achieved. Jin Guang moved very unwillingly. When Yi Xingwen clicked on the achievement page again, his heartbeat finally returned to normal. Wu Xing waited for a while before waiting for He Xingwen's explanation. I got a special achievement called Business Friend by increasing the favorability of AI Shijin. He Xingwen clicked on the achievement and read the introduction, saying, Like you. I can only accept three bounty hunter missions from one AI Zhijin. The difference is that I can accept three missions from each AI Zhijin. Wu Xing narrowed his eyes suspiciously. Ezijin's favorability is so high that he doesn't even give players a discount. How can such a black-hearted businessman get a special achievement? How much favorability did you get? He Xingwen was about to answer. But Oh Huang Wang, who was nearby, found them first and overheard them. He said in a lost voice, Ezijin has a special achievement? With a swish, the players who were eavesdropping nearby finally turned their heads and showed He Xingwen and his friends a burning gaze. Although He Xingwen didn't feel it, Wu Xing and O Huang Wang, who were the focus of everyone's attention, reacted instinctively, fully demonstrating the hand speed of the masters who have been pursued by players for many years. The cutscene flashed on the computer screen again. He Xingwen's calm tun tun tun. He drank a bottle of Fat House Happy Water. After the short cutscene ended, the scene on the screen changed to another unfamiliar place. He Xingwen learned from the last lesson and didn't embarrass himself. He directly glanced at the nickname on the small map, Novice Village. Novice Village? He Xingwen turned his perspective. But he couldn't compare the surrounding scenes with the Novice Village in his impression. The city planning of Novice Village is an upgraded content that comes with the kingdom. But after He Xingwen disappeared, some new changes have taken place in the city planning of Novice Village. The vehicle drove above the sky and drove directly into the high-rise building from the upper floor. The green landscape and unknown technological products on the ground replaced the original road, leaving only the sidewalks that allow intelligent creatures to walk. And those unknown technological products are really difficult to recognize their functions in the crudely made maps. The only thing that can be confirmed is that they appear every other section of the road, neatly arranged all the way to the farthest point. Above these large pillars, there is a flashing light of traffic order, which also serves as the traffic light above the sky. This is the player's base camp. He Xingwen remembered that after handing over the novice village to the players, he even withdrew the NPCs. But at this moment, He Xingwen saw many druids on the screen. They appeared in the green belt and were in harmony with the surrounding environment. What happened to this world? In just two years, players can coexist peacefully with druids? However, the appearance of druids made He Xingwen understand why large-scale green plants covered the roads on land. It is impossible for players to take the initiative to implement the concept of protecting the environment so thoroughly unless they have to do so. He Xingwen was worried about the huge changes in the novice village. But Wu Xing and Oh Huang Wang did not realize this. For them, all this had long been commonplace and there was nothing special to introduce. Okay, let's go. Wu Xing took He Xingwen and the others into the nearest pillar. This not only has the function of a traffic light, but is also a building? As soon as He Xingwen entered, he realized that this was not a building, but an elevator. The square box closed again as they entered. There were no floor buttons inside the box. Wu Xing directly input ether, and complex ether patterns emerged on the surface of the unknown material, which changed as Wu Xing input ether. You have been located at the central square. I wish you a pleasant journey. As this voice sounded, the elevator, started to operate on its own. And as the elevator operated, a screen emerged from the wall and began to play the projected video. A bridge across the universe emerges in the vast universe. At the end of the bridge, the camera zooms in suddenly, and the broken void 
and the hideous races of all colors come into view. The camera passes them without hesitation and goes further away, taking in the intelligent creatures fighting, struggling, or even lazily resting below. These are not the main objects it shows. Its sight has always been on the wreckage occupied by those intelligent creatures, those world wreckages that occasionally appear in the broken void. All warriors on the continent. The new continent is there. Opportunities. Gold and powerful forces are there. Come. Explore the new continent with us and spread the order of the continent to the whole world. His Majesty the Immortal King. The Ezija New World Branch is waiting for you to join us. Contact this number and join us. He Xingwen only reacted after hearing the last part. Advertisement? The elevator that was going up shook slightly and suddenly flew out of the big pillar horizontally, seamlessly connected to the sky road, and continued to move forward towards the destination. At the moment of leaving the big pillar, a small transparent window appeared on both sides of the elevator for passengers to see the scenery. As a computer player, He Xingwen can see more than the holographic players trapped in the elevator. The screen lit up. Countless roads carrying various types of transportation run parallel in the sky. The traffic control port at the end of the road directs the dense traffic to different roads. The roads converge at the control port and separate from the other end. How to describe this scene? Even such a crudely made picture cannot conceal its sense of science fiction. Western fantasy game? No. This is a world that has conquered the sky and the ocean, and set its sights on more distant places. Azijin is so rich that Lee has revitalized the economic flow of the novice village by selling advertisements. Awesome. When it comes to this, Wu Xing still finds it difficult to suppress his admiration for Li's inspiration a few years ago. But wasn't the recruitment advertisement for mages put out a few days ago? How come it was changed to the advertisement for Azijin recruiting adventurers so quickly? Oh Huang Wang knows something about the inside story. The Continental Conference held a few days ago raised the level of the expansion of the new world. So the recruitment advertisement for Azijin was given priority. Wu Xing was a little surprised. Is there any progress in the research on world projection? No. It's still the same. But the Hall of Knowledge announced that the great scientist's scientific system has entered the supplementary stage. Oh Huang Wang winked at Wu Xing, you know. It needs more information from new civilizations to supplement the scientific system. He Xingwen was shocked the whole time. My mental journey went from what? Mages actually need to put recruitment ads in the novice village? To Continental Congress? Raise the level of expansion of the new world? To more new civilizations to supplement the scientific system? My head was full of question marks. And I couldn't find a chance to ask questions. This amount of information is too explosive for a player who is still living two years ago. He Xingwen coughed. Pressed the voice call button. And interrupted the conversation. I haven't been online for such a long time. And the mages are still recruiting? Ah? By the way. This is? Oh Huang Huang's attention was attracted by him and he turned his head to look at this strange player. I haven't seen it before. Isn't it a beta player? A colleague of mine was busy with other things before, and hasn't played the game for several months. Wu Xing said lightly, I helped him catch up with the game progress. Oh Huang Wang showed an understanding expression, and answered He Xingwen's question. That's right. After the Hall of Knowledge covered the entire continent, the research of mages entered a blowout period, and the number of players who needed help increased sharply. You don't know how much the mages disliked the players when the game first started. But now they are really popular. Wu Xing said on the side. It's mainly because the thinking mode of players is closer to the scientific system. Isn't the expansion of mages recruiting to make up for their own shortcomings? Yes. Those great wizards have lived for so long. It is really difficult for them to change their thinking mode all of a sudden. He Xingwen still had other questions to ask. But this short trip had already reached the destination. The box shook slid into a building from the air road, then quickly descended, and finally stopped steadily, arrived at the central square. As the elevator was restarted, a cutscene flashed on the computer screen again, and a new scene appeared in front of He Xingwen, a large pillar with a fuzzy texture and uneven surface according to He Xingwen's experience. This should be a monument in the city center. No wonder it is called the central square. He Xingwen sighed, and took a closer look at the buildings on the screen and struggled to distinguish those in the city center, the business building of Ezijin, the dwarf factory, the warehouse, etc. Wu Xing and his team took He Xingwen into the political center of the novice village, the administrative bureau. This is currently the only area where ordinary players do not have the authority to flood in on a large scale. 
and it has basically become an exclusive place for great players to gather. Several players were already sitting in the meeting room. Yi Quan, Wang Xian, Dudu, and Wang Lun were all there. When they saw Wu Xing and the others, they all stood up and greeted them. Changing the location halfway? Were you caught by other players? Brother, come on. Share the tasks quickly. Where did the 20 or so bounty hunter tasks come from? Did you find a game bug? Hey, this player has never seen this before. Your friend? Wu Xing answered the questions of this group of people with ease. Don't say it. I was almost left behind. You didn't see that scene, Xing Han. Share the tasks with him. What bug? Do you know the special achievements, by the way? I want to introduce my friend here. Wu Xing pulled He Xingwen to his side and introduced him to them. I have a colleague who is busy with work and hasn't been online for a few months. This time I am online mainly to help him catch up with the main team as soon as possible. You are helping him gain experience? As a famous lone ranger, Yi Quan was immediately unhappy. Why didn't you say so earlier? I haven't finished yet. Wu Xing, he had previously achieved the special achievement of Ezijin by himself. Otherwise, why do you think I have more than 20 bounty hunter tasks? As soon as these words came out, everyone's ears stood up. Ezijin has special achievements? Hey, brother, add me as a friend and we can talk about it in detail. Why didn't you say so earlier? I'm a professional in leading people to level up. And I have several special monster spawning locations. Xing Han is brilliant. How lucky you are. Then, I will call you Xing Han along with brother Xing? Xing Han. He Xing Wen was shocked by this nickname. And immediately corrected, we are all friends. Just call me He Xing Wen. Yi Quan bumped into Wu Xing and sent a private message. Your friend is not young. And he revealed his real name right away? Wu Xing didn't reply. In fact, on the contrary, He Xing Wen was younger than most people present. Special achievement of Ezijin. He Xing Wen glanced at the description of the achievement page and said, it's not difficult to get it. As long as you don't charge for 100 consecutive Ezijin tasks. Yi Quan, damn. I knew that Ezijin was a person who would take advantage of others. How could he give special achievements so easily? 100 tasks? At my current level in skills, the difficulty of the tasks I can accept is off the charts. I don't want to be paid for such difficult tasks. I'm crazy. It's most convenient to get this special achievement when your level and skills are not up. But what kind of player would not charge for 100 consecutive tasks? As soon as this sentence came out, everyone looked at He Xingwen. It seems that the character of the old antique, who is not good at games, cannot be changed for a while. He Xingwen, you can't imagine it. I got this achievement for free. Chapter 263 Global Public Beta 74 It's not that the masters haven't come into contact with players like He Xingwen. After all, holographic games are different from other games. They are actively promoted by various countries and gradually become a kind of must-have. Race, gender, age, and nationality are irrelevant. Elderly people who have never been exposed to online games are also groping to adapt to this new era. Ordinary people in the tide of the time sometimes find it difficult to perceive the changes that are happening around them. If a few years ago, someone said that the whole world would play the same game, and even the official required ordinary people to actively participate in the game. It would sound like a foolish dream. But now, this has become a reality. Holographic games and spiritual revival. These two new elements reconstruct the familiar world and make it part of the new world. After a brief and subtle silence, He Xingwen, who was labeled as an old antique, knew nothing and manipulated the mouse to share these tasks with the players present. After Wang Luan lamented that it was too difficult to obtain the strategy, the soul of the god of strategy began to shine. It is difficult for us to get this special achievement. But isn't it very convenient for new players? Wang Luan looked at He Xingwen. He, he brother, what do you think about me writing a strategy for this special achievement? Let's not talk about the fact that this special achievement can give more bounty hunter missions. Even if it has no effect at all. As long as it is called special achievement. It is enough to drive achievement fans crazy. He Xingwen was stunned by Wang Luan's sudden brain circuit. Huh? Seeing He Xingwen's reaction. Wu Xing immediately jumped out to argue. Then what about He Xingwen's level and skills? Wang Luan patted his chest and said, Leave it to me. We are all brothers. And we are family. I must accompany brother He to practice experience and skills. Wu Xing was satisfied and winked at He Xingwen. He Xingwen didn't receive his wink with this crude painting style. He still wanted to capture the subtle expressions of the game characters? 
Dream on. In He Xingwen's eyes, the game characters around him were all Gaussian blurred little people, and it was good enough to see what their faces looked like. However, not receiving Wu Xing's look did not prevent He Xingwen from following their words and saying, I have no objection. Great. I will definitely be able to beat that by Xiaosheng this time. Wang Luan's happiness was very simple. Just because you are named by Xiaosheng. Do you really think you are by Xiaosheng? You actually want to compete with me for the title of Strategy Master? He Xingwen was at a loss for a moment. And simply opened another search page on this computer. Entered by Xiaosheng Holographic Game. And a bunch of information popped up. Quickly filling He Xingwen's knowledge gap. Although Wang Luan was not serious in He Xingwen's eyes. He was indeed a serious strategy master. During the internal test, he was the first to give strategies to new players for several large-scale tasks, which established his status in the world. However, as holographic games gradually became popular and more and more players entered the game, the probability of hidden dragons and crouching tigers among the players was too high, so that many newcomers appeared in the later period, and Bai Shaoshan was one of them. To be precise, Although Bai Shaosheng and Wang Luan both gave strategies, the areas they covered did not completely overlap. Wang Luan's strategy is very down to earth. Usually the optimal solution for various task processes, equipment for new players, and so on. Bai Shaosheng's strategy is a bit high end. He directly targets large dungeons, enemy NPCs, and large battlefields, filling important nodes for the player's later development. At a time when new civilizations frequently rub against mainland civilizations, he is superior to Wang Luan. He Xingwen simply looked through the opponent's strategy. And for a moment, he suspected that this person was also a staff member of the Special Investigation Bureau. Wang Luan's loss was not unfair. But the opponent was ridiculously strong. This kind of detailed dungeon content introduction. Various clearance mode lists. Weaknesses of different new civilizations. Offensive and defensive modes of large battlefields. Either there is an entire organization busy with these strategies or the opponent is a special ability person in the brain field. The conversation in the game continued. After Wang Luan complained indignantly, the comfort of the other few people was very perfunctory. It was obvious that everyone knew the gap between Bai Shaosheng and Wang Luan. Yi Quan, come on. Dudu, right. Right. Wang Xian, who else could be the master of strategy? Oh, Wang Wang, who spoke last. Changed the subject. Which mission should we do first? Wu Xing took the opportunity to change the subject. These are all missions of the Diamond Empire. Let's classify them first. He Xingwen switched back to the game page, glanced at the mission list on his right with the exact distances marked, and quickly classified these missions. His classification was very rough, purely based on the distance between the mission targets. He finished the nearest mission first, and then swept all the way according to the mission location. Wu Xing and the others were still looking at the task details one by one. After two years of training, Players have already roughly classified the most common bounty hunter task types in the Diamond Empire. The first ones to bear the brunt must be the tasks related to the unspeakable things. These things are born from desire. And humans are a race with abundant desires. In addition, the public resentment caused by the oppression of the lower class by the upper class under the feudal system directly created the current situation of the unspeakable things in the human kingdom. Desires are out of control. And in turn devour the original heart. The gradually growing evil thoughts drive the agents and expand the believers to strengthen their own power. This is the standard process for the birth and strength of the unspeakable things. However, most of the human deaths will occur in this process, causing panic among the people around. The appearance of players has caused the employment remuneration standard of Ezogen to plummet, providing a best solution for the panicked ordinary villagers. This group of visitors from another world are simply crazy and they have no objection even if the remuneration is only a few copper coins. Therefore, before the unspeakable things have grown up, the commissions from the villagers often appear in Ezogen's hands. In fact, after Ezogen cooperated with the king to launch the bounty hunter mode, the living environment of the unspeakable things quickly deteriorated. In the past, the unspeakable things, which used to cause trouble like the arrival of evil gods every ten years, have not caused any major evil sacrifices in the past 20 years. Apart from the unspeakable things, the most common bounty hunter missions in the human kingdom are inevitably linked to the nobles for the same reason. The players, a group of visitors from another world, not only have no objection to the low mission rewards, but also have no objection to the identity of the mission objects. Low mission rewards? Player, it doesn't matter. 
Who really cares about that little money? The point is to get favorability. Can I just get some experience? The mission targets nobles? Player, NPCs are equal. Except for those who can issue special missions. This directly led to a lot of bounty hunter missions related to nobles being posted anonymously. Such as robbery, spying on secrets, murder and arson. Seeing that players were about to kill all the nobles of the Diamond Empire in the name of bounty hunters. Diamond Karen III finally came late and communicated with the kingdom. Drawing a clear line for bounty hunter missions related to nobles to preserve the glory of the nobles. At least people must be alive. But even so, missions targeting nobles are still increasing. In addition to these two categories, the most common bounty hunter missions also have a special category, slave traders. The decree allowing slave trade was abolished by all countries a year and a half ago. But this long-standing huge trade will obviously not stop spontaneously in such a short time. At most, the slave trade has changed from blatant to illegal smuggling. Even though players actively participated in the suppression, it still did not disappear from the continent. Most of these tasks to combat slave capture and trade were commissioned by Ezogen. This was a semi-official commission. Once Ezogen knew where the slave traders were, he would issue relevant tasks to players to track and attack them. Apart from these three most common tasks, most of the other tasks were commissioned by some aborigines on a whim to Ezogen, such as finding people, and other weird tasks such as plowing land. Wu Xing and his team spent some time to classify these tasks. After the classification, He Xingwen, who had been waiting for a long time, waved his hand and became the team leader. Can we go back to the Diamond Empire? Let's do the most difficult tasks first. Such as this unknown fear, which is obviously, He Xingwen thought that Wu Xing and his team were ready. He moved the mouse and clicked the teleportation scroll he had just taken out of his backpack. A large map popped up on the screen. He Xingwen clicked on the Diamond Empire on the large map. And the large map changed to the Diamond Empire map. He Xingwen clicked on the specific address again. After completing the teleportation scroll positioning behavior, the screen flashed and a cutscene popped up. Before Wu Xing finished speaking, he saw He Xingwen directly use the teleportation. So he hurriedly tore open a teleportation scroll. A teleportation scroll could not teleport so many players. After the cutscene ended, there were only three lonely players standing there on the screen. And the others disappeared. Oh Huang Wang looked around. Where is this? How did we get here? Wang Luan sent the location to others and said, Did you set the wrong location? It's okay. I often look at the wrong place. I'll give you the coordinates. No. It's here. He Xingwen pressed the keyboard and controlled the game character to walk towards the nearby mission location. Saying, Let's do this mission first. Wang Luan was a little surprised. Which mission? Do you have a clue? Oh Huang Wang followed He Xingwen's figure. Looked around the empty environment and said, there's not even a person here. To do a mission. You must also follow the basic law. At least you have to interact with the NPC to search for information related to the mission. Right? He Xingwen felt that this was unnecessary. After all, they had already accepted the mission. And the specific location of the mission target was displayed on the screen. Why did they need NPCs? They could just go there in one step. He Tong interrupted the conversation and reminded He Xingwen, this behavior is very suspicious. He Xingwen pressed the keyboard mindlessly while turning off the voice call and said to He Tong, but according to their method, it will take me several days to complete these missions. But it's a bit too much not to even cover it up. He Tong silently responded in his heart. He Xingwen didn't let it go to this extent. He clicked on the achievement page and found a fig leaf for this behavior. I just took a closer look. These special achievements are quite interesting. Let the game console customize one for me. The golden light flashed impatiently. Rejecting this unreasonable request. He Tong didn't think this fig leaf could change anything. The essence of the problem was that He Xingwen didn't want to cover it up at all. Not anything else. You don't seem to want to hide the difference between you and ordinary players. He Tong said rationally. Two special achievements in a row will also look suspicious in the eyes of those who are interested. He Xingwen paused and laughed softly. Remember what I said before? We have to solve this problem. He Tong couldn't convince He Xingwen. So he turned his attention to the reluctant game console and had a brief communication with the other party, successfully changing the other party's opinion. Then, a new achievement appeared on He Xingwen's achievement page. He Xingwen clicked it and took a look. Out of print achievement great wisdom appears foolish. And the accompanying introduction was, in your eyes, the answers to some questions are incredibly simple. 
conditions for obtaining this achievement, none. When Wu Xing and his team were retransmitted to this location, they suddenly found that two of the bounty hunter tasks were suffixed with a completed sign. Wu Xing looked at the time and was a little puzzled. It was only a few minutes. How could two tasks be completed? Wu Xing looked at the private chat again. Wang Luan, fuck. A great player like he Gu. You don't let him play games. Let him do other work. What kind of behavior is this? Oh, Huang Wan, fuck. This is a living European emperor. Right? When Wu Xing and his team, who were full of doubts, met up with He Xingwen and his team, before they had time to ask questions, they saw He Xingwen dig a jar out of the ground with their own eyes. Wang Luan and Oh Huang Wang used their skills together to directly smash the jar cleanly. Another bounty hunter task showed a completed sign behind it. He Xingwen glanced at the list of ongoing tasks and waved in a certain direction. Let's go. The confused team followed He Xingwen for only a few hundred meters before stopping. He Xingwen glanced at the red dot on the small map. Control the character to equip the dagger in the backpack. Entered the stealth state. And whispered to them, don't move. The team lay in the grass. Watching He Xingwen walk into the woods with a low voice. Looking at each other. And finally all eyes fell on Wu Xing. Wang Luan lowered his voice and asked first, what does this big brother do? Just an ordinary citizen. Do you believe me? Wu Xing opened his mouth to speak, but closed it again, and asked the other party, What's the situation? How did those tasks get completed? Wang Luan showed a shocked expression. You ask me? This buddy just walked up. And when he got to the ground, he directly asked us to use skills. Once the skills were released, the task was completed. Oh, Wang Wang weakly interrupted the conversation. Those things should be the sustenance of the unspeakable things. Once they are broken, the unspeakable things will lose the source of desire and disappear directly. Yi Quan, your friend's way of doing tasks is too wild. How did he know the location of the task target? Wu Xing had the same doubts as them. The suspicion that he had suppressed before came up again and was forcibly suppressed by him. They lay in the grass for a while, exchanging doubts with each other. Before He Xingwen came out, they couldn't help but look towards the place where He Xingwen disappeared. A strong smell of blood floated out from the forest. He went to kill people? Due to calmly flip through the task list and found the most likely task. The trace of the slave trader? This task is the most likely. He Xingwen is indeed doing this task. This task is not difficult under He Xingwen's current game mode. After all, it's a computer game. You just need to use skills without thinking. And even He Xingwen, a game character who can't keep up with the big team, has more comprehensive skills than the players who just got started two years ago. However, He Xingwen didn't use spell skills. Ether is indeed useful. But it's too eye-catching. If it were two years ago, the natives of the Diamond Empire might not have known so much about Ether. But two years later, the Hall of Knowledge has covered the entire continent. And the hazy veil of Ether has long been unveiled. Even many of the fleeing slave traders can sense the basic ability of Ether. Therefore, He Xingwen chose a simpler method direct assassination by force. He Xingwen didn't know if other players had assassination skills such as dagger mastery. But anyway, it was the first one among He Xingwen's skills. The specific operation process is also very simple. Sneak. Walk behind the enemy NPC. Use the dagger. And then the next one. He Xingwen killed the entire camp in this way. Wu Xing and his team finally waited for He Xingwen to come back with a bloody smell. He Xingwen wiped his dagger and looked up and said to them, Let's go. Then he took the lead and led the team to another direction. Yi Quan glanced at He Xingwen. And then glanced at the completed traces of slave traders this task. After all, couldn't suppress his curiosity and sneak into the grove behind him. The other people in the team knew his little action very well. Everyone was very curious about what happened in the grove. But for some reason, no one dared to ask in this atmosphere. He Xingwen, who forgot to use the smile expression for the game character, was concentrating on rushing to the next task destination. He felt the real fun of the game from the crude painting style. A master is to flatten all task obstacles along the way. Yi Quan, who ran out of the grove, swallowed his saliva under the curious gaze of everyone and sent a private message to Wu Xing. Yi Quan, brother, what kind of killer weapon did you release? The grove is full of corpses. Players don't feel much about corpses. After all, after contacting the main console of the game in China, a mosaic mode was quickly launched. And scenes that are too bloody will be automatically mosaic. 
The problem is that the holographic game mode leads players to generally prefer spells instead of close-range assassinations. After all, the former only requires mindless output, while the latter requires too high a psychological quality and physical controllability of the player. This powerful man who can cut throats and slaughter the entire team with a knife. It is hard not to wonder whether this guy is a fugitive or a special forces soldier. Wu Xing opened his mouth to speak, but closed it again. No one expected that He Xingwen would lead the whole team to win by himself. He completed more than 20 bounty hunter tasks by himself. And a bunch of masters, like Wu Xing, were reduced to shouting encouragement and taking advantage of the task rewards. Next time you have such a thing, come to me again. Anyway, I have no shame. Yi Quan said to Wu Xing, Brother, you are too modest. Who is leading whom? Wang Xian's eyes were blurred. Where did we get such an awesome colleague? Why haven't I heard of him? Oh, Huang Wang, let's do the task together next time. Wang Luan, these strategies. I will organize them and send them out when the time comes. But I promise to add brother his name and never take them for myself. Duda glanced at him. I don't think you dare. Who dares? I can't stand such a big guy chasing me thousands of miles away. Wang Luan glanced in the direction of He Xingwen and clasped his fist towards Wu Xing. Brother if there are such colleagues in the future. Let's make it clear first. So that we can figure out the positioning. Who wouldn't like to be a leg pendant? He Xingwen's way of doing tasks. Killing Buddhas and gods. Was so shocking that no one dared to approach him after the task was completed. They said goodbye to Wu Xing one after another, and went about their own business with their shattered worldviews. After Wu Xing had fooled the other players, he took a deep breath, turned his head to look at He Xingwen, and said with a fearless attitude, log off, Let's talk. He Xingwen exited the game character page and stayed in a special space made of golden light after all. It would be inconvenient to discuss with He Tong later. He Tong, what are you going to do? He Xingwen was very excited. This game is quite interesting. I want to play it for a while longer. He Tong was not surprised by this answer. Then how do you plan to deal with the next situation? What do you need me to do? If nothing unexpected happens, Wu Xing should have confirmed your identity. He Xingwen said in a relaxed tone, No more playing. I'm going to show my cards. I'm a perverted killer. He Tong understood He Xingwen's choice. You will never admit it. He Xingwen, who had a great time, reconciled with the world, playing games is such a happy thing. Why should I hide it? I have saved the world. I just want to enjoy my retirement life happily. What's the problem with this? He Xingwen didn't think there was any problem with this, and said confidently, Anyway, I don't know His Majesty the King. Obviously, He Tong didn't need to worry about what happened next. He Xingwen had already made full psychological preparations for shamelessness. The holographic game cabin slowly opened. Wu Xing waited for a while before He Xingwen quit the game. He did not ask why the other party exited the game slower than him when he had logged off earlier than him compared to the other party's series of actions just now. This was not a big deal at all. He Xingwen climbed out of the holographic game cabin. The scene was very quiet, and the atmosphere was shockingly serious. Since the facts are in front of us, He Xingwen broke the silence slowly. Wu Xing did not expect He Xingwen to speak first, and he did not expect the other party to use a big move as soon as he spoke. He stood up straight in an instant, and his heartbeat was fast, putting aside other factors, just from an objective perspective to evaluate His Majesty the King. Wu Xing must admit that he has won their respect. Although he has no medals, trophies, or do honors. Those who know the inside story know what he has done for the world. The word idealist has become a mixed bag nowadays, but it is definitely a compliment when applied to him. Putting aside his official identity, many people in the Special Investigation Bureau admire him. I admit that I am. Wu Xing could feel his heartbeat speeding up, announcing his uncontrollable surge of emotions. Perverted killer. Huh? Wu Xing burst out a strange monosyllable and after confirming that he had heard it correctly. His expression became magical, perverted killer. He Xingwen nodded heavily, so I kill people without blinking an eye. Things are not what I thought. Wu Xing stared at the serious He Xingwen and thought. The situation is so obvious. Why does he refuse to admit it? Chapter 264 Reality 42 and Game 75 Why things turned out like this? Perhaps it should be said that He Xingwen chose to never admit it. His Majesty the King represents so many things that the country is still trying hard to find him two years after he disappeared. Of course, most people don't have much hope of finding His Majesty the King. After all, 
the objective gap between them is destined to make them passive in front of each other. The resurrection of spiritual energy that has the most far-reaching impact on the earth has the shadow of the other party behind it. His Majesty the King has pushed the earth into the era of superpowers. If such an existence can be found, it should have been found when the other party's wings are not yet full. Therefore, although the country is still trying hard to find His Majesty the King, this behavior is not so much to find His Majesty the King as to maintain internal emotional stability. But who would have thought that His Majesty the King was actually found? Strictly speaking, it is Schrodinger's finding. As long as He Xingwen does not admit it, they have not really found His Majesty the King. After all, they couldn't prove that the other party was the king. Of course, the real meaning of can't prove was that they didn't know how to deal with the king who didn't admit that he was the king. If the other party admitted it frankly, then perhaps after some trials, everyone could pick up the tacit cooperation before and further cooperate on the other world and the earth. But if the other party didn't admit it, then the others would have to consider the meaning behind the other party's attitude and the price they would have to pay if they had to force the other party to admit it. So, after several high-level but small-scale discussions, things eventually evolved into the current situation. Everyone tacitly agreed to treat it as nothing. Of course, no one would really treat it as nothing. For example, Wu Xing put down other tasks in his hands and almost followed He Xingwen closely. And a few new neighbors inevitably moved into He Xingwen's home. These can only be regarded as some minor personnel changes. The most obvious is the change in attitude and behavior. For example, Wu Xing walked around He Xingwen with a stack of papers. Muttering as he walked, it seems that this experiment does not require your cooperation. Doesn't this experiment take a bit of time? This experiment seems unnecessary. He Xingwen had just accompanied He Tong to get a certificate and was now admiring the group photo in this small notebook. Hearing this, he reached out to Wu Xing. Wu Xing immediately handed over the stack of experimental materials in his hand with a sense of relief. He Xingwen casually crossed out most of the unnecessary experiments in the materials. So, He Xingwen's new schedule was freshly released, and most of his time was allocated to holographic games. This was just one of the daily routines that seemed to be nothing happened. The rest included Wu Xing nagging. Do you know the progress of the research on the unidentified object on the seabed? I heard that it really doesn't look like a product of the earth. He Xingwen peeled an orange and said, I haven't learned about it. Wu Xing took the orange and peeled it for him flatteringly, saying, What do you think? Is this really an alien product? He Xingwen took another orange and peeled it again, saying casually, Not necessarily. After peeling the orange, Wu Xing handed it to He Xingwen, who was disgusted. Wu Xing ate it by himself, and asked while eating, Not necessarily means, It may be an alien product, or it may not be an alien product. He Xingwen handed the peeled orange to He Tong and wiped his hands slowly, not necessarily means. It may be an alien product, or it may be a product from another world. Cough, 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 cough. Wu Xing was caught off guard and almost choked to death on the orange in his mouth. He swallowed two big gulps of water and finally survived. He turned his head to look at He Xingwen, and his voice suddenly changed. Product from another world? Impossible? If the other world can do this, we can't be unaware of it. He Xingwen yawned and shouted to He Jiangwen, who was busy in the kitchen. Dad, cook two less dishes. It's not a very important guest. He Jiangwen poked his head out of the kitchen. Isn't Xiao Wu your leader? Wu Xing waved his hands frantically. No, no, just a colleague, an ordinary colleague. After this was over, He Xingwen turned back to the topic out of boredom. There is no specific other world. Who said which other world it was? Wu Xing was speechless. Can there be other other worlds? He Xingwen looked at Wu Xing in surprise. Can you count how many drops of water there are in the ocean? But, Wu Xing paused for a long time and said, But isn't this too crowded? This shows the difference between the other world and the earth. After learning that the world is much bigger than imagined, the first reaction of the other world is to expand, conquer, and build a new world. While the first reaction of ordinary people on earth after learning that the world is much bigger than imagined is to worry. He Xingwen did not respond. And Wu Xing did not insist on getting an answer. After all, this was just a conversation between two ordinary people. Nothing more. In addition, this kind of conversation between ordinary people also occurred in many fields, including but not limited to the game console, the key of the great scientist, and mutant creatures. As if overnight, Wu Xing was suddenly curious about everything and was keen to ask questions. But not all questions can be answered. 
He Xingwen, who claimed that he had nothing to do with His Majesty the King, answered questions very casually. Wu Xing's level rose rapidly in these few days. Of course, his hair fell down in clumps. He only hated why he had a keen eye for talent and picked He Xingwen, so that he fell into the current situation of surviving in the cracks. People in the know have many speculations about He Xingwen's behavior, but He Xingwen doesn't care about those. He is very satisfied with the current tacit understanding situation. When He Xingwen went online again, Wu Xing, who was like a dog skin plaster, was still by his side. He Xingwen looked at his character panel and set the first goal of his gaming career to gain experience, improve his skill level, and catch up with the big team. So, Wu Xing watched He Xingwen repeat the last operation, accept a bunch of tasks in one go, and then quickly complete the tasks. After repeating this operation several times, the rich task rewards allowed He Xingwen to accumulate a lot of experience and credit points. Wu Xing didn't know that He Xingwen was playing a computer game. He only saw He Xingwen completing those tasks, whether it was the unspeakable thing or other tasks. It was as easy as fighting monsters above his level. You know, the difficulty of the bounty hunter's mission corresponds to the player's ability, ensuring that the mission can be completed by the player, but not easily completed. However, He Xingwen killed humans who knew some ether spells with one knife, and he was also very decisive in dealing with unspeakable things. Just like playing two games with Wu Xing and others. Wu Xing who was reduced to a leg pendant, considering the other party's identity. Maybe they were really playing two games. Is it the same concept that GMs can play games with ordinary players? After He Xingwen finished the bounty hunter mission, he went straight to the kingdom. He left after the task. But the story of Xing Han Kinlan, a high-level player, began to spread in the world it is said that this player cleared the Diamond Empire bounty hunter mission. The source of this legend is in the guide that Wang Luan rushed out overnight. Wang Lun's worldview shattered by the big boss was passed on to other players through this latest version of Diamond Empire Bounty Hunter Speed Pass Guide. This guide is full of dry goods, including the way to obtain special achievements of bounty hunters. And it has been wildly sought after as soon as it was released. What's more, Wang Lun also proposed a method to improve the efficiency of task completion in this strategy, which is to find the task target location directly from the task details and solve the problem from the source. At the end of the strategy, Wang Luan humbly gave the source of the strategy, Xing Han Kenlan, and spent two long paragraphs of description unrelated to the strategy to express his heartfelt admiration for the big guy, Xing Han Kenlan. The player thus entered the public eye and quickly became one of the many legends in the world. However, for now, this has nothing to do with He Xingwen, who is busy learning new skills. In He Xingwen's understanding, the new skills of the blacksmith profession can only be learned by going to the Dwarf Academy of the Kingdom or finding dwarves on the top of the mountains. So He Xingwen teleported directly to the kingdom. The kingdom has changed a lot. The infrastructure cities that were under construction before have been completed. Hundreds of cities stand on the territory of the kingdom. Conquering mountains, deserts and jungles. And players' footprints have covered the entire territory of the kingdom. He Xingwen cast a quick glance at the kingdom territory while riding the train. The train has been continuously improved in the past 20 years. Now it has three functions of sea, land and air. The transportation range covers the entire kingdom. And it is the well-deserved first of long-distance transportation. The riding experience of the train has also been greatly improved. Each position has its own small compartment to isolate the harassment of others. Of course, if the relationship is good, two small compartments can be merged into one. But He Xingwen doesn't have this demand he is a computer player and he doesn't go for an immersive experience. Wu Xing really wanted to communicate with He Xingwen, but He Xingwen had no expression on his face the whole time, and it seemed that it was not a good time to start a conversation. There was no other way. He Xingwen forgot to use expressions on the game character, and the game character, without the player's control, could only have no expression. The train stopped outside the academy, and the isolation buff on He Xingwen's character disappeared. He Xingwen controlled the game character to get off the train and walk towards the Dwarf Academy. He had a small map navigation, so he didn't have to worry about getting lost. But he met an overly enthusiastic player on the road, who stuffed him with a stack of papers without saying a word. Brother, have you changed your job? Are you considering coming to our marine zoo? He Xingwen pressed W without thinking. He paused, clicked the flyer, and a line of exaggerated slogans popped up on the screen. Marine Zoo let you get close to the intelligent creatures of the seabed. 
I have changed my job. Wu Xing came up to dismiss the players who blocked his way. Blacksmith. The two players showed regretful expressions. You changed your job quite early. Who would learn to be a blacksmith now? After reading the slogan, He Xingwen was silent for two seconds. And then he said, Marine Zoo is a new job? Wu Xing pushed He Xingwen past the two ordinary players and explained to him, It can't be considered a new job. He organized the words. It is one of the ways for the underwater civilization to cooperate and communicate with the mainland civilization. The Marine Zoo is the nickname given to it by the players. Its full name is Undersea Civilization Academy. It is an academy that introduces underwater civilization. However, no players are interested in introducing underwater civilization alone. So some skills of using ether by underwater intelligent creatures were added. And some special skills were introduced to attract a wave of players. The main advantage of this academy is that anyone can learn it without changing jobs. Before He Xingwen finished speaking, He Xingwen, who was heading towards the Dwarf Academy, met a player who blocked his way again. Brother, have you changed your job? Have you considered becoming a monk? I changed my job. I changed my job to a forger. After Wu Xing rejected the other party, he took He Xingwen past the group of people and explained again, this is one of the new jobs that were open before. Because the human kingdom and the kingdom have further deepened cooperation and exchanges. The monks opened an academy here to compete with the mages for students. Wu Xing also introduced the reason why he was frequently intercepted by players along the way. The new semester is about to start. And everyone is busy completing the NPC's student recruitment tasks. He glanced at He Xingwen and found that he was still expressionless. He couldn't tell what he was thinking. He continued, Old players who have changed their jobs don't come back here very often. Only new players come to school at this time. He Xingwen was puzzled. Where do old players go to learn new skills? The Hall of Knowledge. Wu Xing said honestly, The Hall of Knowledge, which originally only had scientific knowledge, added a lot of new content for other professions during the repair. The Hall of Knowledge currently covers the entire continent. In theory, as long as it is located on the continent and meets the skill requirements, players can directly learn new skills. He Xingwen stopped, opened his personal panel, stared at his skill list for a few seconds, hesitated, and clicked on a gray skill. A small prompt popped up next to it, reminding the player that he had consumed experience, credit points, favorability, and other resources to learn the skill. To be honest, this operation is too online. He Xingwen lit up all the skills he had not learned before and asked, How do you learn new skills? This question made Wu Xing stunned. Directly access the knowledge hall? Watch the skills usage method? He Xingwen turned off the microphone and asked He Tong, Why don't I have the knowledge hall? You don't have an etheric body that can access the knowledge hall. He Tong reminded He Xingwen, although players understand the knowledge hall as a large library. It is actually an information carrier composed of ether. And the etheric body needs to interact to complete the information exchange process. Due to the difference between your game style and theirs, the main console of the game directly loads this part of information for you. He Xingwen felt a little regretful. But after a second thought, he had a new idea. I'll go to the Hall of Knowledge to have a look. The term Hall of Knowledge corresponds to two different existences on the mainland. One is the scientific system of great scientists of virtual existence built by Ether, an encyclopedia with multiple functions. After it covered the entire continent through the Ether Matrix, it opened up permissions to all intelligent creatures on the continent, allowing all intelligent creatures in the South China Sea to access the Hall of Knowledge, which greatly promoted the spread and promotion of science on the mainland. The other is the Hall of Knowledge Organization, a scientific research institution that improves the scientific system of great scientists and further studies ether and science. It promoted and established the ether matrix covering the entire continent and is a promoter of the improvement and promotion of the scientific system. With a firm idea in mind, He Xingwen took action with great mobility. Let's go. Wu Xing followed He Xingwen's footsteps. Where to? The ruins of the South Federation. He Xingwen pressed the W key and asked Wu Xing, Can players enter that place? Except for the main city of the kingdom. There is no place on the continent that players cannot enter. Wu Xing said, Even the center of the South Federation ruins, where the Hall of Knowledge Organization is located, is open to players. He Xingwen didn't walk a few steps before he bumped into another scene. The intelligent creatures strolling out of the marine zoo met the tree man halfway and had a good chat. The huge soft-bodied aquatic creatures were rampant on the ground leaving slippery traces wherever they passed. 
the huge tentacles drooped on the ground and directly occupied the entire road. While the huge trees moved in the green belt, with the roots firmly rooted in the ground. This scene is harmonious and magical, and truly reflects the new order of the continent centered on the kingdom. Probably because both parties are not human. They did not communicate in the universal language of humans, but performed a more convenient spiritual communication. He Xingwen and his team did not disturb each other, and took a detour the road ahead was blocked by these two behemoths, and could not be passed. The ruins of the Sarfa Federation have also changed their appearance. To be precise, it is now far from a ruin, with the tireless efforts of hundreds of millions of players. Even the huge ruins of the Sarfa Federation have been dug through, after the players searched the ruins over and over again at the cost of their lives. The proposal to rebuild the Sarfa Federation naturally emerged. It's not that they want to build a Sarfa Federation, but to reproduce the layout of the Sarfa Federation in the past, which will help further fill in the scientific framework. So, when Xingwen came to the ruins of the Sarfa Federation, what he saw was half ruins and half city. The city was rebuilt in the ruins and put into operation, while some of the technological products deep in the ruins have not been conquered and still maintain their original appearance. This place does not look like a gold rush but more like the center of the continent, because of the principle that this place does not belong to any force, and is open to the entire continent originally established by His Majesty the King, and the establishment of the new continent order here, after His Majesty the King disappeared for unknown reasons. It has indeed become the actual political center of the continent. Ezogen and the Hall of Knowledge maintain the order here, and the influx of players, and other gold diggers brings vitality to this place. He Xingwen and his companions took the public transportation of Ezogen, and headed to the center of the Salfa Federation, where the Temple of Knowledge organization is now located. This is not a very mysterious place. Any place that players can enter cannot remain mysterious. It is nothing more than endless buildings, a large number of NPCs, and Ezogen everywhere. All the intelligent creatures on the entire continent exist here. He Xingwen caught a glimpse of the traces of the devil. Even in such a perfunctory map, the devil's grotesque appearance is still very impactful. In fact, there are many players here. He Xingwen quickly understood why this place is neither mysterious nor so lively. He saw many NPCs with exclamation marks on their heads. There are many more tasks here than in other places. He Xingwen was quick and squeezed into the crowd. Wu Xing, who was surrounded by the crowd and could not move, watched He Xingwen disappear in front of him. Others did not have He Xingwen's cheating method to enter the crowd as if no one was there. They could only watch this player who suddenly appeared and took a round of tasks in one breath. Dear hero, we need some. Skip. Accept the task. Brave player, don't be afraid of death. Skip. Accept the task. You came just in time. We are still short of. Skip. Accept the task. After the efficient, He Xingwen filled his task list with dense tasks again. He found that the distance between the task target and him was a little too short. All of them were hundreds of meters and some task targets were even only a few meters away. My goodness, is he going to kill people on the spot? He Xingwen changed his equipment in seconds. The game character had already grasped the dagger. He realized from the task introduction that the tasks of the Hall of Knowledge and the Bounty Hunters were not the same thing at all. Bounty Hunters are more inclined to do dirty work, and they often kill people and rob goods. The cruelty of the task depends on the moral bottom line of the client. But the Hall of Knowledge is a serious scientific research organization. What it lacks is helpers. Of course, including fearless experimental subjects. And there is no task content of killing and robbing at all. Although the tasks of the Hall of Knowledge are far more tedious and boring than other tasks. All players need to brush the reputation of the Hall of Knowledge in exchange for various advanced knowledge. So the popularity here is not diminished at all because of the boring tasks. It is difficult to say whether the rapid improvement of the scientific system is directly related to the player's successive tasks. However, He Xingwen does not care about this. As an ordinary player, He Xingwen has started his journey of brushing tasks again. For players, boring tasks have become more boring after switching to computer mode. He Xingwen put Wu Xing behind his mind. The tasks range from puzzles to testing semi-finished products. The difficulty range from clicking the mouse to exploding on the spot with a bang. It was a very unique death experience. This was the first time that this game character died. The death was worthless and without any resistance. The screen turned gray. And the color of the scene dimmed. The game character resurrected from the resurrection point. The system prompted He Xingwen to randomly drop a certain amount of favorability 
and a certain skill level. Because of the lack of sense of substitution, He Xingwen could not feel the player's true feelings for this game. So he became a tool man who completed tasks without emotion. He Xingwen glanced at the task list. Although the game character died on the spot, the task of semi-finished product test was shown as completed. This thing must have failed in research. How can it be said that it directly blew up the user? He Xingwen complained in his heart and looked at the next task, which was still semi-finished product test. There were too many such tasks here, which brought out the player's undead characteristics to the fullest. He Xingwen continued to read the task introduction. Prerequisites. Had the profession of forger. Hall of knowledge reputation. Greater than or equal to 500. Demon favorability. Greater than or equal to zero. He Xingwen looked at it for a few seconds and sent a private message to Wu Xing. Xing Han Kanlan, what is your reputation in the Hall of Knowledge? Wu Xing replied quickly, 350. What's wrong? Xing Han Kanlan, are there many players with more than 500 reputation in the Hall of Knowledge? Wu Xing, as far as I know. Only a few beta testers have achieved it. Right? Are you still doing the task? Have you reached 500 reputation? Xing Han Kanlan, I think I received a special task. When Wu Xing heard this, he was silent for a few seconds, thinking that the other party's move was quite suspicious of taking off his pants to fart. You are a GM. Can't you take any special task you want? But he replied very sincerely, What special task? Xing Han Kanlan, hmm. Have you heard of the Mechanical Body Project? Chapter 265 Global Public Beta 76 Semi-Finished Products and Instances Somewhere in the Hall of Knowledge there was no decoration in the room. A square object was suspended in the middle of the empty room. It was shrouded in a very high concentration of ether. It could also be said that it was suspended in a very strong beam of light, but this beam of light could not be seen by the naked eye. The cube was like countless fragments pieced together, with dense cracks all over it. The other room connected to this place was much more lively than this one. Many tools filled the room. There was a faint blue light in the stove, and the dwarf was swinging the hammer with all his strength. The other half of the room turned into another scene. Books were piled up high and scattered all over the floor. A man in a black robe sat on the ground. In front of him, the ether drew complex patterns on its own, sometimes bursting with lightning and thunder, and sometimes suddenly extinguished. These two people with completely different styles were in the same room. No one paid attention to each other, and they worked hard until the visitor broke the silence. The demon with a pointed horn on his forehead and a pretty face walked into the room leisurely, circled around the floating cube with interest, and stretched out his hand to it. A lightning bolt struck directly and hit the back of his hand. The demon stopped and turned to ask the two people in the other room, Is it not stable yet? Andy Su swung his hammer by himself, and the mage beside him raised his eyelids, glanced at the demon, and asked instead, What are you doing here? Did you forget the time again? Nolita took out a notebook and said, Where is the progress report for this month? Still no progress. The wizard said unhappily, Why don't you just copy last month's progress report? Why did you come all the way here? No one welcomes you here. Of course I'm here for review and approval. Nolita stuffed the notebook in his hand back again. The results of your experimental approval last year were already very dangerous. If there is no progress this year, and the project is cancelled, don't come to me. Andy Sue stopped swinging the hammer, and was very confused about the devil's words. No matter whose project is cancelled, mine will not be cancelled. You came all the way here just to talk nonsense? Nulita, look at your attitude. What do you mean by no matter whose project is cancelled? Your project will not be cancelled? As if you have a lot of face. Andy Sue said straightforwardly. My project was decided by His Majesty the King. Nulita grinned and said complacently. Isn't the situation different now? His Majesty the King has been gone for a long time. As soon as he said this, the wizard and the dwarf suddenly looked at him together. The atmosphere at the scene became strange. Nolita took a deep breath and then said, It's only been twenty years. Maybe he will be back tomorrow. The mage pulled the corner of his mouth and started to deduce the etheric pattern again. Andasu was a real man. Seeing that the demon did not seek death, he sighed with regret. His majesty the king did disappear. But the kingdom was still there. And the increasing number of players was also there. The management of the kingdom was in the hands of Zhe and the kingdom elites. These people were all diehard fans of His Majesty the King diehard fans, who could start a meaningless war for the honor of His Majesty the King. The main reason why the new order of the continent centered on the kingdom can remain vibrant 
and not cause turmoil after the disappearance of His Majesty the King is that even if His Majesty the King disappears, the players and the kingdom are still in the same camp, faced with the mighty billions of players. Who can think of he can replace him? Of course, this is also directly related to the invasion of the continent by the new civilizations on the outermost edge of the continent. The enemy is eyeing the outside, waiting to come in and share a piece of the pie at any time. So there is no reason for the continent to fall apart first. What's more, the number and ferocity of the new civilizations on the outermost edge of the continent are beyond the expectations of the continent. If it weren't for His Majesty the King building a road across the broken void between the broken void and the South China Sea, keeping the enemy out at the gap in the barrier, and confining the battlefield outside the barrier instead of in the broken void, the continent would definitely not be so peaceful at the moment. And I'm afraid it would have begun to reproduce the scene when the Zerg attacked the continent in the past. Nulita brought the topic back, avoiding the sensitive word Your Majesty. The current situation is different. It refers to the Continental Conference held before. Nolita reminded the two researchers with shallow political awareness at the conference. All races reached a consensus and prepared to expand the world's territory and supplement the scientific system. Andy Su looked at the mage, then looked at Nolita. What does this have to do with my research? Nolita sighed, feeling quite helpless. Why did the Continental Conference make this decision? He didn't want to get an answer from the two people and said to himself, because the Hall of Knowledge has completed the complete construction of the scientific system framework. That is to say, the things in the ruins of the South Federation are not enough. We need more things to fill in the missing part of the scientific system until the door of the world projection is opened. The dwarf and the wizard were confused, and they still didn't think that this had anything to do with their research project. All our energy is focused on this point now. So those unimportant, unprogressive, and irrelevant research, Nobuda spread his hands towards Andisu and said, Of course, we can cut them down unimportant, unprogressive, and irrelevant research. The wizard said to Andisu as if he had discovered a new continent. Isn't this talking about your research? I came here specifically to remind you. Nabuta, if you still make no progress, even if there is a kingdom standing behind you, I'm afraid you won't be able to keep this research project. After all, everything we do is for the new world. Nabuta tidied his clothes and said, the new world with endless wealth, land, and population. Nobuda ran a trip, said these words, and left, leaving the dwarf and wizard thinking hard about this problem. A few days later, a special task was mixed into the tasks for players. He Xingwen manipulated the game character and turned around in the vast hall of knowledge. Fortunately, there was a small map and the distance of the mission target. So He Xingwen successfully arrived at the mission destination. The dwarf NPC had Andy Su's name on his head. But seeing this scene through the crude computer screen, it was really hard to feel like a long-lost reunion. What's more, the other party kept jumping out of the dialogue and explaining the next task steps to He Xingwen. The whole process was no different from the tasks He Xingwen had taken before, and it was difficult to feel involved. He Xingwen supported his forehead with one hand and tapped on the keyboard with the other hand. As usual, he skipped the task dialogue directly, but the cube in the corner of the screen attracted his attention. It looks like a cube. At most, it is different from ordinary cubes because it is floating in the air. In fact, in this crudely made game, even the dwarf's forging room and the wizard's experimental site are a bunch of exaggerated textures. In this case, it is difficult for He Xingwen to see more specific details on this cube even if it can jump out of a robot. It is at most a rough texture. He Xingwen paused in his tapping action. And the pre-task dialogue ended. After instructing the players, Andy Su and the wizard retreated to another room. He Xingwen, who read the task description in detail, looked up and found that the dwarf and the wizard had retreated far away, leaving only him and the cube here. And he couldn't help but feel a little confused for a while. Why did they run so far? The research on mechanical bodies should not have much lethality. Right? At least it shouldn't be a semi-finished product that will explode at will. Right? Isn't this thing an auxiliary tool? He Xingwen's head was full of question marks. But the task description did not provide a more detailed introduction to this semi-finished product. He simply followed the task description and took two steps forward to the cube. The cube in front of the game character on the screen was still slowly turning. He Xingwen manipulated the mouse to click on the cube. And two options popped up. One, start the semi-finished product. Two, cancel. 
He Xingwen chose to start the semi-finished product. Although the rough picture quality made the scene look like a low-quality special effect, He Xingwen did not forget that this happened in the real world. Seeing that the semi-finished product was about to show the dwarves' efforts in the past 20 years, He Xingwen couldn't help but look forward to it. It split in the middle, and those complex mechanical designs, driven by abundant energy, revealed their true colors. The screen turned gray, and the system prompts a favorability and skill level drop flashed by and the scene on the screen in front of He Xingwen turned into a resurrection point. The dwarves and mages in the connected room reacted extremely quickly, seeing that the ether fluctuations were rising steadily and exceeded the critical value in an instant. They simultaneously activated the defense measures in the laboratory. The moment the white light came on, a strong energy fluctuation burst out in the empty room, and the explosion occurred in the room. Fortunately, the lethality it caused was confined to the room. Maybe this is why it is so empty here. The strong energy swept through the entire room, and some kind of protective measures firmly bound the out-of-control energy to ensure that it would not cause more destructive consequences. It failed again. The energy is still unstable. The dwarf poked his head and looked at the semi-finished product that had been restored to a cube. He was puzzled. What went wrong? Every auxiliary function has been tested. Why does the energy of the mechanical body go out of control when it is started? Is it a conflict with the soul circuit designed by Embers? For the mechanical body? The wizard was thoughtful. This suspicion was not the first time. After all, Embers did not understand science at all. But he was responsible for the part that others could not intervene at all. In the end, this so-called soul circuit was said to be designed by the undead emperor himself. Considering the authority of the undead emperor in the field of death and soul, no one dared to ask is there something wrong with your design? The dwarf and the wizard tried to find out the problem of the violent energy fluctuations when the semi-finished product was started. Of course, it was not found in the end. This semi-finished mechanical body is not only stuffed with the soul circuit designed by the undead. It is also an extremely complex cooperative product. The dwarf is responsible for the machinery and designs the framework of the mechanical body. The mage is responsible for the etheric circuit and designs the function of the mechanical body to drive the ether. The undead is responsible for the soul or consciousness, which allows the mechanical body to produce logical functions. These three have their own strengths in their professional fields. So it is difficult to say which part of the conflict caused this thing to fail to start. Of course, the most likely one is definitely the part that the undead is responsible for. After all, it sounds unreliable to create souls. When Yi Xingwen rushed back to the mission location from the resurrection point, the dwarf and the mage were still reviewing the reasons for the energy out of control. He Xingwen's mission has been completed. Like the previous semi-finished product test. Missions. The player is only responsible for using his life to get the test results. As for whether the test results are good or bad, it has nothing to do with the player. The reason why He Xingwen rushed back was also very simple. He couldn't understand how it could explode just like that. The dwarf had been researching for 20 years. Even if the research was not successful, it was impossible for him to research a bomb. Right? Andy Su and the wizard didn't care about his return, and were still immersed in the frustration of failure. He Xingwen walked around the cube as if nothing had happened, and clicked the mouse again without giving up. The click-click sound of the mechanical rotation sounded again, and the dwarf was startled and activated the protective measures reflexively. A flash of white light, and the screen in front of He Xingwen became the resurrection point again. The facts were in front of him, and He Xingwen had to admit, there seemed to be something wrong with the dwarf project. Of course, considering the difficulty of this project, it is normal for it to have problems. It would be abnormal if a new race could be created smoothly. He Xingwen manipulated the game character to circle around the resurrection point twice, and habitually thought about how to solve the problem. Just as he was worried about the difficulty of this problem, the rough texture on the screen suddenly reminded him that what does the problem of the research project have to do with him as an ordinary player? It is impossible for someone to think that players can solve this problem. Right? After thinking this through, He Xingwen breathed a sigh of relief and turned his attention back to the game. After completing the task of the Hall of Knowledge, his skill level not only caught up with the big team, but also exceeded it by a large margin. Which is definitely a great god. Brushing tasks can no longer meet He Xingwen's needs. He needs an advanced game experience. Such as, Xinghan Ken on, find a few people. Let's go to brush the dungeon. Wu Xing who was bored and slacking off, received this private chat 
and instinctively made many associations. To be honest, Wu Xing has always been confused about why His Majesty the King is so keen on playing games. Isn't this game something he created himself? He neither contacts the kingdom nor does any work. He just does tasks all day long. Like an internet-addicted teenager who loves games. As a result, the Special Investigation Bureau is confused about His Majesty the King's true intentions. And some people even suspect that they have found the wrong person. Wu Xing asked cautiously, What dungeon? Who do you want to find? Xing Han came on. I'll look at the guide and find a few suitable dungeons. As he said that, he Xing Wen clicked on the web page and searched for dungeon guide. The first thing that popped up was the hottest event at the moment, the sixth invasion of the new world. This is the sixth time. It's frequent enough. He Xing Wen clicked on the strategy and scanned it at a glance. The invasion event of the new world is a large scale dungeon that is triggered periodically in this game. It can also be referred to as a siege battle. The enemy race and number are randomly refreshed. During this period, the enemy NPCs that were repelled in the last siege battle will appear. Based on the experience of the previous five dungeons, this dungeon will probably last for several months. The city that players need to defend is a fixed area located in the broken void. The rewards for successfully defending the city are extremely generous, and failure to defend the city will open the new world full attack DLC. So I suggest that all friends should not go against the planner dead, and remember their position of coexistence and death with the kingdom. Otherwise he 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 is watching you. After talking about the previous situation, I will explain in detail the action mode with the highest contribution in this dungeon. He Xingwen saw the end, glanced at the name of the guide writer by Xiaosheng, and then thoughtfully excluded this dungeon from the selection range. This large-scale dungeon does not meet He Xingwen's needs. It requires joining a group to listen to commands and rely on the power of the masses. No matter how powerful a master is, he cannot shine in such a large-scale dungeon of course except for the commander. This occasion is the time for the commander to show his skills. Since the further popularization of holographic games, the level of hidden dragons and crouching tigers in the folk has become higher and higher. In the past two years, many amazing commanders have appeared. It is hard not to suspect that they are all special ability people in the brain field. He Xingwen's purpose is very clear. He is here to play games. Of course, being a member of the masses is also one of the game content. But isn't this because He Xingwen has just lit up all the skills he can learn? And he is expanding? So after He Xingwen excluded this popular dungeon, he found a few dungeons that were released after he disappeared. Like the first dungeon, these dungeons were all contributed by the new civilization. He Xingwen could guess the idea of recycling the main console of the game by just thinking about it. It can be seen that becoming a dungeon is not necessarily a good thing for the NPCs in the dungeon. It may even be a torture of the 18th level of hell. Otherwise, there would not be a dungeon that has not been triggered on the mainland. Except for the artificial dungeon of the Undead Canyon. After all, the dungeon plot of the Undead Canyon was written by He Xingwen. But He Xingwen did not expect that two years later, the Undead Canyon would become a popular attraction by virtue of the dungeon. There are many dungeon strategies that He Xingwen searched casually. He Xingwen became interested and searched for relevant reviews. He found that they were all praising the planners for not having a conscience and leaving them some benefits. The difficulty of the Undead Canyon Dungeon is low. The rewards are rich. And you can draw cards. If you can't pay for the cards, you can only use the favorability. And players would like to draw a hundred times at a time. Card draw? He Xingwen clicked in and took a closer look. And found that the Undead Emperor followed the trend. Not long after the Undead Canyon was open to players. He combined the favorability of the Undead with card draws. Players who cleared the dungeon with excellent performance could get a chance to draw cards. Is the card library drawn by the players probably the collection of items that can easily destroy the world? After searching for the card draw rewards, He Xingwen found that most of them were insignificant ordinary items of course. The ordinary items here are compared with the artifacts in the Undead Emperor's collection. For players, even ordinary items in the collection can be considered SR. What's more, a certain player once drew an SSR a special item that was assessed as safe, which directly detonated the entire holographic game and led to a card-drawing frenzy among players. By the way, that player is called Oh Huang Wang. After searching for the relevant introduction of the Valley of the Dead, He Xingwen had an idea, opened the microphone, and sent a private message to Wu Xing, the copy of the Valley of the Dead. You can form a group of players who are familiar with the copy, and I will lead everyone to win. 
Wu Xing couldn't figure out what He Xingwen wanted to do. But adhering to the essence of tacit understanding, he still sent a message to his acquaintances. Everyone replied quickly, Yi Quan, the copy of the Valley of the Dead? This copy is not difficult. We have brushed it so many times. Wait. You said brother he led the team? Then I will definitely go. Report the address. Wang Luan, did you bring O Huang? If he goes, I will also go to draw a card. Oh Huang Wang, brother he led us to win easily. Then I must go to see brother he up close. Go. Definitely go. Li, the preplot of the New World Invasion Dungeon has begun. You are not going to participate? Greenleaf, I can't leave. Let's make an appointment next time. Dudu, I am doing the preplot of the New World Dungeon. I can't make it back. Wang Xian didn't play the game at all. He took the superconducting troops to do a special mission. After Wu Xing made an appointment with the talent, he replied to He Xingwen and made an appointment with him to meet at the teleportation point of the Undead Canyon. After the cutscene flashed on the computer screen, a strange scene emerged. On the flat ground, several houses rose from the ground. And in the distance, smoke was curling. The bustling food street ran all the way from the beginning to the end of the street. The food street was next to the market, and various forms of skeletons rubbed shoulders with players. What a scene of thriving business and living in peace and contentment. Chapter 266 Global Public Beta 77 Undead Canyon's Dungeon and Card Draw This scene is not unexpected. Players flocked to the Undead Canyon in large numbers, which had an impact on the Undead Canyon. It was natural for trade and food to spread. Who made the Undead not show their health bars? As long as the NPC can issue tasks. Who has the leisure to care about what race he belongs to? To be honest, the chaotic neutral attribute of the players is one of the reasons why the new order of the continent can be maintained after the disappearance of His Majesty the King. He Xing would observe the happy scene in front of him. Undead in various forms. Human. Animal. And even unrecognizable skeletons walked with the players. Half of the fruit was eaten. And the half that fell into the throat rolled into the chest cavity composed of bones. I don't know how these skeletons did it. The food swirled between the bones neither falling out of the bone gap nor being digested. After several skeletons finished eating in a pretentious manner, they reached their hands between their ribs, took out the food they had eaten and ate it again. Of course, there were also some skeletons who were particular. After eating, they stretched out their hands and pinched it, leaving only a pile of powder on their hands. And even the food residue disappeared. Unlike skeletons, ghosts were much more particular although they were just phantoms. Phantoms at least looked like human beings. Ghosts swallowed food directly. And how they digested it was another question. After all, judging from the way skeletons ate, these undead creatures probably had no eating function. If ghosts and skeletons can be seen as obvious non-human attributes, necromancers are more human than them. Most of them are covered with airtight black robes. And gray mist is surging under the black robes. So it is impossible to see each other's true appearance. But isn't this in the food street? So He Xingwen caught a glimpse of the other party, while he was eating, and saw the scene under the gray mist. Under the gray mist, there was a mass of skinless flesh and blood. He Xingwen only took a glance, and then moved his sight back. He could understand why the other party was covered tightly. Skeletons are only bones. But mages seem to have no bones and skin. Only flesh and blood. Thinking of this, He Xingwen couldn't help but look at the necromancer again, and thought deeply about why the other party could become a mage in this form. Maybe his brain is more flexible. Liches are different from necromancers. They have strange shapes similar to demons. As if they were made up of different species pieced together. They have all kinds of shapes and appear in the food street. One person takes the place of two people. Of course, the reason why these different undead creatures are so clear is that He Xingwen has learned his lesson. While observing the rough game screen, he also opened two web pages and searched for screenshots of those races in real time so that the rough textures in his eyes corresponded to the high-definition appearance in the eyes of the players. This comparison makes it even more obvious how shoddy the game in front of He Xingwen is. He, he brother, Wu Xing rushed to the teleportation location and greeted He Xingwen. A few minutes later, Yi Quan, Oh Huang, and Wang Luan also rushed to the teleportation location. The undead copy has been repeatedly brushed by players for two years, and a process has long been formed. A group of people first go to the end of the market to find the task NPC to accept the initial task, then replenish the special items required for the task at the market, and finally take He Xingwen to the path behind the task NPC. 
The reason why a market can be formed at the entrance of the teleportation point is closely related to the location of the dungeon behind him. The process of the players in the task made He Xingwen a little confused. As the planner of the dungeon plot, He Xingwen certainly knew how to clear the dungeon of the Undead Canyon. Otherwise, he would not have said that he would lead them to win easily. But the current problem is that the players not only know how to clear the dungeon, but also find shortcuts through repeated dungeon experience. He Xingwen followed the players and saw them complete the two pre-tasks step by step, and then directly skipped the progress, not caring about the undead trapped in the village at all, and went straight to find the NPC who was not in the plot designed by He Xingwen, an unknown undead mage. He Xingwen, who designed the entire dungeon plot, wait, why is there an unknown necromancer here? When the player had a verbal exchange with the necromancer and obtained the key item Bible of the Dead to trigger the wrath of the Lich King, the question mark on Ishingwen's head, who was distracted throughout the whole process, did not decrease but increased. Where did the Lich King come from? How could the undead dare to call themselves king? This is not a question of whether or not to dare. It is fundamentally against the instinct of the undead creatures. The undead have only one absolute master, the undead emperor. The entire undead canyon relies on him to exist, and it is truly maintained by the other party's thoughts. Calling the king equal to the undead emperor? This idea will never appear in the mind of the undead. This is not over yet. After the Lich King came out, he was forced to enter the battle. He Xingwen and his team were in a melee with the Lich King with a bright health bar. He Xingwen blankly pressed the keyboard to release skills, while the necromancer was responsible for cheering behind them. The health bar of the Lich King was extremely thick and it was impossible for just a few players to defeat him. So in the fierce battle, the plot was forced to cut in again. The necromancer who was responsible for cheering suddenly exploded, sacrificed himself with the Bible of the dead, and summoned the ghost earl. He Xingwen was stunned. A nameless mage summoned a count? What's this? The rules of the undead dictate that only dukes and marquises are qualified to summon counts. An undead below the level of count cannot summon superiors. Otherwise, if any skeleton soldier can explode and summon the undead emperor, then the undead emperor will be busy as a summoned beast. After the ghost earl was summoned, he fought with the lich king and both were injured. Then the ghost earl forced the plot and handed the Bible of the dead to the players, asking them to find the king's bone dragon to defeat the lich king and save the undead canyon. So the player takes the key props, goes through the task process, finds the king's bone dragon, and meets the other party's three requirements by the way. These three requirements are Tell a joke that the other party has never heard Offer the cleanest thing in the world And bathe the king's bone dragon The huge bone dragon on the screen lives in a volcano With a huge body Covering the sky and the sun Below is the surging magma On the other side of the magma is a pile of gold and silver And next to the gold and silver There are scattered equipment marked as artifacts To be honest This scene does have the flavor of a dungeon boss of course after all, it was designed by He Xingwen himself based on the routines of many games. But He Xingwen designed the scene with the intention of using it as a map for the player's last battle in the dungeon. Not for the final boss to chat and laugh with the player. He Xingwen searched for undead dungeon strategy on the web and realized from the many search results that the types of big bosses in this undead dungeon are very rich. From bone dragons to liches. If you use the dungeon shortcut to brush the dungeon, the final boss does not need to be defeated by the player. As long as the three requirements of the big boss are completed, the undead dungeon can be painlessly cleared. According to the normal dungeon plot, the player needs to fight all the way to the end and finally face the powerful boss and end up with a team-destroying ending. Anyway, when He Xingwen designed the dungeon, he estimated that the probability of players clearing the dungeon should be only 10%. But now, the dungeon clearance rate of the Undead Canyon is magically as high as 100%, so that it is called the last conscience of the planner by players. The world can testify that the planner has no conscience at all, and that is the Undead, who is crazy about giving players water. He Xingwen pressed the keyboard expressionlessly, followed other players to complete these three things, wiped the bone dragon clean, and every bone was shining, and then re-entered the plot. The bone dragon led the players back to the Lich King's place and staged a fake match. The players were excited. In the end, the Lich King was defeated and roared I will be back. Classic lines. And disappeared in the dungeon. The Bone Dragon raised its head to the players with dignity and began to make a closing statement for the dungeon.
Thank you warriors for saving the Undead Canyon. Although these lines were indeed designed by He Xinglin, it was very wrong to save them from his mouth. How could you? A big boss who should have been defeated. Suddenly become a teammate of the heroes? The simple mode dungeon came to an end. Wu Xing and his team gained a lot of reputation and card drawing opportunities. While the undead watched the stage play and enjoyed the bathing service. And everyone was happy. Let's go draw cards. Wang Luan led the player team to the dungeon exit. The dungeon entrance formed a market because of the coming and going of players. And the situation at the dungeon exit was a bit complicated. There were countless people praying to the gods. And a one-stop service for washing faces and hands came into being. There was more than one drawing cards NPC at the dungeon exit, which greatly shortened the players' queuing time. Wang Luan and his team walked in the front with great enthusiasm to try their luck, while Wu Xing fell behind and talked to Yi Xingwen, who was distracted the whole time. You didn't seem to be very active in the dungeon just now. Wu Xing lowered his voice and said, What's wrong? Nothing. Yi Xingwen said tactfully. It's just different from what I thought. Wu Xing went over this sentence in his mind and said, the difficulty of this dungeon is indeed relatively low. Wang Luan's voice suddenly interrupted. Brother He, you go first. The conversation between Wu Xing and Yi Xingwen was interrupted. He Xingwen controlled the game character to line up in front of the draw card NPC. The NPC was an ordinary skeleton. Nothing special. He Xingwen clicked the NPC with the mouse. Skipped the conversation. And looked carefully when the option appeared. Do you want to consume the clearance reward? The right to choose the collection of the undead emperor once? And make a random selection? 1. Yes. 2. No He Xingwen's thoughts that drifted away because of the dungeon instantly returned to their place. After all, who hasn't thought about getting a magic weapon in the game? Becoming famous. And reaching the peak of life when they were in middle school? At this moment, He Xingwen understood the mentality of those players who prayed to gods and Buddhas and engaged in feudal superstition. He held the mouse and did not click it. Instead, he pondered for two seconds and said to He Tong, I think I need a little luck. He Tong rarely reacted immediately. Do you need me to help you modify the probability? This may be a bit difficult. Although it is a probability problem for players. It has nothing to do with probability in actual operation. In short, the essence of the player's card drawing behavior is that the undead emperor picked a safe level collection at random. It depends entirely on the moment when the undead emperor picked it at random and has nothing to do with program calculations. Modifying the probability is called cheating. What does it have to do with luck? He Xingwen muttered, and said shamelessly, I need a kiss from the goddess of luck. He Tong's program calculated for a moment, and he was not sure whether He Xingwen's words were what he thought. But he still said honestly, there is no goddess of luck on earth. He Xingwen interrupted him, kiss me. The scene was quiet for a moment, and He Tong was a little helpless. I'm not with you. Remember it until the evening. He Xingwen finished teasing He Tong, and then reached out and pressed the mouse. There was a flash of light on the screen, and a bottle appeared in the hands of the draw card NPC, and the other party handed it to He Xingwen. He Xingwen stared at the perfunctory sticker on the screen, and he couldn't see clearly what the bottle looked like. He knew it was a bottle mainly because the name of the item automatically floated up when the mouse moved over the item, a bottle. He Xingwen had no experience. But other players had a lot of experience in drawing cards. Wang Luan turned his head and looked at the bottle in He Xingwen's hand and asked He Xingwen, What is the item description? He Xingwen clicked on the bottle and a brief introduction popped up. A bottle. Quality, ordinary. Category, sundries. Introduction, if you want to hold water to drink, it is perfect. And its special material makes it very sturdy. He Xingwen read it over and over again and felt that this introduction did not look like the specifications of a divine weapon. So he had an ominous premonition, after he shared the introduction of this item with other players. This ominous premonition came true. Yi Quan said oh. Not surprisingly, another piece of garbage. Wang Luan sighed. Very regretful. No good start. Oh Wang Wang was about to take the bottle. Weighing it repeatedly and said, I suspect this is a plastic bottle. This thing is not sturdy at all. It is made of plastic. Wang Luan was accustomed to drawing various items that did not match the game background when drawing cards. After all, everyone has more or less drawn similar garbage. I'm not the emperor of luck. He Xingwen sighed, recognized the reality, put the bottle into his backpack, and watched the others draw out all kinds of garbage one by one. 
Oh Huang Wang was the last one to draw a card. He drew out a golden atomic bomb. The thing was so big that it made a loud bang as soon as it appeared and fell heavily on the ground, attracting the attention of everyone present, not to mention the golden special effects that came with it. It was so tempting to engrave the words I am a divine weapon on it. Before seeing the specific form of this thing through the golden light, everyone had already guessed that this draw must have drawn something extraordinary. When the dazzling golden light disappeared, the familiar yet not so familiar atomic bomb appeared in front of everyone. And the scene was instantly in an uproar. The planner went too far. It's okay that he used plastic bottles and various electronic devices to fool the players. Anyway, these rubbish are just interesting to look at and add some fun to the card drawing. But you took out nuclear weapons in the opposite hand. Isn't that too rude? The game background was eaten up by the planner himself? Oh, Huang Wang. Admit it honestly. Are you the planner? I report that someone is cheating. Is this an atomic bomb? Or a model? If this is a model, it must be a one-to-one -one ratio. This thing is shining with golden light. It is definitely a magic weapon. Think carefully. If it is an atomic bomb, it may really be considered a magic weapon. Don't talk nonsense. Atomic bombs are not launched with bare hands. The launch of this thing requires a series of infrastructure. How can this condition be met in the era background of this game? So this is still garbage? A garbage that looks like a magic weapon but can only be kept as a souvenir? Everyone rushed up and talked about it, defining it in a few words, trying to rationalize something that was exaggerated to the point of being unreasonable. He Xingwen, who had seen this thing with his own eyes, knew very well that although it looked familiar, it could not be substituted for the nuclear weapons familiar to Earth. Seeing that the atmosphere on the scene was getting more and more heated, and more and more players gathered, Oh Huang Wang stuffed the artifact he had just drawn into the space bag and quickly retreated from here with Wu Xing and others. The familiar novice village. The familiar administrative bureau. The familiar meeting room. These people gathered here again after getting rid of the players to discuss the exaggerated artifact. Wang Luan spoke first. And couldn't wait to ask, where is the item introduction? Ether weapon. Quality, safe. Category, weapon. Introduction, if you hope to have a powerful weapon, it may disappoint you. This weapon can only be used once. But if you try to destroy something, this thing is perfect. The special design allows it to burst out destructive energy in an instant. Wu Xing's expression became serious. It looked similar to the effect of nuclear weapons. Yi Quan was very interested. Is this a small Easter egg plan? Wang Luan, who knew some of the inside story of the holographic game, also became serious. This appearance design is really interesting. If this is just a game, then this kind of easter egg is irrelevant. But since it is not a game, and the Special Investigation Bureau has long known that most of the collections of the undead emperor come from other worlds, then the appearance of this ether weapon can only prove that among the myriad worlds, there are worlds that are on the same path as the Earth, and their use of ether is far more in-depth than the Earth. Oh, Wang Wang scratched his head and clapped his hands, saying, Oh, this can be used in the invasion dungeon. Bai Xiaosheng said, that the new civilization invading the mainland is a bit difficult to deal with. Other people's thoughts were pulled back, and none of them followed Oh Huang Wang's overly jumpy thoughts. On the contrary, He Xingwen had known about its existence for a long time, so he didn't have any ideas even if he had. It was because of Oh Huang Wang's European emperor physique. In theory, this is the card drawing link manipulated by the undead emperor behind the scenes, which is definitely not random. But why is Oh Huang Wang's luck still so outstanding? Could it be that the undead emperor likes Oh Huang Wang particularly? He Xingwen took over the conversation. Is the new civilization a bit difficult to deal with? The invading new civilization has no specific form. And is the most difficult stream of consciousness enemy. Oh Huang Wang was eager to try. Bai Xiaosheng and the others are almost worried to death. This is just a timely help. No matter what new civilization it is. An atomic bomb will be dropped to teach them a lesson. Yi Quan was the first to support. Damn! Then your contribution to this dungeon will explode? Wang Luan also reacted quickly. Although I didn't pay attention to the pre-tasks of this invasion dungeon. If Bai Xiaosheng and the others are worried, it may not only be because the new civilization has no specific form, but more likely because the new civilization without a specific form is immune to physical attacks. Wu Xing glanced at the introduction of this ether weapon. This is an ether weapon. It shouldn't be considered a physical attack. Right? Wang Luan thought for two seconds but still felt that the problem was not that simple. 
Now the ether weapons in the hands of players are not many. But not few either. The reputation of the Hall of Knowledge can be exchanged for the Dwarf series of weapons. And the Bounty Hunter points of Esgen can also be exchanged for weapons. Not to mention the card drawing session in the Valley of the Dead. There are many ways for everyone to obtain artifacts. If the new civilization just doesn't have a specific form this time, it shouldn't make Bai Shaoshang and others worry to death. Right? What Wang Luan said makes sense. Ether weapons are not uncommon. Not to mention that mages are experts in ether spells. Even if the races that are not immune to ether energy don't have a specific form, they are just SOSO. Wu Xing thought, maybe there is something special about this invading civilization. Oh Huang Wang didn't care. Each invading civilization will be stronger than the last one. Now it's the sixth time. The strength of the new civilization should be improved. Otherwise the dungeon will become a carnival for players. How can the planner be so kind? He Xingwen, who was not so kind, suggested, in that case, why don't you ask by Xiaosheng? Oh Huang Wang came to his senses. I'll send him a private message and ask about the situation. Wang Luan couldn't help but lower his voice. Unconsciously bringing out a bit of sourness. You have a good relationship. Yi Quan coughed. You don't have to ask. I've already asked him. Oh Huang Wang, what did he say? It is not yet certain whether the enemy NPC is immune to ether attacks. Because the situation on the front line is a bit. Yi Quan chose his words. It's hard to say. Wang Luan pricked up his ears. Didn't the pre-task go smoothly? Yi Quan, it was quite smooth at the beginning. The progress of the pre-task was almost full. But it was cleared in a blink of an eye. The players who accepted the task to go to the front line to detect the enemy situation were wiped out. Chapter 267 Global Public Beta 78 The Sixth Invasion Dungeon There is a non-physical but real dividing line at the outermost edge of the continent, which divides the new civilization and the continent into two different worlds. On one side is the continent where people are resting and recuperating. And on the other side are the new civilizations that are becoming stronger through fighting and death. The continent is not interested in the distant and desolate edge of the world. And the new civilizations that are interested in the continent cannot break through this dividing line. So the two have maintained a long period of peace until a lost Manxing perseveres in breaking through this dividing line. The horn of war sounded in the distance. But back to the beginning. The reason why the new civilization at the outermost edge of the continent was able to discover the loophole in the dividing line was not because of the good luck of a certain new civilization, but because the players who reclaimed land in the gap of the world made too much noise, which attracted the attention of some new civilizations, and then led to the discovery of this barrier gap that could not stop the new civilization. Of course, this is not good news for the new civilization that is eager to enter the continent because almost the next second after discovering that they could enter the continent from this area, the new civilization had negative distance contact with the player. The first invasion of the continent. The dungeon kicked off. And the player became famous in the outermost part of the continent. There are too many players. Even the Zerg, who are good at overwhelming the world with numbers, will express such feelings when they meet the current players. Several new civilizations that emerged from the bloody battle. With their covetousness for the fertile land of the continent, launched five attacks on the players who blocked their way. But all ended in failure. Even the most ferocious creatures would admit one thing in these five failures. This line of defense formed by players cannot be defeated by conventional means. Pure fighting and endless death cannot defeat this strange race. And they must find extraordinary ways to break through the line of defense they formed. This is the fundamental reason why the difficulty of the sixth invasion dungeon has risen sharply. Bai Xiaosheng and his team do not know the brain activities of the enemy NPC. But this group of commanders, who have stood out through five invasion dungeons have already proved their ability with several victories in large battlefields. After the completion of the preplot suddenly returned to zero, they quickly noticed the difference between the enemy NPCs attacking this time and the previous ones, and adjusted the layout of the players on the front line, changing from a tentative expansion to a conservative contraction strategy. The scale of this large dungeon is extremely large. Although it is called a siege war. In fact, the city they need to defend is surprisingly vast. And coupled with the special environment of the world gap, the battlefield situation is extremely complicated. In addition, there are so many players participating in this large-scale dungeon that one commander cannot control the overall situation. So the battlefield is divided into several pieces. And hundreds of commanders start the battle simultaneously. When the battle is the most intense, Every inch here is filled with players and invaders. Of course, 
That is the scene that will only appear when the enemy launches a full-scale attack after the invasion dungeon officially begins. The sixth invasion dungeon has just entered the pre-task stage of mutual testing. Although players have flocked from all over the continent, large-scale conflicts have not yet occurred. The sudden reset of the pre-mission and the mass death of the players who performed the pre-mission brought the most difficult first-hand information to the commander. This time, the invaders have no specific form? Xiaoya enlarged the map projection, marked a point on a certain area, and said, let the player team in Area D3 move to Area B5, and pay attention to vigilance. I read the reports compiled by those players. Rubozi dragged the projection to restore the approximate location of the players, who performed the exploratory mission at that time, the total number of players participating in the pre-mission was as many as thousands. And when these thousands of people were presented on the map, they formed a surface that expanded along the barrier. This surface twisted and turned towards the outermost edge of the real continent, and fed back the dynamic records encountered along the way. In these records, many old friends familiar to players appeared, most of which were civilizations defeated in previous invasion copies. Because they had a life and death relationship, the old friends knew that death was meaningless to the players. Of course, it was also possible that they knew what the players would encounter if they went deeper. In short, when the players came into close contact with these old friends, the other party did not let the players go deeper. Rubozi marked the area with the symbol of miscellaneous troops. After all, it was the sixth invasion dungeon, and the players knew the dungeon mode very well. Most of the enemy races that were defeated in the previous invasion dungeons would become miscellaneous soldiers in the new invasion dungeon, located in front of the real invaders, guiding the other side and becoming cannon fodder for the first round of attacks. In the pre-mission, their appearance proved that the real army was not far away. The crooked surface continued to go deeper, and after passing the long ragtag army, an empty no-man's land was seen. The players who were performing the pre-tasks did not know that they had met the main army at first and thought that the main army was still further behind. So the players continued to go deeper. Until this moment, the pre-tasks were progressing smoothly. Until the player encountered a sudden death, the crooked surface was suddenly interrupted, and Rubozi wiped out the line formed by thousands of players with an expressionless face. Leaving an obvious blank mark on the projection, the closest dead player was even at the door of the gathering place. Thousands of players died at the same time. Rubozi finished recreating the entire process took a step back and said, the closest player is at the door. The enemy NPCs that invaded this time are a bit difficult to deal with. I'm curious. Chuan Yunjian stared at the projection and said, why don't they just kill all the players in the entire gathering place? Anyway, they can kill players hundreds of meters away. So it shouldn't be difficult to wipe out the entire gathering place? Although I really want to say that it may be because they are subject to some kind of restrictions and cannot wipe out all the players. The reason why the other party did not do so is more likely because it is meaningless. After Xiaoya issued a series of orders to mobilize the player team, he turned around and interrupted the conversation. If all the players are wiped out, they can be resurrected in the next second. I finally passed the test and became a commander, but I encountered such a difficult dungeon boss right at the beginning. Another player on the scene collapsed and said, How to fight this? Bai Xiaosheng came in from the door and was stunned when he saw this. The exploratory attack is over. The busy commanders all looked over. The mage came and cast a forbidden spell. Bai Xiaosheng closed the door and repeated the result. Nothing happened. The scene was quiet for a few seconds. And everyone turned their heads to continue their work. After all, each commander had several groups of players under his command. Ro Baozi restored the map on the projection. We still need to confirm the opponent's true form. Maybe the reason why nothing happened is that we didn't see the opponent's death scene. Chuan Yunjian asked by Xiaosheng, what did the group of NPCs who came to support say? We haven't finished discussing it yet. Bai Xiaosheng sat back in his seat, glanced at the private chat, and replied while saying, the news from the demons and AI Xijin has not been summarized yet. The demons are a group of old bastards who have been in contact with the new civilization for a long time. But it's outrageous that AI Xijin can open up the trade route under such circumstances. The other side is an invader who is eyeing them covetously. Robazi muttered, Don't they say that those knew? Is the civilization very cruel? That's the gold of Egypt. Siaya interrupted. No matter how cruel the new civilization is, it can't resist the light of gold. Right? Bai Xiaoshan lowered his head and replied to a few private messages, then stood up and said, I'll go pick up some acquaintances. 
You guys continue. What else can I continue? The information is zero. And I'm confused. Robazi muttered. And seen by Xiaoshan walking faster and faster. He asked from a distance. What acquaintances? Why did you go to pick them up? In the beginning, it was a road that spanned the gap between the worlds from the end of the South China Sea to the Ring Clan dungeon. Its purpose was to divert players so that they could reach the dungeon faster. Later, players built islands on the basis of this road and expanded it into a long and narrow land. The scale of this project was beyond imagination after all. It spanned the world gap, but the players relied on their large numbers to create the most magnificent man-made wonder in the history of the other world. A land connecting the outermost part of the continent with the South China Sea. The reason why it is called a road is that it expands along that road. From the appearance, it looks like a road that has been expanded several times. However, after several invasions of the dungeon, due to frequent use, this road was expanded several times until it could accommodate the flow of players. So that the word road could no longer describe it. It became a long and narrow land. He Xingwen was shocked by the unexpected scene. In the endless broken void, this road that continued to extend into the distance was like a miracle a miracle belonging to intelligent creatures. Especially when a large number of players drove various means of transportation to walk in it. They conquered the sky, the ocean, and the continent, and now took steps towards the world gap. Nothing can stop them. He Xingwen's feelings reached their peak at the end of this road. At the end of the road, the city guarded by the invasion dungeon was filled with a vast land area, constantly swallowing up the original broken void, transforming it into an environment suitable for players to fight. On the vast land area, a large number of players and the indigenous people of the continent created a new order. Not to mention the food street, a must of building for players, because it is located on the front line. The indigenous people established a wartime organization here to provide supplies and weapons for frequent wars. This place is like a small city. Frequent invasions and the failure of space transmission in the world gap have forced the garrison at the front line to take on the production function on its own. I can only be thankful again that food is not a must-have for players. Otherwise so many players gathered in an area far away from the mainland. And the food consumed would definitely become an astronomical figure. Due to this special geographical location, the time and manpower required to transport various items from the mainland to the front line have increased by almost a thousand times. However, considering the existence of druids, this problem is actually not difficult to solve. He Xingwen habitually turned around various problems and followed Oh Huang Wang and others through the crowd with ease. The players at the front line reacted coldly to the masters, and many players even greeted Wang Luan and others familiarly probably because the probability of the masters appearing on the front line is too high. So the players have lost their freshness to the masters. When passing through the crowd and entering the central area of this gathering place, He Xingwen saw many names he had seen during the internal test. After they walked into the central area, Oh Huang Huang successfully connected with Bai Xiaosheng. Your luck. Bai Xiaosheng glanced at the team brought by Oh Huang Huang, paused for a second at the only unfamiliar nickname, and then said, I suggest that you stay in the undead dungeon all year round and sell artifacts to players in bulk. Even if you become a second-hand dealer, it will be enough for you to make a fortune. Oh Huang Wang waved his hand and said modestly, This is too exaggerated. Luck is concerned. I just have better luck occasionally. Yes, I have better luck occasionally. As a result, the only two artifacts I drew were you. Wang Luan said sarcastically. He's just like a game planner's agent. Luan Luan Luan. As Wang Luan spoke, Bai Xiaosheng also turned his attention to him. It's a pity that you didn't come to command the dungeon this time. Yi Quan coughed. It's not that he didn't want to come. He took the command test and didn't pass. Wang Luan glared at Yi Quan who was exposing his secrets. You betrayed too quickly. Are you still a brother? Yi Quan touched his nose and stood next to Bai Xiaosheng. I have to participate in the dungeon next. Of course, I have to cling to the commander's thigh. Seeing that Wang Luan's head was throbbing with blue veins, Bai Xiaosheng changed the subject. Xing Han Kanlan? I read Wang Luan's strategy. It's amazing. He Xingwen equipped the smile. Emoticon, which was considered a response. Bai Xiaosheng also turned back to the topic. There are many folk bosses like Xing Han Kanlan among the players of Crouching Tigers and Hidden Dragons, and there is really nothing to discuss. After all, the player base is there. And no matter how low the probability of a talent appearing is, it will be converted into an astonishing number in a large base. We were just discussing this. 
by Xiaoshan led O Huang Wang and others to the command center. Introducing the situation as he walked, the difficulty of this dungeon has increased sharply. We suspect that the enemy NPC has the ability to directly kill the entire gathering place in seconds. Wu Xing paused and heard by Xiaosheng continue. None of the players, who were killed by the enemy NPC before saw the other party's attack. We don't even know what they are. By the way, the mage tentatively cast a forbidden spell. But there was no reaction. After this series of information, the atmosphere of O Wang Wang's team, which had just arrived at the front line, became serious. Bai Xiaosheng pushed open the door and led O Huang Wang and the others into the busy command center. The intelligence of Azijin has been transmitted back. Wen Chuanianjian, who was talking to someone, saw Bai Xiaosheng. He immediately turned around and gestured to Anuta beside him, seeing that everyone was gathered. Anuta said directly, This matter is not a secret in the outermost part of the continent. In order to open up the road to the continent, the new civilization that failed in the previous invasions contacted the Shadow Clan and launched an attack together. Shadow Clan? Anuta, this new civilization is very powerful. Even in the new continent with such a chaotic order, no intelligent creature will take the initiative to provoke it. From the sporadic information we have obtained, this race is very likely related to Shadow. It is said that they hide in the shadow and can kill the enemy silently. Bai Xiaoshan was stunned, but there is no light source or shadow in the special environment of the world gap. This is more like some exaggerated legend. Anuta said, we have only opened up trade routes with a few weak civilizations, and we are not able to obtain all the resources on the new continent. Information. Wu Xing, does the demon have any news about the Shadow Clan? They had contact with the New World earlier. So the information they have should be more comprehensive than yours. Right? Anuta didn't give a good look. You should ask the demons about the demons' news. Watching Ezijin turn around and leave. Yi Quan muttered, The demons are too unpopular. Wang Lu inside. Since the demons set up a separate review and verification agency, their reputation among other races has simply fallen to a negative number. Oh Huang Wang objectively said, I think they asked for it. They insisted on interfering in Ezijin's normal trade behavior and propose some restrictions on trade volume and trade types in the Continental Conference, making it impossible for Ezijin to sell the goods that were originally selling well, and other people can't buy anything they want. Hearing this, Wu Xing looked at He Xingwen, who was listening to the whole process and explained, this should be to prevent monopoly. In fact, the proposal of the devil has something to do with the Special Investigation Bureau. Although it is a bit incredible, among all the indigenous races, the one that has the closest connection with China is indeed the devil especially after the disappearance of His Majesty the King. China has slowly influenced this newly formed new order through its close connection with the devil. And together with the devil, it has become one of the factors that maintain the vitality of the new order. Yi Quan, the reason is one thing. What the demons did was not fair. They directly cut off the financial resources of Azijin. If it were not for Azijin's principle of not starting a war, the demons and Azijin would have fought long ago. Bai Xiaoxing had just finished discussing the news about Azijin with other commanders. Hearing the lively discussion here, he interrupted and said, even if Azijin did not have the principle of not starting a war, there would be no war. The kingdom is still there. Azijin is a neutral force. But the demons are nominally citizens of the kingdom. Bai Xiaosheng said bluntly, if Azijin wants to declare war, it can only declare war on the kingdom. To be honest, I have always felt that the new order of the continent with the kingdom as the core has just the right balance for all races. Especially when His Majesty the King disappears. Before he finished speaking, another strange looking creature came into the command office. It was the demon. Azijin just left. Didn't you meet him on the way? Robazi greeted him. Not disguising his intention to watch the fun, didn't they fight? Sar turned aside and said proudly, I brought the dwarves with me. There were so many people. Azijin was embarrassed to fight. Doran had a gloomy face. And it was obvious that the relationship between the dwarves and the demons was not very good. Thrall continued, We have already known about the news that the Shadow Clan joined the war. This dungeon is too difficult. The support team sent by the mainland is on the way and the dwarves are the first to arrive. Bai Xiaosheng focused on the key point, what kind of race is the Shadow Clan? We don't know either. Seeing that Bai Xiaosheng's expression was not good, Thrall spread his hands and said, the new world is so big, you can't expect us to know every new civilization. Right? A race as powerful as the Shadow Clan. Would you not try to contact it? Wu Xing interrupted the conversation, 
Or you haven't found a way to contact each other? Oh! You are here too. Thrall greeted Wu Xing and said, We really haven't found a way to contact them. In fact, it's not just us. Most of the new civilizations in the new world. But they not only exist, but also have a great reputation. So they must have left traces. Right? Sar, all that was left were news of death. A certain race tried to seize the other's territory, but was wiped out. This kind of news is everywhere. Bai Xiaoxiang became interested, although they have no specific form. Do they have a fixed territory? Speaking of this, Sar also became interested. Obviously, this news was the reason why he made a special trip, and the location of this territory is particularly good. Located in the area with the richest ether in the new world. Robazi glanced at Sar. You don't want us to steal the house. Do you? It sounds like we are going to die. We were killed by the other party at the gate of the base camp. Wouldn't we die even faster if we go to the other party's lair? Chuanyunjian also said, Can you at least tell me what this race is? What does it look like? What form it is? Etc. Except for the vague shadow. No one knows what the shadow clan is. Sar reminded them, I hope you can understand what this means. There are so many races in the new world that cannot be confirmed to which race they belong. Which can only mean that they do not belong to any form we are familiar with. Bai Xiaosheng thought for a moment, diverged his thoughts, and made an association, invisible form. Not a form we are familiar with. It sounds a bit like unobservable. Sar's face became serious. Unobservable is in the world projection. And it is impossible to affect this world unless they have opened that door. Bai Xiaosheng, is that possible? Absolutely impossible. Sar said firmly, not to mention that the door will inevitably leave traces when it is pushed open. Just one point. If the other party pushed the door open, it would not be unobservable. And we should be able to find the other party's trace. Wang Luan couldn't help but say, I think it's useless to discuss here. Why not send players to try twice more? See if we can find any clues. Chuan Yanjian, before you came, other players had already tried several times. As long as you pass the miscellaneous army and continue to go deeper into the blank area, you can trigger the opponent's attack. From entering the blank area to accepting the test mission at the gate of the gathering place, all of them will be wiped out. Wang Luing closed his mouth. Bai Xiaosheng asked Sal, What do you think? They have occupied the territory on purpose. There must be information there, said Thrall. Send players to check the situation. From the test just now, we can't get close to their territory. Bai Xiaosheng reminded Thrall, It's useless to die all the way. The other party is blocking the door of the gathering place. Thrall spread his hands. With a sense of leisure as if he was out of the matter, then I have no other ideas. How about you think about how to surrender gracefully? Bai Xiaosheng was too lazy to pay attention to him and looked at the dwarf, who didn't speak the whole time. The upright dwarf said simply, If it doesn't work, we can retreat to the kingdom. This sounds like a sure loss. Bai Xiaosheng murmured to himself. The planner can't be so inhumane. Right? As an internal test player, Yi Quan couldn't help but sigh. What do you think? When has the planner ever been humane? Wu Xing couldn't help but glance at He Xingwen, who was silent the whole time. He Xingwen, who listened to the whole conversation, did not pay attention to the key points of their discussion. He was searching for the dungeon strategy and choosing his next dungeon. Wu Xing saw that He Xingwen did not respond. So he leaned close to him and said in a low voice, What do you think? Although Wu Xing's voice was very low, the atmosphere at the scene made it difficult to ignore even the smallest voice. Everyone's eyes fell on Wu Xing and He Xingwen. He Xingwen did not notice this gaze the picture quality could not distinguish such a subtle expression at all. What do you mean? He Xingwen flipped through the strategy and said casually, It sounds like this dungeon is quite difficult. Wu Xing saw that everyone's eyes were on them. So he closed his mouth and stopped asking questions. Bai Xiaosheng took over and said, I believe there are ways to clear all dungeons, but we just haven't found the right way. After this, the scene was quiet for a moment, and people even had the illusion of hearing the crazy sounds of the player's brains. Bai Xiaosheng's tense expression relaxed, and he suddenly clapped his hands. Since we can't beat the Shadow Clan, and we can't find out anything, let's find someone we can beat. After Bai Xiaosheng clapped his hands to attract the attention of everyone present, he said, the Shadow Clan was invited by the miscellaneous army. So why don't we ask them? The sixth time. The atmosphere in the room suddenly relaxed. And then quickly became lively. Chapter 268 Global Public Beta 79 Prisoners The command center is busy again. 
Once the target is found, this brain that has been honed in five invasions can quickly mobilize the scattered players, give full play to the number of players and the advantage of immortality, and achieve their goals. Although some players may think that this magnificent large-scale copy is very suitable as a stage for becoming famous in one battle, and to stage the plot of Don't Worry About the Road Ahead Without a Confidant. Who in the world does not know you? But in fact, the problem is that this large-scale copy is too grand. A single individual cannot change the entire situation by himself in a war of this magnitude, of course. If he is strong enough to kill all enemies by himself, that is another situation. But in reality, let alone players, even the kingdom with God's wrath number 5, cannot do this operation of instantly killing all enemies on the battlefield. Even God's wrath number 5 can only affect a local area of the entire battlefield, let alone a single player. As mentioned before, the best performer in this dungeon is always the commander, who uses the battlefield as a chessboard and tens of millions of players as chess pieces, and leads players to the final victory with strategies. After all, the enemies in this dungeon are different from those familiar to players, and there is no such thing as killing a leader to win the war. The winners who fought out of the new world rarely had leaders in the feudal sense. They have not yet entered the unified stage of centralized power. Even if a ruler is killed, there will be intelligent creatures to replace him immediately. The extreme brutality of the new civilization is the fundamental reason why players need effective command and unified attack. At the moment when the number of players is skyrocketing, it is almost incredible to form an effective command. After all, players are difficult to control, and there are so many of them. But isn't this because the enemy is too brutal? In the first invasion of the dungeon, the players who had not yet established effective command relied on their numerical advantage to once push the invaders back to the border. But the invaders launched attacks again and again. Their blood and corpses soaked the land and shattered in the broken void. And the death toll increased every day, accumulating into a shocking number. Even so, the enemy's offensive has not stopped. In the end, this long battle line almost turned into a meat grinder. Players who will not die completely have long lost count of their own deaths. But the enemy's corpses are at their feet. Enough for them to intuitively perceive how many people have died. The shocking death rate and the offensive without any progress are fatal blows to any conventional troops. Enough to make the morale of the troops fall to the bottom. And even cause camp bombing and desertion. Even for players. Once the mission falls into decline. They will also be defeated. But the enemies who invaded the dungeon are different. They are unmoved. The shocking death rate even increases their desire to attack, so that the players who have the advantage are dragged on the dividing line, and the progress of the mission begins to decline. This is directly related to the ecological environment of the New World. In the New World, once the new civilization is defeated, it is the fall of the entire civilization. Therefore, the more desperate the situation, the more fierce their counterattack. There is no retreat and failure in their options. In the environment of the New World, once a weak attitude is revealed, countless fights will be ushered in. In other words, from the moment this new civilization launched an invasion war against the players, they only had one choice, to win. And the loser would only end up dead. This is why in the subsequent invasion copies, there appeared a motley army composed of the previous invasion civilizations, which was their only remaining meaning of existence. Of course, this is also directly related to the players' wars on the new world rarely leaves survivors and compared to the brutality of the new world. The players as the winners are too kind to the losers, and they don't even kill the losers. When the battlefield was in a stalemate, the meat grinder was constantly devouring flesh and blood, and the enemy had no intention of retreating at all, and the progress of the copy began to decline. The players had to urgently find a way to pass the copy. This method is to take the initiative to attack. The only problem is that when defending, the players can at least play the advantage of numbers. But once they change from defense to offense, the current situation of the players being scattered immediately stands out. After players launched attacks one after another, which created opportunities for the enemy, the role of command stood out. At first, there were only one or two commanders commanding dozens of players, barely forming an effective attack. But as time went on, several commanders soon emerged and formed a command system that initially covered large-scale battlefields. Bai Xiaosheng stood out here and became famous in one battle. His overwhelming global strategic vision allowed him to establish a command system from commanding dozens of players, to commanding several groups, and then commanding other commanders. This was the turning point from defense to offense in the first invasion of the dungeon. 
and it was also the clarion call for the end of the months-long stalemate. A large number of players launched an organized counterattack. When the enemy refused to retreat, they surrounded and killed them, cut off from the rear, and directly pushed back to the attacker's nest on the new continent, and cleared the dungeon. After clearing the dungeon, the players who were working hard in the invader's nest saw that there were dense red dots all around. Need I say more? Players shouted to the commander not to retreat, and they would bloodbath the new continent, and launched an unscrupulous attack on the surrounding red names. Then they died collectively, and returned to the resurrection point. This cannot be said, that the players are too weak. But pulling the hatred of several new civilizations at once on the new continent is like poking a hornet's nest. Other races that had been watching from the sidelines all died. In an instant, thousands of trees blossomed, and the white light of the players' deaths illuminated the gaps in the world. After that, the new civilization did not give up the act of invading the new world. And the players did not give up the idea of entering the wild area to spawn monsters. Many enthusiastic players would go to the periphery of the new world whenever they had nothing to do, and then return to the frontline stronghold. It is difficult to say whether the hastily launched second invasion copy has a direct relationship with the excessive harassment of the players. But in any case, the appearance of the second invasion copy completely dispelled the idea of players to demolish the frontline stronghold. And building wartime buildings here has become a permanent residence. By now, these links have already formed a process in the past two years. Bai Shaosheng gave the direction. And the command office began to mobilize the players. As for He Xingwen and others. To be honest, this group of people even seemed to be a bit of a hindrance here. Yi Quan was eager to move. And took the lead in dividing the team. Catching miscellaneous troops? I am good at frontline combat. I will do it too. Chuan Yanjian glanced at Yi Quan and put him in the battle team. Oh Huang Wang was not as excited as Yi Quan, seeing that everyone was busy. He turned the topic back to the purpose of his coming here, if the ether weapon is useful. Contact me then. Bai Xiaosheng finished a paragraph quickly and turned to look at Oh Huang Wang. The trapping team is short of people. I will arrange for you to join. Oh Huang Wang scratched his head. Okay. I don't have anything to do anyway. Rubozi muttered, of course. The Emperor of Europe should be worshipped. Even if it is a good omen. I think the difficulty of this dungeon may be because of the lack of the Emperor of Europe. A player on the side was busy and began to look for external aid. Luin Luin Luin. If you have nothing to do next. There's a team of probing attacks here. Can you lead the team? Wan Luin walked over with a reserved step. Hua Xing. You have a good relationship with Lu Yi. Another commander stuck his head out of the busy work and said to Wu Xing. There are some small logistical problems here. Can you give me some face? Give me a small favor? Wu Xing had a mission to do. So he glanced at He Xingwen and didn't respond. He Xingwen, who was still checking the strategy, didn't notice this gaze. But Bai Xiaosheng interrupted the conversation. The stars are brilliant. He Xingwen switched back to the game page. And even the crudely made game screen could intuitively feel that everyone here was busy. Bai Xiaosheng continued, You have a good relationship with AI Zhijin. Can you ask AI Zhijin if he has any other relevant information? He Xingwen was stunned by the words, he has a good relationship with AI Xijin. And then realized that the other party should have drawn the conclusion based on the information that He Xingwen had brushed AI Xijin's special achievement in Wan Lun's strategy. Thrall did not treat himself as an outsider at all. And actively led the way, I'll take him. So, from then on, every player in the team that was a bit of a nuisance was assigned a task. Perfectly integrated into the frontline battlefield. And made the best use of everything. He Xingwen did not mind this arrangement. He used a wave gesture to Wu Xing, followed Thrall, and left the busy command office. Thrall kept his word and took He Xingwen to find Azijin. Anuta pressed the communicator and glanced at the uninvited guest. What are you doing here? Tsar seemed not to notice his bad face and walked into the room leisurely. While looking around, he said, I brought a player to see you. How come you don't have any good things? Anuta looked at He Xingwen and said, What do you want? He Xingwen revived by Xiaoxing's words. The commander asked me to ask you if you have any other relevant information. No. Anuta refused. The devil knows more than we do. Can't you just ask the devil directly? Humble. Too humble. Sar looked through it. Took back his hand and said, Excessive modesty is a bad habit. You have to change. We don't know as much as you do. The devil's attitude was so humble. It must be no good. He Xingwen. Who knew the devil? looked at the victim with sympathy. Since Bai Xiaosheng asked him to ask, 
he asked. He Xingwen simply controlled the game character to walk out the door and disappeared from the NPC. As soon as the players left, the atmosphere at the scene suddenly became solemn, of course. It was Ezogen and the dwarves who were solemn. While the demons were still smiling, what did the undead say? Thrall grinned and said, still not intervening? If the undead king takes action, Shadow Clan will be nothing at all. The affairs of the living belong to the living. Anuta repeated the reply from the undead. The undead will not be killed. What about Inverse? Thrash touched his chin and said, That guy is easy to deceive. And he has a close relationship with the undead king. Trick him here? The dwarf said in a deep voice. He is busy with the mechanical body project. Even if he wants to run away, and Isu will not let him go out. Thrash snorted. This project is redundant and should have been cut long ago. Anuta, pulling the topic back, don't change the subject. Why did you come here specially? Sal sat down at the table and said clearly, I don't think players can stop the Shadow Clan. This civilization is too weird. Anuta looked at the dwarf calmly. What does the kingdom say? If it really doesn't work, the dwarf took over the conversation, returned to the kingdom's territory. The king will protect his people. Can't retreat? Sal said firmly, if we retreat, what's the difference between losing? We must win. If we can't even take the new world, what world projection are we looking for? The scene was silent for a few seconds. The dwarf said slowly, it all depends on the players. Sar took a deep breath and said in a very surprised tone, you mean the players who treat the world as a game? Wow. If I may be frank, this is a very optimistic view. Anuta did not tolerate the demon's sarcasm. Do I need to remind you? It was not the demons who stopped the five attacks on the new world. You are not qualified to judge the players like this. The players are the kingdom's biggest trump card. And it is also our biggest trump card. Demons don't trust anyone. Thrall spread his hands. I really wish I could be as optimistic as you. If you don't have any other effective suggestions, I'll do what I think. Anuta frowned. What are you trying to do? Embers. Thrall left them with his back. The best thing at the moment is not the mechanical body, but expansion. It's not just the new civilizations that have lost their patience. The patience of the continent has also been exhausted. Watching the demon leave, Anuta and the dwarf looked at each other. Aren't you going to notify Andisu? No matter what the demon is thinking, it's always right to let him be mentally prepared. The dwarf took out the communicator. The demon who left Ezogen's room instantly relaxed his expression. And he happily hummed a little song from the player. No guns. No cannons. The enemy gave us. The cheerful singing suddenly stopped. And the demon met the player standing not far from the door. Thrall looked at the overly dull player. Walked around him. And poked him with his hand. He didn't get any response from the player. So he took out a knife thoughtfully. He Shingwen. Who had placed the game character casually. Found himself at the resurrection point. When he checked the strategy and switched back to the game. The system prompt was hanging next to him, reminding He Xingwen that he had died once just now. Isn't this a safe zone? Where did the enemy come from? As soon as He Xingwen had this doubt, he saw the demon strolling into the resurrection point and greeted him friendly. What are you? Well, this is not friendly at all. He Xingwen controlled the game character to bypass the opponent. The demon caught up with him, asking repeatedly, Shadow? Unknown creatures disguised as players? Or something more bizarre? The scale of this garrison is not small. He Xingwen walked around and soon got lost in a bunch of similar buildings. He pressed the W key while opening the small map to check his current position. The demon following him continued, Your disguise is too bad. And it's still the same now. You can see the problem at a glance. Do you want to know where the problem is? He Xingwen found his position on the map. But after thinking carefully, why did he have to walk? Wouldn't it be better to teleport directly? He Xingwen clicked on the backpack and look for the teleportation scroll. The demon on the side continued, Please satisfy my curiosity. If the answer is interesting, I don't mind betraying. After all, I am a demon. You also know that demons don't have a good reputation on the mainland. He Xingwen clicked on the teleportation scroll, and the teleportation scroll did not respond. Instead, the system on the side reluctantly popped up a reminder. It is detected that the player's area cannot be teleported. Please try again later. He Xingwen slapped his head and remembered that this place is full of world gaps. The space is torn into pieces and there is no way to teleport at all. He Xingwen closed his backpack and looked at the dogskin plaster next to the game character. 
the other party was still trying to persuade He Xingwen. To be honest, I think the new world is not bad. The rule of strength first is very suitable for us. I just reacted slowly. He Xingwen made an excuse casually, under the premise that he couldn't get rid of the devil quickly. He reluctantly perfunctorily said, You think too much. Your reaction is too slow. Sal finally waited for He Xingwen to speak and said with a smile, It's like there is no soul. Only a lump of ether. Sal reached out and poked the ball in front of him, but I just tried it. Even if I cut this lump of ether, there is nothing strange inside. How did you do it? Sal circled around He Xingwen, lowered his voice, and said like a brother, Tell me quietly. I promise I won't tell anyone. Bullshit. It's better to believe that a Sal can climb a tree than to believe in a demon. He Xingwen sneered at the demon's promise and walked in another direction, bumping into the noisy players. He Xingwen stopped and saw several red names in the player group who were tied up tightly. The sound of conversation came from the players. I didn't think before. Why is the command center so far away? Another player is looking over here. Be alert. Several players turned their heads to look at He Xingwen and the demon who were staring at them. Don't rush to grab the heads. The commander must be alive. Why did you bring a demon? Have you received a hidden mission? As soon as these words came out, several players in the crowd walked towards He Xingwen and his team. After two years of running in, most of the natives have fully understood the habits of the players. Before the players spoke, Thrall took the lead and said, There is no mission. I will take him to find the way. Have you captured the miscellaneous troops? The fighting methods of these races have been figured out long ago. And there is no difficulty at all. Seeing Thrall say this, the players returned to the crowd and continued to carry these prisoners towards the command center. We have to be careful that they will explode if they are not careful. The efficiency of the players was much faster than He Xingwen thought. From the time Bai Shaosheng made his judgment, to the task assigned by the command office, to the task completion, the whole process was smooth and took less than an hour. He Xingwen subconsciously followed the group of players. Thrall followed him leisurely. The players returned to the command office and the prisoners were handed over to another team of players. The command office was still extremely busy. Among the countless noisy voices, the order to mop up the battlefield could be vaguely heard. He Xingwen listened for a while, and learned from the scattered information why the efficiency of capturing prisoners was so high it was still the same reason. The number of players was too large. Although the player team that He Xingwen saw escorting the prisoners was only dozens of people, there were a total of five player teams that participated in the battle with the miscellaneous army and captured the prisoners. Each of them had different responsibilities, such as bait, main force, and outflanking. The cooperation of hundreds of players completed this prisoner operation without attracting the attention of the miscellaneous army and the shadow clan. Various communication functions in the game have been opened in the past two years. The communication in the private chat and channel has given the commander room to play, so that such cooperation can be completed two years later. He Xingwen was shaken by the charm of the commander at this time. But Su returned to reality. The captives tied up were being studied by Bai Shaoshang and others. To be precise, the captives were not tied up, but were directly locked at the joints by the machine, using a complex and comprehensive method to prevent them from breaking free. He Xingwen took a closer look at the lock and felt that the dwarf's forging art seemed to have gradually gone astray under the influence of the players. If it were before, Thrall would have been very interested in teasing these captives. But the situation was different now. Thrall's attention was focused on this suspected player. An unknown creature whose identity was unclear. Speaking of which, is this guy's expression management broken? He hasn't changed his expression for so long? Thrall carefully observed He Xingwen and was surprised that other players didn't notice the abnormality of this player. After all, the player is a special creature that cannot be disguised. No intelligent creature can disguise the incomprehensible brain circuit of the player. He Xingwen, who once again forgot to use emoticons for the game character, was observing the interaction between Bai Shaosheng and the captives. After staring at the captive for a while, Bai Shaosheng thought for a while, and whispered a few words to other commanders. Demons? Forget it. Demons are just looking for trouble. Let's find a mage. Mages are reliable. Mages are reliable. But wouldn't Ezijin be better for this kind of thing? They should be more professional. Right? Bai Shaosheng made the final decision. Then Ezijin. So, a moment later, Anuta, who had just left, was invited over. You mean, you want to get all the information about the Shadow Clan from their memories, including the whole process of their contact with the Shadow Clan? 
Anuta stared at Bai Shaosheng for a few seconds, then turned to look at the demons who were watching the fun at the scene. Demons are better at this than us. Sar waved his hand. Very modestly, I am indeed good at torture and coercion. But I can't use it on these intelligent creatures. Once the restrictions are lifted and they have a chance to talk, they will definitely explode on the spot in the next second. Of course, this does not mean that the new civilizations on the new continent cannot communicate. But objectively speaking, there is a deep hatred between the defeated new civilizations and the players. It is too fantastic to expect the race that was almost exterminated by them to sit down and have a good conversation. Anuta, it is very difficult to intercept specific memories from the minds of intelligent creatures, and it will cause damage to the soul and brain of the intelligent creatures. This behavior is determined by Esigen as an item that is not recommended to be provided to customers. So we have not studied it. A player muttered, Esigen has a moral bottom line. Excuse me. It is difficult for an existence without self-discipline to last long. Anuta glanced at the demon meaningfully and said to the players, Although Esigen cannot provide help, you can seek help from the undead. A player was delighted when he heard this. Coincidentally, some players saw Embers and Indesa nearby. Just go to Embers. Why are they on the front line? Didn't they just? Anuta said here, and suddenly turned his head to look at the arrogant Thrall. Thrall spread his hands. I didn't contact them. But I guess, after you helped me tell Andy Sue, he thought my idea was good. Anuta reacted. Did you do it on purpose? You found out. Thal applauded him. You're awesome. The devil's fighting spirit is really the same. And there is even a tendency for the disciple to surpass the master. He Xingwen moved two steps outward to avoid blood splashing on him in the fight. Chapter 269 Global Public Beta 80 Half-Plane Creatures Unfortunately, the demon and Ezogen did not fight. And both sides showed great restraint. The provoked Anuta did not even walk away, but chose to ignore the demon. Bai Shaosheng rejoined the busy command, leaving only the demon, Ezogen, the captives, and He Xingwen forming a small corner with a strange atmosphere. He Xingwen, who had nothing to do, was idle for a moment, and suddenly realized, why is he staying here? If he has this time, wouldn't it be better for him to go to a dungeon? As for the subsequent development of Shadow and the dungeon, He Xingwen is not uninterested. But this kind of plot, once there is progress, players will immediately spread it widely. And there is no need to stand here to witness the plot with their own eyes. Thinking this through, He Xingwen manipulated the game character and turned to walk towards the door. As soon as he moved, Thrall immediately stuck to him and greeted him warmly. Where are you going? Don't you plan to stay and watch the show? I'm going to do a mission. He Xingwen pressed the W. Key while perfunctorily saying to the demon, Please make way. Thrall stuck to him. I'll give you a mission. The reward is super generous. Let me see what treasures I have. Hiss. The demon with his back to the door was caught off guard and was hit by the skeleton. He cried out in pain. I'm such a big demon standing here. Don't you notice it? The skeleton stretched out his hand to push him away and said confidently, I noticed it, but I don't feel pain, so it won't hurt if I get hit. Thrall rubbed the place where he was hit, stepped aside, and didn't say anything rude. After all, although demons deserve a beating, their demands are maintained at a delicate bottom line, and undead creatures like embers, who have abnormal brain circuits and can summon the undead emperor at any time, are not suitable for provocation. Demons are not afraid of death. But being transformed into undead creatures is another matter. He Xingwen saw this scene and sighed a little. One thing overcomes another. It's wonderful. He Xingwen stepped aside, waited for Embers to take Andy Su past them, and continued to walk towards the door in a Loki manner. Thrall rubbed the place where he was hit, and stared at the unknown creature thoughtfully. Even Embers didn't notice his problem. So this guy either has no problem or has a big problem. He watched He Xingwen walk to the door. And just as he was about to successfully escape, he said in surprise, Where are you going? A bunch of players cast their eyes at them. And the undead and dwarves who were talking to Anuta also subconsciously turned their heads to look at them. He Xingwen, who was pressing the W key, didn't react, and habitually pressed the key and walked out of the command office directly and was then pulled back by Thrall. The cutscene flashed twice. And before the scene had time to emerge, it changed back to the command office. Now, the natives also realized that something was wrong. Anuta reacted the fastest. Is there something wrong with this player? And Andy Su fully demonstrated his distrust of demons. Can you do your business first? 
Stop teasing the players? Bai Xiaosheng took a look at the situation here and rushed over to interrupt the conversation. What happened? Wu Xing, who was among the players, walked silently to the demon, rescued He Xingwen from the demon, and took He Xingwen back to the player camp. So, the positions on the scene suddenly became interesting. The undead and other natives stood in a circle around the captives. The demon stood alone at the other end, and the players filled the gap between them with an overwhelming number of people. Thrall glanced at He Xingwen, who had mixed into the crowd. I suspect that the Shadow Clan disguised as a player and mixed in among us. The players present burst into heated discussions. Bai Xiaoshan glanced at He Xingwen, then looked at the demon. Somewhat puzzled, can the Shadow Clan disguise themselves as other races? Thrall scratched his head and said confidently, How do I know? You raised a suspicion that shook the morale of the frontline battlefield. Wu Xing said coldly, Your answer makes it hard for me not to doubt whether it is a player or a demon who is disguised. The already heated discussions reached a peak again. Bai Xiaosheng reacted quickly and comforted Wu Xing. You will only make the problem more complicated if you say that. This problem is easy to solve. We all know that it is difficult for players to disguise themselves. Wang Luan suggested, Will it be clear if you die once? If you are a player, you will return to the resurrection point. If you are not a player, you will be exposed. He looked at He Xingwen and said, It's just a matter of losing some experience. Amid the responses of the players, Thrall continued, I have tried it. Wang Luan looked back and forth at the demon, He Xingwen in confusion. Since he is standing here, I assume that he was resurrected from the resurrection point. You still insist that there is a problem with the player? Thal extracted a fragment from his memory not long ago. The projection was suspended in the air, clearly reproducing the entire process of the demon studying the unresponsive ether ball from the demon's perspective. To be honest, this scene is really weird. Because the other party being studied looks like no. To be precise, it is an empty shell. The players who were originally discussing stood on the side of the demon in an instant and glanced at He Xingwen with a look of this must be a super boss and were eager to start a team battle. Wu Xing didn't know the reason, but it didn't matter. Considering He Xingwen's true identity, the other party could never be a boss. However, everyone understood that the players were uncontrollable. If they continued to doubt like this, the situation would definitely go astray. So Wu Xing coughed and said, there is a reason for this. You can even come up with a reason for this? He Xingwen, who left the keyboard with both hands, and had a fat house happy water in one hand and potato chips in the other, was impressed by Wu Xing's on-the-spot reaction. The discussion at the scene reached a climax, and another voice announced the end of the farce with absolute certainty. Impossible. Who is it? Why do you say it's impossible? The unhappy player turned his head and cursed, and shut up quickly after seeing the speaker. Even the extremely confident thrall was shaken by the other party's judgment. Embers? The undead jumped into the crowd, circled around He Xingwen, patted Yuan Yuan, and said, Yuan Yuan is Yuan Yuan. Unless the shadow you are talking about can turn his soul into Yuan Yuan, but if he can turn his soul into Yuan Yuan, then he is Yuan Yuan. Sorry. I don't understand. Andy Su said what everyone present wanted to say. Can you explain it in a simpler way? It's really troublesome. Embers complained. Don't you know that round creatures are creatures from another world? The way they entered this world is very special. How to say? The skeleton gestured a big circle and said, Not only do they look like this, but the souls in their bodies are also like this. Just like a candle that can be blown out at any time. But the souls of other intelligent creatures are different. This is caused by the special nature of round creatures. And it is impossible to disguise. The crowd who probably understood the explanation of the undead fell into deeper doubts and they all turned their eyes to Wu Xing, who claimed to be able to explain. Ready to listen to the other party's explanation. You really let me explain. I was careless. Wu Xing turned to look at He Xingwen, who looked indifferent, and thought quickly, this is personal privacy. I can't disclose it casually. Seeing that there were so many question marks at the scene, Bai Xiaosheng cut the Gordian knot and focused the problem on another point. I respect personal privacy. And there is more than one way to solve the problem. Bai Xiaosheng gestured to the red names who were tied up and said to Embers, The reason why we invited you here is because we want to know everything they know about the Shadow Clan. At present, we know nothing about the Shadow Clan. If the other party does not have the ability to disguise, then perhaps Xing Han Kanlin's abnormal behavior before was indeed due to other reasons. Bai Xiaosheng successfully convinced everyone present. Of course, 
The most critical point is that the special nature of the players makes the speculations of disguise and replacement very unreliable. If the fragment derived from the devil's memory was not really too shocking, the players would not believe this speculation at all. Such a small matter, Embers muttered, and the soul fire in the skeleton suddenly became bright, and clusters of flames floated out. When they scattered on the bound captives, they seemed to dissolve in water and merged into the other party's body. Embers moved his hand bones and pulled something out of the void. The projection was very unstable at first, and gradually became clear with the movement of embers. Several different scenes were pieced together to form all the information related to the Shadow Clan in the other party's memory. The first fragment was some noisy discussions. Shadow? What is it? Remember, don't provoke them. When you hear this name, run as far as possible. Am, didn't you say that we can only keep killing and never run away? But in front of them, if you don't run, you will die. Then I will become stronger and kill them. Silly child, how can I kill the illusory shadow? Remember, no matter what happens, don't provoke them. After this fragment ended, a faint light lit up, and people were fighting everywhere. The player quickly identified the target of the other party's fight, which was the player. Shadow. Shadow. Go find Shadow. Only they can defeat this strange race. Before that, they are more likely to kill us first. I heard that Anda and his team found a way to communicate with Shadow. Can Shadows communicate? I've never heard of it. But they are not real Shadows. They are. What are they? I don't know. Anda only said that they are not Shadows. The fighting ended, and the scene changed to a gap in the world. A group of people trudged through the gap in the world, heading towards a destination. Are we really going to look for the Shadow? I think it's a suicide mission. The division has already been decided. I really hope I can die on the battlefield before. Then at least I can kill a few more enemies. That group of weird guys won't die at all. Even if you kill a few more, it's meaningless. How far are we from our destination? Who knows? Maybe in the next second, we will be killed by the Shadow. Are Anda and the others crazy? Why would they want to make a deal with the Shadow? We don't even know if the Shadow exists. Several races of Dormammu have intervened, and they are eyeing the fertile land. Sly guy, why don't you go yourself? Don't you even have the courage to fight the enemy? Aren't they ready to take action? The Shadow is the best offensive weapon they have found. Really? Have they really found a way to communicate with the Shadow or even convince the other party? Anyway, Enda and the others said so. After the trekking segment ended, the scene jumped to a place far away from a certain area, and there was still a conversation. Is the territory of Shadow ahead? It looks empty. It would be strange if there were people there. That Shadow. If you want to find Shadow, you can only look for it from the other side of the light. How long do we have to wait? Who knows if Buta will come out alive? When we think Buta can't come out alive, look at the bright side. At least we are so close to Shadow's territory and haven't been attacked. Maybe Domum and the others are not lying, but have really found a way to communicate with Shadow. I hope so. Maybe they are here to giving appetizers? And we are those appetizers. After this conversation, the projection jumped to another clip, but the scene did not change. They were still stationed outside that area, looking at the empty world ruins in the distance. Ng has become our ally? This sounds like a joke. Where is Ng? Where we can't see. Anda and the others are back. Have they seen Ng? I heard they did. What exactly is Ng? The other side of the light. The other side of the world. What does this mean? It sounds like describing a place. Not a civilization. I don't know. But those who went to Ying's territory said so. The scene jumped and turned into a group of people trekking again. The number of people trekking this time has increased a lot. It is completely different from the fleeing appearance after the defeat. It has become the scale of an army. Have you seen the shadow? And has said they are behind us. But there is nothing behind us. I think this is a bad idea. A collaborator who can't be seen at all. How do they want to launch an attack? Just like they did before. Kill everyone silently. Ha. Huh. I hope so. The projection returned to darkness. And this strange viewing experience came to an end. The confused players not only did not get any explanation, but even had more doubts. There seems to be no more detailed information about the shadow race in these clips. Embers, that's all they know. Since this race is so mysterious, you shouldn't expect any soldier to know this secret from the beginning. At least you have to capture a big boss to dig out something valuable from his soul. Right? 
Ember's words make sense. Most of the commanders present have begun to think about how to capture the big boss in the ragtag army. By Xiaosheng. But the information mentioned that the Shadow Clan is not the real boss of this invasion dungeon. But Dormammu or something like that. Chuanianjian thought thoughtfully, considering the brutality of the Shadow Clan in the New World. Plus the Line Shadow is the best weapon they have found. I think this invasion may be a large-scale cooperation plan. So the difficulty of this dungeon is so high. That makes sense. A group of stray dogs can't invite such a high-class race to participate in the war. Ro Bazi muttered, thinking from another perspective. This dungeon cannot be infinite. Cycle. The planner must have set a threshold. Once the player's value in the dungeon exceeds a certain critical point, the ultimate boss will be triggered, doubling the difficulty of the dungeon. So, the question is back to the beginning? Wang Luan, what exactly is the Shadow Clan? The other side of the light. The other side of the world. Bai Xiaosheng repeated the word and said, it does sound like a description of a certain place. A player on the side was puzzled and said angrily, Riddler, get out of the planning department. This word caused a thousand waves. And the player said, can the planner be a human being? What kind of puzzles are you playing? Can't you just do it? Really? This kind of battlefield dungeon also has puzzle elements. The noisy players kept complaining. And the natives on the side were also talking. Anuta was very concerned about being tricked by the devil. And asked Andy Sue in a low voice, why are you here? Are you not working on that project? No progress no matter how hard I tried. Andy Su took out a small box from his personal space and said, Why don't you come and see the situation here? Besides, isn't expanding the new world the top priority right now? Anuta, unfortunately. The new world also thinks so. And it seems that they are more prepared than us at the moment. Andy Su lowered his head to open the box and said casually, The situation is not that bad. Even if they can break through the player's blockade, cross this dividing line, and go deep into the world gap. They still have to face endless players. The box made a click. Sound. And the complex blockade system was lifted. Revealing the items in the box. After all. Players are immortal. Andy Su said calmly. And when they go deep into the continent. And come into contact with the kingdom. Andy Su activated the items in the box. And the complex machinery began to assemble itself. The king protects his people. As the first native to come into contact with the king. Andy Su's confidence in the kingdom, and the king is far greater than that of everyone on the continent. The king protects his people. After hearing this, Embers interrupted the conversation with resentment. I don't even know where he went to play. Respecting the king can make you live longer. Of course, you won't die in the first place. Andy Su changed the subject. Anuta, take a look at this. The self-assembled mechanical device inside the box is a complex device. The display device is connected to a huge perception computing program. And the etheric pattern is combined with the computing device. The mage's understanding of ether and the dwarf's talent for machinery are combined to form this device in front of us. Anuta, your new invention with the mage? I haven't heard that you and the mage have other research projects. It's a derivative of the mechanical body project. Andy Su input ether and activated this auxiliary tool. Saying, the mage hopes that the mechanical body can provide this level of assistance. This level of assistance? Anuta looked at the activated device. And the ether wave swept through every space. As if greeting the floating ether. And as if sensing this space, this looks like a finished product. What else does the mage hope it can do? Although it looks decent. It can't be called a finished product. Andy Su demonstrated to Anuta. It can only provide some superficial assistance. Such as deconstructing the ether model. Simple thinking is difficult to do. This is not comparable at all. Ember said dissatisfiedly. Simple thinking is also thinking. Why don't they think about how excessive their requirements are? Andy Su skillfully ignored Ember's words he has heard it many times. Andy Su continued his words. Although there is no breakthrough in the thinking ability of the machine. We have found a new idea in the in-death assistance of Ether. Andy Su looked at the fully activated device and awakened it with Ether. Just like ripples on the sea. Even the players with poor perception could sense a certain existence passing by spreading layer by layer towards the distance. Andy Su became excited. Next, you can use this display tool to see the scene that the great magician sees when he perceives the ether. A scene made of ether. Andy Su's words were suddenly interrupted. Anuta looked at the screen and was a little confused. What does the red dot on this screen represent? Andy Su stuttered. A complete etheric projection. What do you mean? Anuta didn't understand. Is this what we look like in the etheric perception? 
Andy Su's tone was erratic. This auxiliary tool detects a deeper level of ether. And this depth almost reaches the demiplane. Ordinary intelligent creatures can only leave a trace of their spiritual body in the shallow layer of ether. That is to say, this is some kind of creature in the demiplane. Embers noticed Andy Su's abnormality. Came over to look at the screen. And made a surprised voice. Wow. We are surrounded. A group of creatures in the demiplane. Let me expand its perception range to see how many of these things there are here. As Ember spoke, the ether that brushed around him continued to extend. The scene fell into silence unconsciously. Andy Sue, the sensing range of your instrument is too small. This is the limit. Embers complained. I haven't found the end of this group of things yet. He Xingwen turned the character's perspective and took the strange-looking instrument into his sight. The blood-red screen was like a sea of blood, rippling in front of everyone's eyes. Chapter 270 Global Public Beta 81 Friendly Forces The extremely quiet atmosphere and the bright red screen created an excellent horror atmosphere except for He Xingwen. If the resolution of this broken computer game could be a little better, He Xingwen could feel the horror atmosphere more vividly. However, with this blurry picture quality, even if Sadako wanted to crawl out of this game, it would take He Xingwen a long time to distinguish what it looked like, let alone experiencing the horror atmosphere. When other players' heartbeats accelerated because of the two real feelings, He Xingwen had a blank expression throughout the whole process. Just like an emotionless spectator. Until the keyword demiplane floated into his ears. He finally turned over. Moved a little. And reacted. He Xingwen spoke up. Breaking the silence. So the Shadow Tribe is a group of creatures in the demiplane? Embers answered He Xingwen's question cheerfully. I don't think there is any other answer. So they have surrounded us a long time ago. Embers guessed, maybe they are still listening to our discussion? At this point, Embers waved to the side and greeted enthusiastically. Why are you just watching and not talking? Come and say hello. Demiplane is a strange and familiar word. For He Xingwen, this word is closely linked to another noun the Holy Guard. The kingdom's undisputed strongest combat force. Demons can be killed at will. And a small group of Zerg can be wiped out at will. He Xingwen has not yet discovered the limit of the other party's combat power. He even doubts that he can directly rule the entire continent with the Holy Guard alone. The premise is that all other intelligent creatures on the entire continent have been wiped out by the Holy Guard. If the Shadow Race is located in the Demi Plane like the Holy Guard, then the difficulty of this dungeon may be much higher than the players think. At least based on He Xingwen's understanding of the Holy Guard, the players can still lose decently if they withdraw to the mainland collectively now. But there is a problem here. The location of these new civilizations bordering the mainland has potential rules. New civilizations as powerful as the undead and Manxing directly border the mainland. While new civilizations that are slightly weaker start a chaotic era in the South China Sea. As for the weakest new civilization, they border the mainland across the world gap, forming the new mainland today. In other words, although the races on the new mainland have become extremely brutal after thousands of years of fighting, at least they were very weak at first and the Shadow Clan, which is also located in the New Mainland, cannot be an exception. When it first bordered the mainland, this demiplane civilization was very weak. As for how powerful this civilization will be thousands of years later, He Xingwen glanced at the red screen. And in silence, he continued, I think they seem to want to talk to us. Embers didn't think so. They didn't respond to my words at all. I think they might be discussing how to cruelly execute the enemy. Speaking of this, Ember spoke clearly, as if he had seen it with his own eyes. After all, some races pay attention to this sense of ritual. He Xingwen thought, it's possible. Do you know about demiplane creatures? Embers, no. But my dear father may know something. In the silent command center, only He Xingwen and Embers were asking and answering questions. And the atmosphere was harmonious. Someone sent a private message to Bai Shaosheng. I think the devil's guess is not unreasonable. This Shinghan Kenlon doesn't look like an ordinary player at all. Bai Xiaosheng seemed to be silent. But in fact, he was privately sending private messages to some people crazily. Wu Xing received the other party's private message. Bai Xiaosheng, can you reveal Shinghan Kenlon's personal privacy in private? Shinghan Kenlon's behavior is indeed not like an ordinary player. Wu Xing hasn't finished editing yet. So he just forcibly rejected the other party with the word respecting the privacy of colleagues. Bai Xiaosheng made a second choice and sent a private message to Wang Luan. Bai Xiaosheng, how much do you know about Xing Han Kianlan? Is he an acquaintance? Wang Luan, not familiar. We just did a mission together. At that time, 
The team members included me. Xing Han Kanon. Hua Xing. Oh Huang. Yi Quan and Wang Xian. How do you describe the process of doing the mission? Wang Luan, beyond imagination. Unbelievable. Shattering the worldview. Let's put it this way. The guess about the demon is meaningless. His previous performance was even more exaggerated. It's impossible that he was disguised by the Shadow Clan before entering this dungeon. Right? By Xiaosheng, tell me in detail. Wang Luan sent a long list of the process of the last team up to brush the bounty hunter. And finally concluded, I went back to see the scene. One knife per person. One knife per kill. Directly killing through the entire camp. Is there any need to guess? He must be from the special forces. Think about it again. The special forces. Who haven't played the game for several months. And they started killing people right away. Plus the personal privacy mentioned by Brother Xing. I suspect that this big guy may have severe PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder. So, Bai Xiaoxing's thoughts were successfully diverted by Wang Luan. And he made a wrong judgment. While Bai Xiaoxian was busy, He Xingwen and Embers were still talking. Let's not disturb the undead emperor. He Xingwen said, Aren't these half-dimensional creatures here? Since they didn't kill everyone present, they are probably willing to communicate? The atmosphere gradually eased from the horror movie scene of fuck. We were surrounded without knowing it in their conversation. Bai Xiaosheng affirmed He Xingwen's logic, indeed. If they were hostile to us, they wouldn't have let us live until now. Unless they wanted to talk to us. The kingdom also has half-dimensional creatures. And Isu suddenly said, The holy guards who ensure that the laws of the kingdom can be implemented. There was a lively discussion among the players. Fuck. Are those holy guards, who always send players back to the resurrection point also demi-playing creatures? I always thought that the holy guards were just a random shout. And they were essentially codes that the planners typed casually. Every time I tried to sneak into the NPC room in the kingdom territory, I would suddenly die. So they really killed me? In that case, we really haven't seen the holy guards. But aren't the holy guards invincible according to the setting? Players can't hurt them at all. Then is this mysterious race of thieves also invincible? How could the planner set up an invincible boss in the dungeon? I understand. The shadow is not an enemy. This thing is a friendly force. That makes sense. I told you that even if the difficulty of the dungeon doubles, it's not that exaggerated. Hurry up. Hurry up and follow the plot. And turn the shadow into a friendly army. No need to explain too much. The players spontaneously rationalized everything from the perspective of the game not to mention. This logic is impeccable. If it wasn't He Xingwen or the planner himself, I would almost believe it. Some players who knew the inside story or guessed the inside story were out of place among the group of players who thought the problem was not a big deal. After all, games are games. And there is no logical planner in the real world who would so appropriately increase the game experience for players. I have a question. The demon who likes to watch the fun raised his hand and asked, How do you plan to talk to them? The natives looked at each other and kept silent in front of this question. Before today, no one had ever come into contact with such an existence, let alone communicate with each other. Maybe the wizard knows what to do. Andy Sue hesitantly suggested, At least they are the only intelligent creatures who understand the demiplane and have even seen it. When high-level magic wizards are promoted to great wizards, they need to have in-depth contact with their own etheric projections to deepen the connection. In this process, occasionally wizards will mistakenly enter the demiplane. There was a commotion at the scene for a moment, and the wizard was invited over, and then quickly understood the current situation. During this process, He Xingwen was not idle either, and clicked on his skill page to find skills that might be useful. It is true that there are wizards who mistakenly enter the demiplane said the wizard, but it is difficult for wizards who mistakenly enter the demiplane to return to the starting point. The demiplane is very dangerous for us. We don't understand this special existence, let alone communicate with the creatures in the demiplane. At this point, the mage paused, and a real doubt surfaced, logically speaking. Creatures in the demiplane should not have the ability to think, let alone become one of the many civilizations in the new world. If demiplane creatures can do this, how can the demiplane be so chaotic and mysterious? His tone gradually became incredible. It even became a civilization. How did it do that? Bai Xiaosheng grasped the key point, no matter how it did it. Does this mean that he may not be a pure demiplane creature? Not a pure demiplane creature? Embers muttered, you don't even understand pure demiplane creatures. And now you are thinking about impure demiplane creatures? 
Embers glanced at the surrounding intelligent creatures, who frowned and pondered. And his eyes were attracted by He Xingwen, who had a cold expression wrong. Do you also think they are daydreaming? He Xingwen, who had flipped through all the skills on the character page, did not keep up with the other party's brain circuit, and did not even know that the other party was talking to him. Bai Xiaosheng ignored Embers and continued, The Shadow Clan is not a pure half-playing creature, so those people can find a way to communicate with the shadows. Then we can also try to communicate with each other. It's better than being confused. So, next, everyone showed their magical powers and tried to communicate with the invisible shadows in various ways. Players shouted all over the map in various ways. The mage prepared to establish a connection with the deeper ether, and the dwarf swung a hammer on the spot to build a communication device. The demons were dancing wildly, and it was very lively. The demon stood still. Embers played with his bones out of boredom. Azijin lowered his head to contact other people. And He Xingwen was looking at his chat page. He Xingwen didn't find any useful skills. But he suddenly had an idea and felt that the chat channel would meet his needs. The computer version of the holographic game is very similar to the domestic online games. Including the chat page. Which is divided into several large channels. Private chat. World and nearby. Of course. Players who have played domestic online games should know that all players can see the messages in the world channel. While the messages in the nearby channel can only be seen by players within a certain range. He Xingwen had never spoken in these channels before because there was no need. But now, He Xingwen clicked on the nearby channel. And countless conversations flashed across the screen. And he couldn't see the name of the speaker at all He Xingwen's vicinity was indeed a bit too lively at the moment. However, since other players' speeches can appear in this channel, and no response was received from the Shadow Clan. He Xingwen thought that even if he spoke in this channel, he might not be able to connect with the Shadow. Thinking of this, He Xingwen moved his mouse and typed a line of words quickly on the keyboard. Nearby Xinghan Canlon, hello? This conversation was quickly filled with the words of nearby players and disappeared in the chat box. He Xingwen soon discovered a new problem. In such a dense screen, even if the Shadow Clan really saw his words and replied to him, he couldn't distinguish this response from them. He Xingwen was a little disappointed, but also relieved. Although the difficulty of the problem was beyond imagination, He Xingwen never doubted that these problems would eventually be solved. In fact, the more he understood how big the world was, and the more he knew what he could do, the more certain he was of his own insignificance. The more powerful he was, the more he was in awe of the world. Just as He Xingwen was about to start slacking off, the computer beeped prompting He Xingwen that there was a new private chat. He Xingwen switched the chat page to the private chat channel, and a greeting quietly lay in the dialog box. Hello. He Xingwen stared at the unknown symbol and the greeting for two seconds, turned the character's perspective, and looked at the scene of the demons dancing. The hand on the keyboard paused slightly, and typed out new characters. Xinghan Canon, Shadow Clan? Or another description? A special race living in the demiplane? We shouldn't have been in the demiplane. But something unexpected happened. We are looking for a way to solve the problem. But unfortunately, we can't solve it with our own abilities. Since you can have such a clear conversation with us, can you help us? It's really not a pure half-plane creature. He Xingwen stared at the other party's words for a moment, and then looked at the messy scene again. It's impossible to reveal the vest. And it's impossible in this life. Xinghan Kenan, I don't intend to interfere with your troubles. Please don't rush to refuse. We can pay any price for this. Xinghan Kanlan, the price you can pay is meaningless to me. The other party's reply paused for a moment. Then why did you contact us? He Xingwen came up with it easily. Xinghan Kanlan, when I was paying attention to these fragile civilizations, I noticed your existence. For me, it is interesting to watch the growth of those civilizations that are just starting out. Everything we can see is the product of madness. And I am afraid we cannot understand your feelings about it. It sounds like their situation is really bad. He Xingwen thought. And put forward a real opinion. These civilizations are rapidly entering a new era. Perhaps you can seek their help. I am afraid this is difficult. They can't even communicate with us. Let alone give us help. He Xingwen knocked on the table. And said to the main console of the game. Boss. Open a cheat. Golden light flashed. Rejecting his unreasonable request. He Xingwen was not surprised to be rejected, and turned his attention back to the conversation in an instant. Xinghan Kanlan, how did others communicate with you that can't be considered communication? 
They touched our outermost crazy area and transmitted some incomprehensible consciousness. But we guessed that they should want to help us. Then I guess you guessed wrong. But He Xingwen did understand why the Shadow Clan surrounded this place layer by layer, but did not launch an attack. They didn't know the real purpose of their trip. Nor did they reach an agreement with the civilizations on the new continent. Thinking about it this way. The inference made by the player just now based on the common sense of the game was actually correct. This is indeed a neutral force that can become a friendly force of course. Considering that the opponent's level is too high, it is also very difficult to turn the opponent into a friendly force. A problem that they can't solve themselves. Involving the demiplane. A field that the players don't understand at all. Is not the biggest problem at the moment. The inability of players and natives to communicate with this race is the most urgent problem to be solved. He Xingwen was messing around there. And the chaotic scene on the side gradually subsided. Probably because everyone quickly realized from the lack of results that it was not that easy to communicate with these half-plane creatures. Players whispered, Can the consciousness find this race? I don't know whether it can be found. But I know that if the consciousness is in a crowded place, it will be hit by the huge consciousness wave and return to the living point in the next second. The consciousness form is too useless. The playing dogs have definitely weakened this form. The ring clan is so awesome. But when the player becomes a consciousness, he can't even go to a crowded place, let alone kill people invisibly. It's purely useless. To be honest, the planner's notes explain it very clearly. The Ring Clan is a complete body that is made up for the weakness of the consciousness form after countless experiments. We are consciousness, the initial form of the body. In other words, you are like the Ring Clan. After feeding so many racial fragments, you can also become as strong as the Ring Clan. Do you mean that we should also slaughter all the races on the new world to do the stitching experiment? The topic has gone too far. The consciousness body is not good. What about the mage? From what the mage said just now, when they are promoted, they will mistakenly enter the demiplane? Should we ask the mage to go down and bring a message? It's not good to sacrifice the mage right away. Didn't the mage say that the mages who mistakenly enter the demiplane have not come back? Are you trying to brush out the mage's hatred value in one go? What should I do? Is there any other way? I say it again. Riddler. Get out of the planning department. What kind of bullshit plot is this? The old setting of not being able to talk directly to NPCs is a headache. Can't the planners just make up their minds and make everyone speak Mandarin? The whispers of the players are whispers. But the discussions of the natives are much more reliable. After Anuta contacted other Ezijin to inform them of the current situation, he turned his head and looked at the dwarf who was swinging his hammer and suggested, since this mage's assistant can sense the creatures of the demiplane, how about you improve the communication function? Andy Zhu paused swinging his hammer and turned his head to look at Anuta's expression. Like an exploited designer seeing the unreasonable party, eh? Not very good. Are these two situations the same thing? The mage next to him also came over after a small meeting. Let's study it. See if we can find a way? Sar was not idle either. He gestured to Bai Shaosheng. Go and capture a few enemy NPCs who know the process of communicating with the Shadow Clan. The command office became busy again. After confirming that the Shadow was a demi-plane creature, the demon no longer insisted that He Xingwen was a disguised player. Part of his attention shifted to the race that surrounded them unknowingly. And part of his attention remained on this special player. While He Xingwen was fooling the Shadow Clan for a while, the others found their own directions. So it seems that I am the one who is destroying the balance of the game. He Xingwen, who once again seemed redundant, said, My cheat was turned on too high, and I skipped the process and reached the end. The golden light flashed unhappily, and He Tong spoke up to help the other party convey his dissatisfaction. The game console thinks that if you need it, he can help you reverse the cheat code, reduce your gaming experience, and increase your gaming difficulty. He Xingwen coughed and forced a change of subject. You can actually understand what it is saying? It can barely be classified as a program. He Tong, I can understand that its program fluctuations are not very normal. Thinking carefully, these two are actually all programs. It's normal to understand each other. The golden light flashed, prompting someone outside the holographic game cabin to call. He Xingwen glanced at the screen reflexively and found that Wu Xing didn't know when he went offline. He then quit the game. When Xing Han Kanlan disappeared from the crowd. Sao, by Xiaosheng and others who were busy with their own things subconsciously cast their eyes and saw that the other party's offline process was no different from that of ordinary players. 
and retracted their eyes. The holographic game cabin slowly opened. He Xingwen sat up and looked at Wu Xing. Wu Xing had a lot of questions. But since he guessed, He Xingwen was His Majesty the King. He already had a lot of questions. And now a few more would not make any difference. He pointed at the clock hanging on the wall and reminded He Xingwen, It's time to get off work. He Xingwen was stunned for a moment. Then he suddenly realized that although he was playing games at public expense, he still had to get off work. Seeing that He Xingwen did not respond, Wu Xing immediately proposed, not hiding his expectations at all. Do you want to stay and work overtime? He Xingwen was stunned for only a moment and immediately stood up and walked out the door, saying as he walked, someone is waiting for me at home. Who would take the initiative to work overtime? Wu Xing followed him, seemingly unaware of the arrows piercing his knees, and hinted, when you come online tomorrow, seven or eight days will have passed in the other world. He Xingwen only worked five hours, and the time he was offline was calculated at a ratio of one to ten. So several days could pass in the blink of an eye. He Xingwen quickened his pace and continued to walk towards the gate of the institute. Wu Xing also quickened his pace and continued, maybe when you come online, we can already contact the Shadow Clan. He Xingwen finally replied to him, it's better this way. His response was impeccable, and Wu Xing couldn't help but blurt out those unanswered questions. You. He Xingwen stopped and waved to the car parked in the visitor area, showing a bright smile. Why are you here? He Tong held the steering wheel with one hand and the window with one hand. I'll take you to the resort. Dad. Mom went there in the afternoon. And there's no one at home. I'm afraid you'll make a wasted trip. Wu Xing swallowed the question and reminded, You have to go to work tomorrow. Tomorrow is the weekend. He Tong tilted his head. A little puzzled. Are you going to work overtime tomorrow? No overtime. He was confused at work and even forgot that tomorrow was the weekend. He Xing Wen walked quickly to the car. Open the door. Waved to Wu Xing. And looked quite proud. See you on Monday. Wu Xing watched the car speed away, doubting his life on the spot. Really leave when you say so? You really don't care about such a big thing in the other world? Chapter 271 Global Public Beta 82 Mechanical Body Semi-Finished Product He Xingwen's identity as the suspected king allows him to enjoy an undisturbed weekend with his family. But for Wu Xing and others who encounter such an important plot, the word holiday does not exist in their dictionary. Of course, most normal players will not miss such a large-scale event. Even if they are kicked offline due to the online time limit, they will go online immediately after the anti-addiction is over, without wasting a second, and participate in the plot more actively than the internal staff. In this case, Xing Han Canlin's sudden offline and long-term absence is particularly eye-catching. Wu Xing had to deal with inquiries from several relevant people and told him the truth with a heavy heart. He has a holiday on the weekend. Bai Xiaoshan was hesitant to speak, and finally made a sigh from a severe internet addict. It's already the weekend. Although He Xingwen's absence attracted some attention, the attention of the informed players was focused on the special plot, looking for ways to communicate with the Shadow Clan. In this level of plot, players are usually just playing a supporting role, and the NPCs are the ones who are truly reliable. The dwarf strongly rejected Ezigen's proposal to add a communication function to the auxiliary tool. But the situation was stronger than the person. With no other options, the dwarf had to hold his nose and join the mage in a new project to study how to communicate with demiplane creatures. The dwarf's strong rejection was not without reason. This project was not going well from the beginning. To be precise, they had no idea at all. They lacked knowledge of the demiplane. Not to mention the creatures of the demiplane. After two days of stalemate, the game finally turned around the player successfully captured a big boss of high status in the ragtag army. When the captured soldiers were about to fill up the camp, the player's action finally paid off. The team led by Oh Huang Wang was lucky enough to catch the fish that slipped through the net. I don't know why. When the name Oh Huang Wang appeared, I always felt that this development was logical. But objectively speaking, this was definitely a capture operation favored by the goddess of luck. Among the entire ragtag army, there are only a few intelligent creatures who know the specific situation of the Shadow Clan and participate in the communication process with the Shadow Clan. This is a probability of one in a thousand. Emperor O, tell me honestly whether your game character has any special bloodline. Isn't your luck too good? If this is not a cheat, I don't believe it. We have a good relationship. So tell me secretly, where can I buy this cheat? Make one for me too. Jokes aside, after successfully capturing the insider, 
The answer to how the civilization of the new world communicates with the shadow finally surfaced and completely dispelled the idea of players imitating their way to communicate with the shadow clan. Wait a minute. I'll sort it out. Bai Xiaosheng integrated the memory scene he just saw. In other words, they first sacrificed the entire Hash clan, then killed all the Du clan, and finally communicated with the Shadow clan through Dormammu's mental communication. The three races mentioned here all belong to the civilization on the New World. The Hash tribe is a group of intelligent insect creatures. They are not very powerful, but they are very vengeful. When killed by the enemy, they will produce a special substance to mark the enemy, allowing other members of the tribe to avenge him. The Du are intelligent creatures with collective will. They are very good at camouflage and difficult to capture. Their corpses are the best known medium, which has a stable amplification effect. Dormammu is one of the many powerful civilizations in the New World. They are soft-bodied creatures with collective will and honeycomb characteristics. They have strong vitality and are difficult to be eliminated from a physical level. One of their talents is to communicate with creatures within a certain range. The New World used the large-scale death of the Hash tribe to locate the Shadow Clan and used the corpses of the entire Du tribe to buff Dormammu's mental communication and finally successfully conducted a certain degree of dialogue with the Shadow Clan just to achieve the purpose of communicating with the Shadows. Two races were directly exterminated. This new world is too cruel. They simply don't treat people as human beings. Nonsense. Do they look like humans? We can't learn this stuff. Those two races are all dead. Even if they are not all dead, we don't have Dormammu's talent for telepathic communication. It's okay that the races in the new world look weird. But why are their specialties so weird? Because the continent does not have the prerequisites for this communication method. The plan to imitate the new world's method to communicate with the shadows completely failed. However, the dwarves were inspired by the method of the new world. And the research progress that was at a loss was smoothly promoted after changing the idea. The shadows are not pure demi-plane creatures. Since Dormammu can complete the communication through such a simple method as telepathic communication. Theoretically, we can establish contact with the shadows as long as we simulate the environment of telepathic communication. The premise is to find the anchor point. The new world uses the characteristics of the Hash tribe to locate this anchor point. We don't have this condition. But our advantage is that we have found them. The dwarf pointed to the bright red display screen and said, at least we know they are in the demiplane. As long as we continue to narrow the scope, we will always be able to bump into a dead mouse. At this point, the dwarf turned his head and looked at Bai Xiaosheng and the others, and named them, Where is that European Emperor? Under the blessing of the European Emperor's power, the dwarf quickly bumped into the dead mouse and established contact with the Shadow Clan. But this is not the horn of everything going well. The imagined scene of establishing contact with the Shadow Clan and then starting to talk did not appear. At the moment when they were lucky to find each other and establish contact with each other, this auxiliary tool that had been improved many times by the dwarves was directly scrapped. The explosion came unexpectedly, and the players in the command center died and returned to the resurrection point, while the natives were blown black. Fortunately, the energy source of this simplified auxiliary tool does not come from black blood stone. Otherwise, if the black blood stone energy is hit by the face at close range, it will go out of control, and even the corpse will not survive. The group of commanders rushed from the resurrection point with a confused look on their faces. Confused about the current situation. What happened? Why did it explode suddenly? Successful or failed? Who succeeded and exploded on the spot? Do you think we are researching bombs? Andy Su wiped his face and smoothed the dust on his face. I know why the entire Dew tribe must be killed. If the amplification effect is not strong enough and the dialogue with the Shadow Clan is forced. Dormammu and his people will die. Thrall also wiped his face. Speak human language. The ether that this auxiliary tool can hold is effective, and it was blown up by too much ether input. Andy Su felt that the problem was a bit serious. This auxiliary tool is set up for mages, and the ether content it can hold has exceeded most of the current equipment. Embers picked up the blown up bones and suggested, then why not replace it with one with a larger ether capacity? Do you think this thing is everywhere? Andy Su said angrily. There is only one mage auxiliary instrument. Where can I get a larger ether capacity? Embers put the bones together and thought it was not a big problem. You build another one? That's fine. After the army of the new world rushes to the mainland. It will probably be almost finished. Andy Su roared. This is not a cabbage. Just build another one if you say so. 
seeing that Andy Sue was about to be mad at the layman. The mage interrupted. I remember there is another device with mage auxiliary function. And it can definitely accommodate more ether? Andy Sue turned his head to look at the mage. And the two looked at each other for a moment. And Andy Sue calmed down. You mean? The semi-finished product in the Hall of Knowledge? Andy Sue's heart was moved for a moment. And then shook his head and said, No. That thing can't even be started. It's completely a semi-finished product. And this thing is driven by black blood stone energy. And the explosion power is too strong. It can only be tested in the Hall of Knowledge with multiple layers of defense. And it cannot be moved. If the semi-finished product was blown up just now, the entire garrison would have been blown to pieces. The scene was quiet for a few seconds. And the players who rushed back from the resurrection point listened and looked at each other. A player whispered, It can't even be started. This can't be called a semi-finished product. Right? What do you know? This is a complex project involving the soul field. Faced with the player's doubts. Andy Sue was very dissatisfied. Isn't it normal for the etheric circuits of various functions to conflict? The other party seemed to have some sense. Oh, Wang Wang didn't quite understand these professional knowledge. He was just a little confused. Since it can't be started because the etheric circuit has a conflict. Why not cancel the etheric circuit that has a conflict? The scene suddenly became quiet. Embers took over the conversation. It's easy to say. But with such a complex etheric circuit. Who knows which part is wrong? Andy Sue and the mage looked at each other. The sharp-eyed player caught a glimpse of this subtle look and immediately exposed them. Andy Sue, Do you know what went wrong? Embers turned his head to look at the dwarves. We are just guessing. Guessing. Andy Sue's eyes drifted. The soul circuit of the undead emperor. Embers, who was questioned, was instantly furious. There is absolutely no problem with this. He is a professional. What are you thinking? Is there anyone in the world who knows the soul better than him? Andy Sue hurriedly said, I'm not saying it has a problem. I mean it may conflict with other parts. Causing the semi-finished product to fail to start. That's your problem. Ember said with his neck stiff. It's not the problem of the undead emperor. Yes. It's our problem. Seeing that they had reached a conclusion in their argument. Thrall took over the conversation and said. So we have reached an agreement? Andy Sue looked hesitant. If this thing explodes. Sar snapped his fingers. Why not put the experiment site in the new world? Everyone swish. Cast a worthy of you look at the demon. This is easy to cause accidental injuries. Right? But we are at war with the new world now. Right? Besides, are there innocent people in the new world? So the demon's proposal was quickly passed. The dwarf went to the mainland and brought the semi-finished product from the mainland to the new world. Of course, everyone was not so crazy as to use this thing to clear the new world this idea was somewhat whimsical. If the new world could be cleared by a large-scale ether energy explosion alone, it would be too much of an underestimation of the new world. They chose the no man's land near the demarcation line, which was the direction where the miscellaneous army was moving. The victory of these six invasion wars was not without gain. The area near the dividing line had long been cleared because it had become a battlefield. Now it was just right to conduct experiments on the semi-finished mechanical body, considering that the dwarves could not withstand its explosion. The difficult task of starting the semi-finished product was given to the players. Erasing the soul circuit from the semi-finished product and ensuring that the other parts can be perfectly connected is not as simple as removing a part. The complex structure inside the semi-finished product requires constant modification and adjustment to ensure that the traces left by the undead can be completely erased. The dwarves constantly modified the internal structure of the semi-finished product. And the players were responsible for testing the modified effects. Since then, the white light that lit up when the player died has never disappeared. Oh Huang Wang was drafted into the army. Trying to use his power to get away with it. But it turns out that science is a rigorous discipline. And it is a pipe dream to try to solve scientific problems by luck. He Xingwen didn't expect that after a weekend. The original problem was not solved. And even new problems emerged. Before he went offline. The problem in front of him was at least how to communicate with the Shadow Clan. And when he went online again. The problem in front of him became how to start the semi-finished mechanical body? How come the difficulty is doubled? He Xingwen witnessed the scale of the explosions that continued outside the dividing line. Just like fireworks. The sound never stopped. Illuminating the gap in half of the world. Such a bright white light was not caused by the unfortunate sacrifice of several players when they started the semi-finished product. Behind the semi-finished product experiment, densely packed red names were fighting with players. 
which was the reason for the appearance of this endless white light. He Xingwen's deep thoughts did not last long. The players who revived at the resurrection point poured out from the gathering place, like a wave, carrying He Xingwen towards the battlefield in the distance. He Xingwen wanted to leave, but the dense red names were too tempting. He couldn't control himself and half-heartedly followed the crowd into the battlefield. The frontline battlefield is still a small-scale conflict. The number of miscellaneous troops is small, and because they were defeated before, their combat effectiveness is relatively low. The red names are scattered on the land in the world gap. The terrain is flat, and there are no obstacles. For the players in it, it is a straight line of hard confrontation. Continuous output, killing the enemy, or being killed by the enemy. The real army that invaded the dungeon was the army behind the miscellaneous army. But the situation of this invasion of the dungeon was special. So the small-scale conflict lasted for a long time, and has not yet entered the stage of large-scale army collision. But this situation will not continue forever the miscellaneous army has only a few thousand people. And its original role is to be used as a meat shield. Not a long-term battle. After the miscellaneous army was killed by the player. Even if he was reluctant, the player had to face the Shadow Clan. And the probability of the player defeating the Shadow Clan is still zero so far. He Xingwen didn't think so much. He was playing games happily. Computer games are good. Computer games are wonderful. Can mindless keyboard pressing be the same game experience as Mortal Kombat? Anyway, when Mortal Kombat was in progress, He Xingwen would never be able to do such incredible operations as killing through the battlefield. But when mindless keyboard pressing, I lurked. I approached. I killed one with one knife. This kind of game experience even gives people an illusion. Such as the combat power of the red name is simply too weak. Players on the battlefield were busy killing or being killed. And it was difficult to notice other people's movements. But now it was no longer possible not to notice the red names around the player were almost dead. The player stopped and watched the player in front of him lower his figure and sneakily approach the enemy. He threw an ether stun skill over jumped forward and directly covered his mouth and cut his throat. The target he stared at didn't even scream and fell down directly. The opponent backhanded an ether shock, stunning the enemies who rushed over for a second, and then quickly replaced the dagger in his hand with a long sword, sweeping across the scene. And limbs flew everywhere. This great god is almost clearing out the enemies nearby. The player muttered to himself, too awesome. He seems to be getting farther and farther away from us. If he goes any further, he will go deep into the enemy camp. Maybe the master wants to help other players? He Xingwen, who was mindlessly pressing the keyboard and taking away the enemies in one set, stopped in the continuous killing. He lost his target, and the red names around him disappeared. There was only an empty world gap in front of him. He Xingwen turned the game character's perspective. There were still some scattered red names behind him, but they were not as dense as before. As for the front, the empty scene that stretched as far as the eye could see clearly showed the fact that he had killed through the entire battlefield. Am I so awesome? While sighing, He Xingwen pressed the W key reflexively and took two steps forward like a stroll. With just two steps, the screen in front of He Xingwen turned gray and then bright. The familiar resurrection point appeared on the screen. He Xingwen took his hands off the keyboard. And before he could react, he saw countless players suddenly appearing in the resurrection point and they came back from the front line. Fuck. Who crossed the line again? Which idiot rushed into the no man's land again? Don't you know that group of uncles are fishing for law enforcement in the no man's land? If someone crosses the line, all players will be sent back to the city for free. Big brothers and sisters, can you let us do a battlefield mission properly? Seeing that the number of kills is almost full, I died again. How many times have we done it? There are only a few red names left. Can we finish it all at once? It's okay if one person is looking for death. But those big brothers will directly punish the entire family. All the players on the battlefield will die with him. Curses were hurled one after another. And many players could not find the culprit. In the end, they gave up the idea of teaching the culprit a lesson and rushed into the frontline battlefield again. He Xingwen watched them go away, gave up the battlefield, and turned to find Wu Xing and his team. The dwarves haven't finished their troubles yet? The miscellaneous troops are almost dead. Who knows what the half-playing creatures that can't communicate will do after the miscellaneous troops are dead. If the other party no longer restrains themselves, the dungeon will fail in a few minutes. In the command office, a group of commanders and masters gathered together to discuss countermeasures with concern. It's not a question of how to win. The problem is that it's impossible to win at all. 
There is only one solution right now, which is to turn these half-playing creatures into friendly forces. Otherwise this difficulty level is unplayable. Isn't this just waiting for the dwarves to transform the semi-finished product? The players who were discussing saw He Xingwen, waved at him, and continued, in fact, it's okay to fail to pass the dungeon. The problem is that the dwarf NPCs can't die here. Just those few NPCs can make up half of the Continental Conference. Or let them retreat in advance? He Xingwen sat next to Wu Xing and continued to listen to their discussion. The NPCs don't listen to us. How can we let them retreat? Don't even mention letting them retreat. Other races on the continent are already ready to go to the front line. He Xingwen drank a sip of fat otaku happy water and heard this. He couldn't help but prick up his ears. With the situation on the front line, they still want to expand the new continent according to the previous decision of the Continental Conference. Are they crazy? The NPCs do this. Do they think that the front line is not a big problem? Do the NPCs already have a clue to deal with the Shadow Clan? I haven't heard of any progress from the dwarves. Aren't they still bombing over there? Ready to go. What's the situation on the mainland now? It means exactly what it says. Those races are eager to join the battlefield, launch a counterattack, and conquer the new continent. This is to turn being invaded into invading. He Xingwen commented while eating potato chips. It is indeed a familiar alien world. The mainland is not a group of believers who will make helpless sounds in the fierce invasion of the new continent. Compared with the brutal new continent, the mainland is just covered with a layer of civilization. But the essence has not changed at all. What's more? Now the entire continent has been condensed into a whole because of a common goal. And the combat effectiveness has increased exponentially. It is really hard to say which one is more brutal between the new continent and the mainland. While this group of high-level players were discussing, the latest news came from the front. With the unremitting efforts of the dwarves, the semi-finished product was finally successfully launched. Now, the distance to turning the Shadow Clan into a friendly army and reversing the situation of the entire copy is only a mouth cannon. Chapter 272 Global Public Beta 83 The First Expansion of the Continent The vast nothingness and countless broken lands floating in the void constitute the most common scenery in the New World. At the outermost edge of the continent, there are no endless mountains and ridges, nor endless plains, only the dead silence composed of the world's debris and the world's gaps. Those world debris bordering the other world are all survivors of the doomsday, and they are all full of the breath of death. The most vital continental plants cannot survive on these debris. Of course, this does not mean that there are no plants here. But most of the plants that can take root here are not normal. The barren living environment is the origin of the chaotic order of the new world. These familiar scenes in the past now have other colors. The cube suspended in the void has unlocked the auxiliary form because of the successful startup. Turning into a complex instrument suspended in the air. The flashing arc surrounds the instrument. Constantly echoing the weak ether here ether gathered here, and a beam of light that could not be perceived by the naked eye stood in the void, like a huge beacon, guiding the direction of ether. Its presence was so strong that people could easily ignore the tiny figures in front of the instrument. Sal looked up at the instrument floating in the air. A little puzzled, it's flying too high. How are you going to use it? Just use it like this. Andy Sue controlled the semi-finished ether link and said, you don't think we have to operate it manually. Do you? It doesn't matter how it is operated. What's important is how to use it to communicate with the Shadow Clan. The high-level players, who were there to join in the fun had no say in the process, and could only watch the dwarfs show their skills. As the dwarfs controlled the ether to go deeper into the semi-finished product, the light column that was barely visible to the naked eye became brighter, showing its presence in the ether. The display screen on the instrument suspended in the air lit up, and a full screen of red appeared reminding people of the terrifying scene of the unknown creatures in the demi-plane surrounding them endlessly. The red color was constantly magnified on the display screen, searching for the signal that had been linked before. This took a lot of time. The players who were full of expectations began to get bored while waiting, and even wanted to leave, when the picture on the display screen suddenly changed, and the red color faded. A large group of active, indescribable unknown creatures crawled on the screen, spreading out complex curves. Everyone present was refreshed and looked at the scene intently, trying to figure out what it was. It looked a bit abstract, and it was difficult to compare it with the familiar existence form of intelligent creatures. It looked like a product of some kind of madness even just looking at this image. You can feel a strong sense of inhumanity. Of course, 
it is not quite right to say that there is a non-human feeling in the other world. After all, humans in this world are just one of many intelligent races. And most intelligent races have different forms. So to be precise, this should be said to be a strong non-intelligent biological feeling. However, this world is very tolerant of the different forms of intelligent creatures. The other party's appearance did not cause discussion among the natives. On the contrary, they were excited about finally finding an anchor point for communication. Under the complex operation of the ether, the communication with the demiplane was difficult to advance. After successfully finding the anchor point and receiving the signal from the other party, intermittent text appeared on the screen in disorder, mixed with garbled characters. The player squinted his eyes and tried to distinguish the information. Problem. Death. Eating. What does the garbled characters mean? Isn't the dwarf's translation level too low? It's just garbled. Is there a problem with the design of this thing? The player whispered and questioned the dwarf's craftsmanship. And thrall directly through the question in front of the dwarf. Even if the telepathic communication is awesome, the gap shouldn't be so big. Right? Or is there something wrong with your design? Andasu? Analyzing garbled characters is not Andasu's strong point. But when it comes to machinery and forging, the dwarf is an absolute master. He was very sure. It's definitely not a design problem. There's something wrong with these half-plane creatures. They exist in a different form from intelligent creatures. It's already very good to be able to do this. Besides, the complexity of this signal is just like a vortex. The mage stared at the screen and said, Why are their thoughts fluctuating without any rules? There is no buffer at all. This is not right. Have you noticed these garbled codes? This is basically meaningless. Meaningless? These half-plane creatures. Are they crazy? Embers guessed with interest. Didn't you say before that half-plane creatures should not have the ability to think? Sar reminded Embers, since they can reach an agreement with the new world. It at least proves that they can communicate and make decisions. Who knows if they have really reached an agreement? Embers hit the nail on the head, with so much meaningless garbled text. I doubt that the intelligent creatures in the new world understand what they are saying at all. If they have not reached an agreement, why did the Shadow Clan appear here? Sal asked back. It is impossible that they suddenly want to go out for a walk together? The mages who gathered together to discuss informed others of their discussion results. Exclude the garbled text. Rearrange the reverse word order. And remove some meaningless nonsense. This sentence should mean, they want to contact us because they need help. He Xingwen, who was among the players, glanced at the speech from, on the nearby channel. Nearby? You seem to be trying to establish contact with us. If you can hear it, we need your help. The mage is still quite good. At least the key points have been translated. Thrall smiled brightly upon hearing this. Ah, it seems that they really haven't reached an agreement. He winked at Anuta and said, Now the opportunity is in front of us. Anuta was not as optimistic as him. He was concerned about more practical things. How do you plan to convey our meaning to them? Although the difficulty of communication is greater than we initially thought. The dwarf muttered, but this is caused by the other party's special state. If we just convey our words to the other party, it shouldn't be so difficult. The other party's special state. Embers, do you mean the special state of the other party being a madman? Anyway, they are definitely not normal. Andy Sue muttered, and the light beam covering the semi-finished product suddenly lit up and spread to the surroundings. He Xingwen glanced at the new content popping up in the nearby channel. Nearby magic creation special state. What problem did you encounter? The other party responded quickly. Nearby, it's a surprising miracle that you actually did it. Maybe he is right. You are indeed worth observing. Nearby, the problem we encountered is very complicated. I am not sure if you can understand it. You seem to know nothing about the demiplane. But we have no other choice. Nearby, we are stuck in the demiplane. If you understand the demiplane, you should know that the demiplane is a disordered place. There is only chaos here. No order. Any rational existence cannot survive here. This is our problem. We need to get rid of this state. He Xingwen easily read this long list of content with the help of the plugin. But normal people without plugins have to face the sudden explosion of information. Signal. The content suddenly increased. And the garbled text filled the entire screen. Making it more difficult to interpret the other party's words. I feel like I'm taking advanced mathematics. Is this text or mathematical symbols? Fuck. A blackboard full of problem-solving processes. The sense of deja vu is too strong. Are we going to stare at this pile of garbled text all day? It's obviously an important plot. But I'm a little sleepy. Can the planner be a human being? 
Is this meaningless plot setting really necessary? It is imperative to promote Mandarin in the game. The player's order became lax. Some chatted. Some played Gobang. And some even played cards. No one logged off. They all waited for the plot to finish. He Xingwen was very patient. After all, he could open two web pages and play other games while waiting for the dwarves to finish the plot. Bai Xiaosheng and Wu Xing gathered together to discuss the strategy of counterattacking the New World. He Xingwen listened and felt that the New World was simply vulnerable in front of the joint army formed by the continent. The players were bored and killing time. The mage finally finished the translation and informed them of the translation results. This long paragraph should mean that this communication is a miracle. And the following long string is all describing this miracle. And this means that they have no way out. They said so much nonsense? Sar was the first to express his doubts about the mage. Didn't they say what problems they encountered? I haven't finished yet. The mage squinted at the demon and said, They are stuck in the demi plane. The scene was quiet for a moment. And everyone was not surprised by this conclusion. That's right. Ember said on the side, They are not pure demi plane creatures. There must be something wrong. So they became demi plane creatures. Maybe they plunged into the demi plane to avoid the doomsday. And they couldn't get out in order to survive the doomsday. I am not surprised by the strange things that intelligent creatures do. He is the most qualified person to say this. After all, the undead king is the most typical representative of him. Few people can be as courageous as the undead king to kill the whole world before the doomsday. This plan alone was already very exaggerated. And what was even more exaggerated was that he actually succeeded. But most of the struggles of other worlds before the end of the world all failed just like the half-plane creatures they were facing now. Anuta had to pull the topic back. I thought the focus now was how to turn the other party into a friendly army. Isn't that very simple? Thrall snapped his fingers and said, Tell them that we will help them solve this problem. Just with this sentence, I want them to unite with us. I don't think it's realistic. The mage pointed out the problem objectively. They are not fools. But they are crazy. Not much different from fools. Embers muttered. Bumped into Andy Sue and said, little guy. What are you daydreaming about? Isn't this the thing you are looking for? Andy Su didn't react to the name of the undead, and was a little confused about his words. That thing? Are you stupid? The skeletons were scattered all over the ground, forming a dwarf-sized skeleton on the spot. They said to the dwarf face to face, this is a creature that maintains sanity in the demi-plane. Isn't this the last piece of the puzzle that the mechanical body needs? Yes. Andy Su clapped his hands fiercely. Bursting with strong enthusiasm, how do they maintain sanity in the demiplane? Is there anything special about their thinking mode? I think they should be half crazy now. Someone muttered, they may not still maintain sanity. I can help them. Andy Sue didn't care about that. He said firmly, I will study and see how to confirm their current state and pull them out of the demiplane. Hearing this, the mage couldn't help but said, Pull out? Do you think the demiplane is a quagmire? You can pull things out of the quagmire by stretching a rope down? Ignorance. This is a demi-plane. A special area between the world projection and the front of the world. If you can pull him out of the demi-plane, wouldn't it be better to just open the door of the world projection and send them to the world projection? Wait. Sar interrupted the mage's roar and repeated the key words. World projection? You mean, if we can solve the problem of these demi-plane creatures, we can almost figure out the situation of the world projection? The mage was stunned for a few seconds. Did I say that? Is this what I meant just now? He sorted out his logic and said, What I mean is that the demi-plane, like the world projection, belongs to the field we have not yet touched. Sar interrupted him and said, If we can enter the demi-plane, then we may be able to enter the world projection? The mage hesitated more and more. These two situations are not the same. Under the fiery gazes of the natives, the mage's voice gradually became smaller, of course. Understanding the situation of the demi-plane will definitely greatly promote our understanding of the world projection. That's okay. Sal looked at Anuta and said, You have no objection? It doesn't matter whether I have an opinion or not. We have to hold a continental conference to reestablish the next direction. Anuta said very rationally, But for now, this does not prevent us from reaching an agreement with each other. These two are simply amazing. Vividly performing the live version of the word in cahoots. The players whispered, what do they mean by this? Translated. What they mean is, first trick those half-plane creatures. As for whether to help, we need to hold a meeting to discuss. People's hearts are not as good as they used to be. 
and the world is going downhill. He Xingwen saw that the nearby channel had another conversation. Nearby magic creature special status. We have finished communicating. We are happy to help you solve this problem. If you don't mind, maybe we can talk about cooperation in depth? The other party seemed to have been waiting for a reply and responded to their words very quickly. Nearby, please give us a reason why you did this. This time the mage translated very quickly. Of course, it was also directly related to the fact that the other party's words contained less content. Reason. Mage, they want a reason. Thrall was unhappy. Can't it be because we are willing to help others? Even a madman would not believe this reason. After Andisa laughed at him, he turned to the mage and said, Just tell them the truth. Because we want to study them. No. Help them to understand the demiplane. So as to find the world projection and open the door. Thrall interrupted the dwarf and said, By the way, remember to share our great goal with him. I believe even a madman will be moved by the new world. Nearby magical creature special status. We need to understand the demiplane better. And our goal is in the unreachable world projection. And some of the intelligent creatures among us believe that they can achieve this goal by helping you. And they think this is the best way to understand the demiplane and the world projection. Nearby magic creation special status. We are working hard to build a new world. A great goal to make all world projections part of the world. The other party's reply this time was not as timely as before. And was a little late. Nearby, a very convincing reason. He Xingwen switched pages back and forth. Witnessing the whole process of the two sides reaching an agreement through half-guessing and half-guessing communication. Putting aside the distrust between each other. The Shadow Clan was very cooperative with the research plan. Of course, the current research focus of the dwarves is how to communicate more accurately with each other. Rather than having a guessing conversation. Bai Xiaosheng and his friends don't pay attention to these follow-ups. They only pay attention to one point the plot is over. The Shadow Clan has changed from an enemy boss to a friendly army. So should the dungeon be over? Have all the miscellaneous troops died? Why is there no progress in the dungeon? It's unreasonable not to clear it on the spot. Strange. Why is the dungeon progress still falling? Is there a bug in this game again? The player was confused and contacted the players on the front battlefield to confirm that the miscellaneous troops had been completely cleared. Theoretically, the dungeon should have ended perfectly after the enemy was eliminated. But in fact, the dungeon progress that was hard to accumulate went backwards, and the players watched it return to zero. Then, in full view of everyone, the dungeon task in the task bar actually changed its name. From the sixth invasion of the new world to the first expansion of the continent, the dungeon description was updated synchronously, and the name of the player changed from a warrior who resisted the invasion to a brave adventurer. Fuck. I was wondering why the planner designed this dungeon so anticlimactic and whimpering, which didn't fit his previous style. So he has this trick? Does the dungeon description mean that we have changed from victims to perpetrators? Even the dungeon's goal has become to invade the new world and expand the continent's territory. Is this an overplanning? Am I that kind of person? Wow. Look at the dungeon clearance rewards. The rewards are based on the military merits accumulated in the dungeon. There is no need to hand in the spoils seized from the enemy. And, stop talking. My sword is thirsty. It's time to start the prelude to counterattack the new world. The generous dungeon clearance rewards effectively stimulated the player's desire to fight, allowing them to forget about the trivial matter of turning the invasion dungeon into the expansion dungeon. He Xingwen watched the group of commanders excitedly lead the dwarves and discuss the player's offensive strategy, and then turned to look at the natives who could not hide their excitement. Compared with expanding the new world, they care more about the Shadow Clan trapped in the Demi Plain. After all, the New World is too barren. Even if it becomes part of the continent, it is just an expansion of the continent. However, the projections of those distant worlds represent not only fertile land, countless new worlds, but also amazing benefits. The Aboriginals planned a vast branch of the Temple of Knowledge here, where the research on the Shadow Clan will be carried out. At the same time, the continent which confirmed that the Shadow Clan had become a friendly army and the obstacles on the front line had been eliminated, began a large-scale troop mobilization. The aboriginals of the continent did not intend to make a joke like the New World, where they invaded six times, but did not even enter the door. At the Continental Conference held not long ago, various races and forces finally established the rules for the division of the New World in endless negotiations directly related to the contribution made by each race in the War of Expansion which directly led to the current situation where the entire continent was moved, 
and it turned the continent into a community of interests. Among them, if the players do not join the adventure group of the Ezijin New World branch, they naturally belong to the kingdom, and the contribution value obtained in this dungeon belongs to the kingdom. Of course, if they join the adventure group of the Ezijin New World branch, then these players belong to the Ezijin forces, and the contribution value obtained in this dungeon will belong to Ezijin. This is the reason why Ezijin has placed advertisements everywhere to recruit adventurers. As the only one among all forces without territory and garrisons, the army representatives they can send are the major mercenaries mainly composed of adventurers. The advantage of Ezijin is that they are really rich and can use money to build a multi-ethnic mixed legion. The Knowledge Hall branch was built on the front line. And at the same time, the major armies coming from the continent were also stationed on the front line. Humans, dwarves, dragons, druids, mages, orcs and even intelligent creatures in the South China Sea gathered here the undead chose to stay out as always. A steady stream of intelligent creatures, whether players or natives, went to the front battlefield along the bridge across the world gap and threw themselves into this unprecedented war. The garrison was quickly expanded to the new continent, and the player's infrastructure army went online to perform the operation of building roads while fighting. This shows the results of the kingdom's crazy infrastructure training in the past two years. Players have already mastered the tricks of wartime infrastructure construction in the long-term battle of wits and courage with druids. He Xingwen started to slack off again, occasionally going to the front line to show other players the tricks of killing in and out on the battlefield as the front battlefield progressed. The enemy's strength increased and could not be reproduced again. Even He Xingwen, who was cheating, could not kill through the enemy's defense line on a battlefield of this size. There were too many people. When He Xingwen controlled the game character, everything on the screen was full of intelligent creatures. Even the dragons, who were of astonishing size, could only be trapped in a corner of the battlefield by countless enemies in a grand battlefield with an unimaginable number of participants. It was a battlefield completely different from the previous wars on the continent. A collision of two continents. Chapter 273 Finale Prelude to a New World In the collision of the two continents, each individual becomes a tiny existence among the huge numbers. After participating in several frontline battlefields, He Xingwen gave up the idea of joining the battlefield because of frequent death and resurrection points, and turned his attention to the research progress of the indigenous people. The good news is that they finally communicated with the Shadow Clan with accurate meaning. The bad news is that through the conversation, they learn from the Shadow Clan how bad the other party's current situation is. Most of the fellows of the Shadow Clan who were stuck in the Demiplane were completely assimilated by the Demiplane in Madness. And the remaining part became a kind of monster that is difficult to define in Madness. Without a body, unable to contact the real world, they can only be trapped in the Demiplane and witness themselves being assimilated into part of the Demiplane. They do not have reason. But the part of humanity that has not been completely assimilated by the Demiplane is still struggling desperately. Of course, the indigenous people of the other world do not have overflowing sympathy. The focus of their attention is that if they don't hurry up, then the part of the Shadow Clan that can communicate will also be assimilated by the Demiplane into an existence that cannot communicate. This means that they must hurry up. Therefore, when He Xingwen went to the Knowledge Hall branch, which had not yet been completed, this group of researchers were busy day and night because the Knowledge Hall branch had not yet been completed. The dwarves, mages, undead, and demons were crowded together, advancing different research projects simultaneously in a small area. The slowly rotating semi-finished product is located in the center of the research area, and as the only translation tool that can communicate with the Shadow Clan. It remains in an auxiliary state for a long time. Fierce arguments were heard from time to time, accompanied by many incomprehensible terms. He Xingwen's arrival did not attract any attention. There were players everywhere here otherwise, who would build the Knowledge Hall branch. Other races are not ignorant of construction. But who makes players the cheapest labor with the best cost effectiveness? Just give a task, and you can trick a large group of them. He Xingwen manipulated the game character to circle around the arguing natives, parked the character in a corner, opened a new web page, and played the game while listening to their arguments through headphones. I think the key is how to enter the demi plane. No. 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 I think the key is how to influence the demiplane so that they can get out of the current predicament. No. I think the key is. After losing all the happy beans, He Xingwen switched back to the game. The argument just now came to an end. 
the natives who did not convince each other split into several small groups and tried to contact the demiplane with their own problem-solving ideas. Just a short while after he Xingwen switched back to the game, several mages were affected by the demiplane. And either rioted. And they were directly carried away. Sure enough, it's unprofessional. He Xingwen muttered, if the great scientist was here, this situation would never happen. It's a pity that the great scientist is not here. He Tong's voice rang out, although they have gone further than other races. They have not yet broken through the limitations of the world. You reminded me. He Xingwen, it's time for us to talk to the great scientist. As soon as he finished speaking, the keyboard dissipated under his hands, and this familiar bedroom returned to the golden light together. Only the computer screen was still floating in front of He Xingwen, faithfully showing the debate among the mainland's natives over the semi finished products. Have you decided yet? He Tong, I thought you wanted to play for a while longer? Let's talk about it after the game becomes more difficult. He Xingwen glanced at the high definition screen. The game is too boring because it's too open. He Xingwen said goodbye to his old friend who had been with him for several days. Run this game well and wait for me to come back. The main console of the game impatiently kicked him out of the holographic game cabin. The holographic game cabin slowly opened. And He Xingwen climbed out of the game cabin and looked at the clock on the wall. There were still two hours before the end of get off work. He walked around the lounge, left a note for Wu Xing, and walked out of the lounge. The monitoring, sensors, infrared and other equipment that should have detected He Xingwen's movements at the first time all seemed to have failed, allowing him to leave the institute unimpeded without anyone noticing. The disappearance of He Xingwen was discovered by the Special Investigation Bureau when Wu Xing went to remind him to get off work on time. The Special Investigation Bureau quickly moved, blocking the institute and the roads in and out of the institute checking the monitoring equipment inside the institute, and sending people to contact He Jiangwen and others to get relevant information. Half an hour after realizing that He Xingwen was missing, countless information was collected from various places to the relevant personnel. The other party did not appear in the monitoring inside the institute. The monitoring in the lounge retained a video of the other party exiting the holographic game cabin at 3.05 and turning around in the room. There was no specific video of the other party leaving the lounge. The other party left a note for Wu Xing, asking for a, for the next long absence. The voice of the report suddenly paused, marriage leave. We have contacted his parents and confirmed that he went back home after leaving the institute and told his parents that he would be away for a while on the pretext of a honeymoon. No images of him were found at any transportation hub. We can confirm that he has disappeared from our site again. We couldn't find him before because we didn't know the true identity of his majesty the king. But when his identity was clear, he disappeared from our sight. Considering the rigor of the current identity information, it is very difficult for him to forge a false identity again. The other party. None of the messages left behind indicated that he would never come back. We have reached a tacit understanding with each other. It doesn't make sense that the other party would change his identity after exposing himself. It's more like he has something to deal with and has to disappear from our sight. Or, we should consider another point. Is he still on Earth? He went to another world. Which other world? At least not the other world we are familiar with. Up to now, His Majesty the King has not returned to his kingdom. While a small group of people on Earth are busy because of He Xingwen's disappearance, another world is busy because of He Xingwen's appearance. We thought you would never appear again. The great scientist expressed his eager attitude towards the appearance of His Majesty the King. After all, so much time has passed. You have to understand that I have to deal with a lot of things to ensure that when I am not there, no accidents that we don't want to see will happen. Of course. Of course. We understand very well. In fact, the fact that you came to the appointment itself is better than those unnecessary explanations. Let me think. How should I explain to you the progress of our current research? While the other party was talking non-stop, He Xingwen was distracted. I'm a little curious. Are the great scientists who are talking to me the same group of great scientists as before? Yes. They are the same group of people. The current form of existence of the great scientists is very special. They will still die. But this special form of existence has extended their lives to a length that is completely different from that of the creatures on the mainland. The lifespan of creatures in this dimension is very different from that of creatures on the mainland. He Xingwen, this sounds very suitable for scientists. The long life is enough for them to go further in scientific research. He Tong, yes. I think this is why Li Wang chose to let the great scientists transform into this form of existence. Are you listening? 
The great scientist who had been talking for a long time reacted when Yi Xingwen didn't respond and asked with some doubts, What do you think? Yi Xingwen didn't listen. But it didn't matter. After all, he wouldn't understand even if he listened carefully. He Xingwen glanced at He Tong's summary and found the reason why the great scientist was so excited about his appearance. Their research has already penetrated into a certain area, and they only lack a key that can be put into practice. Their idea for the next experimental step is to let He Xingwen bring the semi finished key they have researched back to the mainland and confirm through practice whether this key can establish a two way channel between the mainland and the world projection. The two way channel is not their ultimate goal. It is just a product that will inevitably appear in this research process. What they have to do is to break the world's limitations and reach the other end of the world's cognition. Compared to the ultimate goal of breaking the world limit, the idea of opening a door in different world projections proposed by the mainland natives is not arrogant at all. After all, the great scientist wants to demolish the whole house. It sounds good, but I have a better way. What better way? I have a key from another world in my hand. I suspect that this world has broken through the world limit. The great scientist's emotions fluctuated violently. What do you mean? Another world has contacted the mainland? Damn. I said that the timing of our transformation of existence form was too hasty before. We should have waited. The special world form of the mainland has too much value to study. The great scientists complained one after another, as if they had missed hundreds of millions. He Xingwen had to give a more detailed explanation. It's not the mainland. The mainland is still studying how to find those world projections. It's another world. The world of players? The great scientists were excited. We are indeed very interested in the world where the players were born. If you are willing to provide. No. For now. I have no idea of providing you with the coordinates of this world. I mean. I have a key to another world. I'm sure this world is much further than we have gone. Are you interested in this key? Of course. The great scientists did not hesitate at all. We are interested in everything that can advance the progress of research. It's just a small problem. Compared with our connection with the mainland, the world barrier between another unknown world and us is more difficult to break through. After all, this place and the mainland are essentially the same world, just in different dimensions. Breaking through the barriers between world projections first can help us absorb experience. So in the research plan we have formulated, the mainland is more suitable as an experimental target. Speaking of this, the great scientist stopped to discuss for a while and continued, based on what you said before that the mainland wants to build a new world. Our goals are the same as those of the mainland creatures. We both want to establish a two-way channel with each other. Although the other party said a long string, He Xingwen accurately received the subtext of the other party's refusal. He Xingwen thought for two seconds and changed his strategy. What about after establishing a two-way channel with the mainland? What is your next step? The great scientist talked freely, maybe at that time. We can discuss how to break through the world barrier of another alien world. We will never be satisfied with the status quo. We will tirelessly explore the distance we have not yet reached until we die or reach the limit of cognition. It seems that we have reached an agreement. I am happy to help you. The great scientists gathered together to discuss for a long time before giving a response. Then you may need to stay here for a while. We need to study how to let you bring a specific piece of ether information back to the mainland. This is why He Xingwen took a long vacation on Earth. He needed to stay here for a short time. The disproportionate time in the two worlds made it difficult for He Xingwen to control the specific degree of time passing. This is indeed more like He Xingwen and He Tong on their honeymoon. After all, they are the only two people in this dimension who have nothing to do and are not disturbed. The duration of the first continent expansion dungeon exceeded the imagination of most players and even exceeded the imagination of the natives. After the expansion war was successfully promoted as everyone expected. The subsequent situation was out of the control of both sides. The joint army of the continent did not crush the new continent as expected. On the contrary, the new continent even repelled the offensive trend of the continent. The advantage of the continent is that they have a large number of people and work together, are well equipped, and have unified command. The advantage of the new continent is that the strange new civilizations are beyond the cognition of the continent. In the new continent, humanoid intelligent creatures are extremely rare and most of the new civilizations are intelligent creatures with different forms. Each one is like a boss, with strange attack methods and endless big moves. Moreover, before the outbreak of this war, they had experienced the tempering of death. Even if they were in a weak position, they would only become more and more courageous. 
players soon became the main force in the dungeon, using their immortal bodies to maintain the advantage of the joint army. War is the best way to improve combat effectiveness. At least the players have jumped out of the bottom of the food chain through this large scale. Long lasting dungeon finally. It is not just an NPC that can defeat them. This war that lasted for nearly a hundred years finally led to peace talks due to the emergence of an unexpected factor. A certain mage received an invitation to study in the Salfa Federation. Of course, under the premise that the Salfa Federation has become a ruin. It goes without saying that this invitation to study actually came from another world projection. In nearly a hundred years, the scientific system on the continent has formed a new system after stepping over the old framework of the Salfa Federation. And this mage is a researcher at the forefront of this scientific system. The invitation from the Salfa Federation put the opportunity to open that door in front of the continent. The peace talks between the continent and the new world are based on this broader interest. After a hundred years of fighting on the battlefield, both the continent and the new world understand each other much better than they did a hundred years ago. The reason why the new world invaded the continent is because the continent is a fertile land with amazing wealth and population. And now, what lies before them is a continent that cannot be defeated in a short time and a more fertile new world. The choice of the new world has naturally changed. It doesn't matter if they can't invade the continent. They can invade the new world together. The continent's choice to negotiate with the new world is a decision made after multiple considerations. As mentioned before, the new world is not fertile. And the opponent's combat power is ridiculously strong. The cost-effectiveness of expanding the new world through war is too low. After a glimmer of hope for the goal of building a new world, the continent retreated and chose to expand the new world in a more peaceful way. War may be the offensive method that the new world is good at, but order is the way that the continent is better at. This is another invisible battlefield. Of course, the subsequent negotiations, frictions, and peaceful evolution between the new world and the mainland will be a matter of time. What is in front of them now is the key handed over by the projection of another world, which is the prelude to the new world. An ordinary working day. Wu Xing took a break from his busy schedule and poured himself a cup of coffee in the lounge. Just as he lowered his head and raised his head, there was suddenly one more person in the room. Wu Xing's hand holding the coffee was motionless, as if he didn't notice that there was one more person in the room. But his other hand quickly reached for his waist. And at the moment he grasped the weapon, a familiar face came into his sight. Wu Xing paused, lowered his head and drank a sip of coffee covering up his complicated thoughts, and said casually, Have you finished your honeymoon? A full ten-year honeymoon. It's really long. He Xingwen lowered his head and brushed his collar. Not caring, be content. It's worth celebrating that it only took ten years. He Xingwen looked around the familiar lounge. The furnishings and decorations were almost unchanged. Everything remained the same as he had left including the holographic game cabin. After looking around the room, he walked towards the door and Wu Xing hurriedly put down the coffee and followed his footsteps. Any big news in these years? He Xingwen walked into the corridor and asked casually. Wu Xing paused for two seconds. Do you mean the earth or the holographic game? He did not wait for He Xingwen to answer, and continued, in the competition with mutant creatures, humans have the upper hand. The sea and air routes have been reopened, and the superconducting college has covered the entire China. In order to maintain social order, the country has introduced a strict identity system and established a superconducting administration bureau in each province and city to maintain grassroots order. He paused. From the current point of view, we have truly entered the era of superpowers. He Xingwen, who was walking in front, stopped and tilted his head to look at him. What do you think? Wu Xing shrugged and said, or do we have to face more challenges before we can enter the real era of superpowers? No, you have already entered this new world. He Xingwen retracted his gaze and said as he walked, It's just that the future will never lack challenges. How is the research on the unknown device in the other world going? The wizard gained a lot of inspiration from it. But they finally decided to share it with the great scientists. They judged that only the great scientists could truly analyze this unknown device at present. Wu Xing paused and realized his subtext. The other world will not leave us a chance to slack off? Don't be silly. You will have more problems to solve than this. He Xingwen walked slowly past the members of the Special Investigation Bureau, who were stunned by the sight of him, and continued, Let's talk about the holographic game. What major events have occurred in the past ten years? The war between the two continents has never stopped. Wu Xing pondered, in addition, the scale of the school has expanded. 
and many new civilization professions have emerged. The scientific system has been extended to the entire continent, and the number of scientists has increased a lot. The semi-finished mechanical body of the dwarves has finally been tossed out. They sent the Shadow Clan to another world for projection. But there are still many problems to be solved for other races to reach that dimension. Because of the news from the great scientist, the war has stopped, and now they are busy holding a continental meeting, ready to divide the new world. He Xingwen walked out of the research institute and glanced at the new energy-driven floating car. Beep beep. He Tong honked the horn and put his hand on the car window to signal them. Where did this car come from? Wu Xing glanced at the strange car and decided not to care about such a small problem. He followed He Xingwen into the car. Wu Xing asked tentatively, So, your honeymoon is over? We are going to travel around the world next. He Xingwen sat in the passenger seat and looked at the self-driving hover car with some curiosity. The changes in this world are really amazing. Wu Xing stared at He Xingwen's profile and said, Compared to you, the world has indeed changed a lot. You look no different from 10 years ago. He Xingwen turned his head and blinked at him. Early retirement is the best way to stay young. To be honest, your hair is really falling too fast. Wu Xing touched the sparse hair on his head. As if he saw his lost youth, his majesty the king has not appeared. It only took Wu Xing a few seconds to feel sad about his youth. And he quickly returned to work. He won't appear again. Right? I said it a long time ago. The most redundant thing in the kingdom system is the king. He Xingwen fiddled with the buttons in the car and said, I don't know which button he pressed. The stable and suspended car suddenly pulled up sharply into the air and then rushed forward. He Xingwen quickly stopped the action. The automatic driving regained control of the vehicle, slowed down, and fell back to the ground. He took back his hands that were touching everything and said with some sympathy, all the driving points must have been deducted. Right? Wu Xing gloated, of course. He took off without an application and he exceeded the speed limit. Wu Xing's gloating voice gradually stopped, and he realized something was wrong. Don't tell me you used my driver's license. We don't have a driver's license. He Xingwen said confidently, if not your driving points, whose driving points will be deducted? Wu Xing opened his mouth to speak, but had nothing to say. So he angrily changed the subject. You just said you were going to travel around the world? He gave an uncertain look. A true world tour? Or a world tour similar to a honeymoon? the latter. He Xingwen, if we run around on earth, I'm afraid it will add a lot of unnecessary work for you. You run around outside the earth, and we don't have it easy. Wu Xing complained, I thought you said you would retire soon and that you didn't plan to care about it at all. But now it seems that you still have a lot of things to deal with. Travel. You can't just stop at will. He Xingwen stretched, didn't elaborate, and as the car began to slow down, he changed the subject. How are my parents? Wu Xing, except for not looking good to us every day, except for the constant nagging that his son was exploited by us and couldn't even come back for the new year. Everything was fine. Speaking of this, Wu Xing paused and looked at He Xingwen suspiciously. How did you do it? Call them regularly during the 10 years of disappearance. And even make video calls? I thought there was no signal where you honeymooned. He Xingwen got out of the car. There is indeed no signal. So this is a secret. He Tong followed him and cast his eyes towards the closed door in front, and asked He Xingwen for his opinion. I'll knock on the door? Wu Xing walked past the two people who were afraid of home, took out the key and opened the door skillfully, turned his head and looked at the two people who stopped at the door with some doubts. Why are you standing there? Come in and sit down. After speaking, he shouted into the house, Uncle and Aunt, who do you think is back? Who? You don't go to work so early in the morning. Who did you bring with you? He Jiangwen, who turned out of the living room. Paused, son? He Xingwen hesitated for a rare moment. Dad, I'm back. After the initial shock, a roar of anger resounded throughout the house. You still have the nerve to come back? He Jiangwen picked up the broom beside him and rushed straight to He Xingwen like a tiger. Dad, He Tong, please help me stop him. He Xingwen slid back and retreated behind He Tong, relying on his father not to attack He Tong and using him as a human shield hiding from place to place. He Tong was forced to be sandwiched between the two. And from time to time, he had to reach out to stop He Jiangwen, whose anger value was off the charts. In an instant, the scene was in chaos. Wu Xingqiao took two steps back, looked up at the rising sun as if it had nothing to do with him, listened to the noise in the room, and showed a standard smile of gloating. This is really a beautiful day. 
Chapter 274 Extra, The Future It's Really Spectacular. Dear viewers, I am honored to have this opportunity to take you to the cradle of human civilization. The Earth. I am your old friend. Anonymous. Come on. Everyone. Say hello to the blue planet in front of us. The picture moved forward steadily with the sound. Including the blue planet in the vast universe. The barrage became lively in an instant. It's really the Earth. I applied several times but I didn't get the admission qualification. I'm so envious. The shadows surrounding the blue planet are stargates. Damn. You may not encounter a stargate even if you drive a spaceship in the universe for hundreds of light years. But there are so many of them near the Earth? It's because there are too many stargates on Earth, which is not suitable for human survival. So in the 102nd year of the new era, humans implemented the Noah's Ark plan and immigrated to the universe, forming the current human federation. Don't young people learn these things in history class now? You old-timers. Go look through the compulsory history courses now. The only thing missing is the history course that starts from the Big Bang. Even the Superconducting Academy, which is full of training courses, has history courses. This is called Civilization Inheritance. Besides, aren't there a lot of optional content that doesn't need to be tested? You don't need to take the test. But unless you don't play games, you must learn the history before the new era. There is no way. Because His Majesty the King is from the old era? He has a huge influence on the Gaia world. Gaia is the initial world of the game, and the beacon of all stargates. There is no way to escape. Although the bullet comments were swiping the screen very fast, the anonymous person accurately captured the dynamics of each bullet comment. I hope that through this live broadcast, everyone can have a deeper understanding of the origin of civilization. Next. The signal may be lost for a short time. Don't worry. This is a necessary review procedure for entering the Earth. The live broadcast was slightly stuck for two seconds and switched to another scene. In the Starship automatic port, countless huge military starships came and went, and the cold steel reflected the whole world. I am now on the outermost layer of the Earth, ready to accept the final inspection. By the way, have you seen Hope Number 1? It is the latest warship developed by the Human Federation. My favorite. I cracked open. The whole port is full of warships. This kind of scene is the first time in my lifetime. After all, it is the last line of defense to enter the Earth. And a complete armed force is stationed here all year round. By the way, why can the anchor broadcast the Earth for us? Is this a new viewer? Strange. There are still people who don't know Anonymous. Does anyone really think that Anonymous' main job is anchor? He is a three-star researcher who completed further studies in the Sarfa Federation a national treasure level big shot. What the hell? Is this true? Isn't it said that no human has met the qualifications to go to the Sarfa Federation for further studies so far? No way. Is there really anyone who doesn't know that Anonymous is a mechanical race? Mechanical. No wonder. Does your tone sound a bit discriminatory? Big brother. Even if I have 800 guts, I dare not discriminate against mechanical bodies. This race is simply cheating. The auxiliary type directly becomes a scientist. And the combat type directly goes to the front line. There aren't many machines in the human federation. Right? The environment is too bad to attract talent. And the few machines that come are all crazy fans of His Majesty the King. Don't say it. Since the appearance of this stargate, we have become a rural area. The concentration of ether is not high. And the level of technology is not good. If Gaia hadn't relied on the advantage of being the first to research the Stargate and turned itself into a beacon for all Stargates, causing different worlds to go to other worlds through Gaia, they would not have become the center of the star map. Besides, their ether is not that dense. And their technology is even worse. Don't say it. If the Salfa Federation is also considered a part of the Gaia world, then the Salfa Federation alone is enough to explode the technology tree of the Gaia world. Then we have to go back to the old question that has been debated for hundreds of years. Can different world projections of the same world be considered a world? This must not be counted. I support the Salfa Federation to become an independent world. The Salfa Federation itself doesn't care. Why are you arguing? Damn it. What did His Majesty think at the beginning? He didn't help the Earth. This user has been banned by the anchor. Ha ha ha. You are stupid. I have said that all the mechanical life forms in the Human Federation are His Majesty's crazy fans. You can argue. But don't talk nonsense. Anonymous took the communication tool to the surface of the earth with a camera. And said as he moved, 
What do you mean His Majesty didn't help the Earth? If it weren't for His Majesty, the holographic game would not have appeared, let alone the Stargate and the subsequent Human Federation. Anonymous kept on talking, besides, it is a recognized fact that His Majesty saved Gaia and the human world. Speaking of the kingdom, I heard that the throne of the uncrowned king of the kingdom is still vacant. They are still waiting for His Majesty to return. Isn't this normal? After all, the reincarnated species in the kingdom are still reincarnating. I don't know what kind of deal they made with the dead, but they got rid of the normal death cycle and were able to continue to reincarnate among the people of the kingdom. Since these diehard fans of His Majesty are still alive, it is normal for His Majesty's throne to still be hanging high, as expected of the sealed gods and great demons. The bumpy camera stabilized again after arriving at the destination. Anonymous arrived at the surface of the earth. He turned the live camera to the distance and recorded the strange scenes on the surface of the earth. After humans migrated from the earth, most buildings were occupied by rampant plants. And human creations that once covered the entire earth became part of nature again. In the dense forest, some areas have been cleared. And large-scale machines that operate automatically provide certain supplies for the research sites. Coexisting peacefully with the earth without destroying the natural environment. Most of these research sites are located near the Stargate. And an astonishing number of ground troops are deployed. The Stargate is the most eye-catching among them. It is an undoubted miracle. A stable transmission space that tears the world gap. Unstable gaps will evolve into extremely dangerous black holes. And may even destroy the planet. But stable world gaps have become safe transmission spaces. What is even more amazing is the number of stargates on Earth. The cracks that tear the world apart appear in the void like ugly cracks. And the torn part flashes with a doomsday scene like lightning and thunder. The camera swept across the distance. And the densely packed stargates suspended in the air came into view. The stargates are not on the ground. Nor in the air. They belong to another dimension that is difficult for humans to reach which greatly reduces the possibility of humans and other animals entering by mistake. Most people who are approved to cross these stargates must use special methods to cross the world. As the camera quietly extends, the barrage increases again. Stargates. So many stargates. The earth is well protected. How can it not be good? Visitors from other worlds. The first stop is the earth. Even if it is a face-saving project, the earth must be protected well. I still like to brush those world copies in the game. Seeing so many stargates on the earth with my own eyes. I always feel insecure. Me too. It's too uncomfortable to be unable to revive. Games are still good. When you can revive infinitely, I am the king of the world. When you cannot revive infinitely, I am just passing by. Sorry to bother you. Why do you have to play in person when you can use the game to play other worlds? Besides, the Federal Research Bureau has long said that games will have the same effect on reality. This is why the Earth is a remote countryside in the star map. We can't always rely on holographic games to contact other worlds. Right? Besides, how long has it been since the holographic game cabin was improved? It has been so many years since His Majesty the King disappeared. And no one has studied the principles of holographic games. The Salfa Federation can't figure this thing out. The holographic game cabin is black technology. I wonder how His Majesty the King made it in the first place. I heard from the gossip that it was given by the Father God. Indeed, the connection between the holographic game cabin and the other world also involves the existence of the Father God's remains on the faith side. There are pros and cons. His Majesty the King is cheating with the Earth. So we must face the realization that our real level is completely insufficient to deal with the problems encountered after cheating. Hasn't the Human Federation recently begun to recruit talents from the faith? and technology sides from all worlds? Not many people come. Who made us live in the countryside? I envy Gaia again. Their position is amazing. Needless to say, they are the transit station of all worlds and the transportation hub of the star map. Although the Human Federation is in the countryside, players enjoy dual world identities. Creating a game character on the continent automatically enjoys the identity of the kingdom citizens. At the Gaia World Continental Conference held every 10 years, Players also enjoy the rights and obligations that the Gaia World races should have as a separate race. The bullet screen was flashing quickly. Anonymous took a look and didn't pay much attention to it. Instead, he approached his goal the Stargate in front. After the army station next to the Stargate passed the review, they made way. As the distance between him and the Stargate shortened, the facilities arranged next to the Stargate were reflected in the camera at the same time. 
the Stargate was not deserted. In fact, as a two-way passage between two worlds, most of the people who used the Stargate were visitors from other worlds. This caused a lot of conflicts and riots at the beginning, and it almost turned into a war. But now, the management of alien visitors and Stargates has formed a complete set of perfect procedures, just like the entry and exit between different countries in the old era. Alien creatures who have obtained permission and passed the assessment can hold a passport and pass the Stargate to arrive at the first stop of the Human Federation. That is, the Earth. And now, in front of the camera of the anonymous person, the entry work is in full swing. This Stargate should be connected to a certain world of consciousness. The alien visitors who floated out of the star gate and were guided into the building were shining balls of light, flashing red, orange, yellow, green, blue and other colors, floating in the air. Do you see the real-time translation? These are tourists. After all, this is the birthplace of His Majesty the King, and this has brought a lot of tourism performance to the Human Federation. Host, look, they are greeting you. Anonymous looked at the lens. His live broadcast equipment was the most advanced one. Equipped with the latest version of the translation equipment. When these alien visitors appeared on the camera, they were equipped with translation. At this moment, the group of light balls following the staff were indeed greeting him. The fluctuations that were difficult for humans to detect were captured by the translator. And a line of text floated next to the light ball on the screen look. There is a stupid mechanical body. The anonymous person waved to them as a greeting and then carried the live broadcast equipment to other stargates. Different stargates connect to different worlds and welcome alien visitors from different worlds. Some of these alien visitors from different worlds and different forms are similar to human forms, but more of them are non-human forms. After completing a series of entry procedures, they gathered at the port and went to different destinations from there. Wow! I think in the old era, no one would have thought that the world would become like this. I put myself in the mindset of humans in the old era and thought about it. At that time, they were still trying to explore the universe. But now we have entered the multi-world era. I heard that humans in the old era didn't even believe in ghosts. Ignorance is really bliss. There are indeed no ghosts in our world. So this can't be called ignorance? Right? Then in the eyes of people in the old era, this scene is a hundred ghosts parade at night? The camera is facing the distance and the flow of people who have completed the entry procedures are gathered together. Floating. Crawling. Flashing. Animals. Humans. Machines. Plants. Insects. These physical beings. And ghosts. Light balls and other special beings without physical entities. Form a mighty tide of intelligent creatures. And walk towards this universe. A certain barrage expressed the common voice of everyone. It's really spectacular. Chapter 275 Extra Daily life it's amazing. Ding ling ling. The sun shines through the gauze curtains into the room, bringing a reassuring bright light source. The man on the bed reached out from under the quilt and groped for the alarm clock on the bedside table in the distance. The alarm clock rang alone for a few minutes and was turned off by him. The man who retracted the quilt yawned, turned his back to the window, and fell into a peaceful and beautiful dream again. It's time to get up. He Tong, who was watching this scene leaned against the door and knocked on the door panel. Reminding He Xingwen, if you are late, you will miss it. He Xingwen poked his head out of the quilt and stared at He Tong blankly for a long time. His brain was not fully awake yet. He instinctively smiled at He Tong and tried to use the honey trap. Let's enjoy the world of two people at home today. How about it? He Tong showed a helpless expression. Stepped forward and rolled up the quilt. And dug He Xingwen out of the quilt. He Xingwen rolled softly into his arms leaned up skillfully, yawned, and was not fully awake yet, still vaguely emphasizing, two people's world. He raised his head and exchanged a kiss with He Tong. He Tong sighed resignedly, half hugged and half embraced He Xingwen, who seemed to have no bones, and took him to the bathroom. Brush your teeth. He Tong squeezed the toothpaste and handed the toothbrush to He Xingwen. He Xingwen brushed his teeth and washed his face by instinct. And only when he sat in the car, did he wake up completely in the gradually intense driving? What happened? Where are we going? He Xingwen looked down at himself, and then at the scenery outside the car, and felt that the time from getting up to leaving the car had magically disappeared from his life. I reminded you yesterday not to play so late. Today there is a performance you have been looking forward to for a long time. He Tong complained as he approached He Xingwen and smoothed his messy clothes. 
He Xingwen recalled for two seconds and remembered, showing a genuine regretful expression. It's all Xiao Lan's fault. I told him I had something important to do today, but he kept dragging me to play cards. He Tong helped him tidy up his clothes and sat up again, without exposing the reality that it was He Xingwen who dragged him to win a game last night and refused to go home. He Xingwen looked at the time anxiously. Can we still catch up? Will we miss it? That won't do. I've been looking forward to it for so long. He kept talking to himself for a long time. And then shut up in frustration. Why do I feel like I'm getting more and more nagging? Is it because I'm getting older? He Tong turned his head and stared at the young and vigorous He Xingwen for a long time. When He Xingwen began to get nervous, he slowly said, You know that we have different perceptions of age. To me, you have just entered puberty. He Xingwen's dimples were forcibly pursed. And he pretended to be serious and said, Unfortunately, to me, I am already an immortal. An immortal over 500 years old? He Tong showed a surprised expression. Even for ordinary races in another world, it's not considered long. Right? And now the life expectancy of humans on Earth has increased significantly. He Tong stopped the car and said to He Xingwen, A mere 500 years is really not long. He Xingwen couldn't control the dimples at the corners of his mouth. And they were exposed openly. I like your unwavering tone. Just saying the first four words is enough. He Tong got out of the car from one side, turned to the passenger side, opened the door, and took He Xingwen out of the car. I like you too. I don't think this is fair. He Xingwen shook his clasped hands and looked around. We have been through the same long years. But why am I getting more and more nagging? While you are getting more and more reliable? Maybe it's because I finally passed adolescence and became a reliable adult? He Tong took He Xingwen to the seat he had already reserved and stroked his hair skillfully. You taught me how to love someone. I just have a better learning ability. The green grass connected to the distant sky is lush and green. The blue sky seems to be able to accommodate all sorrows. And white clouds of different shapes are swaying in the sky. The weather is good. And the people around are also good. He Xingwen squinted his eyes comfortably. Leaned back. And lay on the grass. Staring at the sky above. Speaking softly. As if afraid of disturbing something. Are we on time? Yes. He tonged and lay beside him. Holding his hands and interlocking his fingers. And he also spoke softly. Wait a little longer. It will start soon. It's amazing. He Xingwen described his feelings at the moment. All of this. I know. He Tong turned his head to look at He Xingwen. Slightly exerted force on his hand. And held the other's hand tightly. Saying, you are by my side. How amazing. He Xingwen turned his head to say something. And a strange vibration came from afar. He Tong looked at the sky and reminded He Xingwen. The show has begun. He Xingwen turned his head and stared at the sky intently. In the azure sky, there was a small black dot, which was inconspicuous and could even be easily ignored at first. But as the ether of the entire earth gradually boiled, the small black dot gradually revealed its true appearance. It was like some kind of huge meteorite, rushing towards the earth with the momentum of smashing through the entire earth. He Xingwen stared for a long time, and suddenly asked with a gloating look, have they started to make a commotion? Yes, they are trying to locate this meteorite of unknown origin. He Tong smiled and said, trying to intercept its landing point. I have to say that human beings desire for survival and never give up are really surprising. They are easily frightened. He Xingwen sighed, after all, the world is too dangerous for them. It is humans who are too fragile to the world. He Tong retorted, this world is too gentle and has hardly created any competitors for humans. In the conversation, the huge meteorite approached quickly and became more hideous because of its excessive proximity. He Xingwen suddenly laughed. I guess they must think this is the end of the world. Many humans have noticed this astronomical wonder. And social media has been a sensation. He Xingwen stared at the huge celestial body that covered the sky. He had encountered it under different circumstances. But it was indeed the first time on Earth. Similarly, only when he was on Earth could he truly realize how terrifying the other party was. He Xingwen stared at it intently. Watching it approach. Watching the sky return to darkness watching it collide with the earth. It was not a physical collision. The moment the other party hit the earth, darkness suddenly disappeared from the sky. The huge celestial body disappeared, and the blue sky returned to human vision. Humans were still at a loss, and He Xingwen and his team were waiting for the most exciting part of the show. Outside the normal physical world, the fragile world composed of ether collided with Manxing. The huge impact swept everything, 
and the amazing ether vortex slowly took shape. He Xingwen sat up from the grass, put his hand on his chin, and admired this scene. A miracle evolved from pure violence. The vortex could only be seen in the ether at first. But as the content of Mangxing involved increased, it gradually emerged in the reality that humans could see. It emerged in front of He Xingwen and his team. The vortex tore through the space, unstable, and shattered everything around it. Anyone who watched this scene would think that it would evolve into an amazing disaster. Except He Xingwen and his team. Is this the reincarnation of Mangxing? He Xingwen sighed. He went back and forth so many times in the barrier between the New World and the Mainland. And even broke the barrier. Triggering the Hundred Years War between the New World and the Mainland. But the result was just lost? He Tong, before all conditions are met. Mangxing will never find the right key. But when all conditions are met, the key will naturally appear in front of him. He Xingwen stared at the unstable vortex, a miraculous performance. The real miracle will have to wait a while. He Tong also stared at the vortex. The power it contained was so strong that it easily tore the world apart. But at the same time, the power it contained was so gentle that the grass in front of the vortex could maintain its original form without being affected at all. Wait for it to stabilize. The instability of the vortex lasted for a long time before it slowly tended to stabilize and turned into a stable gap of a regular shape. The world gap floating in the air looks like a door. A door to another world. He Xingwen tilted his head and looked at the ethers that were smashed by Man Xing's head. In the chaotic ether, countless vortices were slowly forming. They were not as lucky as this already formed world gap. Most of them needed a long time and enough luck to stabilize. The world is really wonderful. He Xingwen, what do you think this should be called? The gate of the world? They will give it a good name. He Tong looked at the time, stood up and said, they should have found this place. We have to go. He Xingwen stood up and looked back at the world gap that was calmly suspended in the air. Does it know what it did? It doesn't know. He Tong held He Xingwen's hand, took a step, and disappeared from the spot. It just did what it should do. Just when their figures disappeared from here, the planes came roaring, leading the neat and orderly army to surround this place. Next, He Xingwen glanced at the data that was changing like water around him. Let's go find Xiaolan to play cards. I will definitely win this time. Let's go! The data disappeared, and a strange scene emerged in the void. The huge bubble wrapped their treasure and squeezed into a ball in the void. The void is not pure void. Occasionally, some inexplicable scenes will emerge, and occasionally some strange creatures will float by. It is more like a bigger sea that encompasses countless lives and streams. He Xingwen jumped into the blue bubble with familiarity, just like falling into the clouds. The soft object held him steadily. As he passed the outer membrane of the bubble, countless things appeared around him, nagging parents. Young He Xingwen. Computers connected to the internet. Fat Otaku Happy Water. And other existences that should not be here. He Tong followed behind him and passed the outer membrane of the bubble. The stable data wiped out everything, and all existence disappeared instantly. A mini bubble of the same size as He Xingwen and others emerged from the bubble. Coming? The blue bubble floated in the large blue bubble and spoke in standard Mandarin. It's just some things he wants. If he likes it, I can give it to him. The bubble floated in front of He Xingwen and made a proposal that had been rejected countless times. Take your parents back. Guarantee the original flavor. From a certain perspective, they are real. If I can get whatever I want, then this world is too crazy. He Xingwen rejected him skillfully. Don't mention this. Let's play cards. Crazy? Little Blue was puzzled. And don't people get whatever they want? He Xingwen opened his mouth to refute. But remembered the other party's special existence and gave up the idea. Why am I telling you this? Of course you can get whatever you want. Anyway, humans can't do this. He Xingwen heard whispers coming from the pile of bubbles that were secretly peeping. How pitiful. Little Blue was unhappy. Stay away. He is my friend. How stingy. The colorful bubbles ran away. Let's play cards. Xiao Lan was happy. As he finished speaking, a set of tables and chairs and familiar poker cards appeared in front of him. The poker cards were automatically shuffled, dealt, and formed into a card pattern in front of the blue bubbles. Wait a minute. Hasn't you come yet? He Xingwen looked around and said, We won't play landlord today. We'll play double buckle. Oh, that'll have to wait a while. Yu's world is a little far away. It will take him some time to get here. Xiao Lan put down the cards. 
took out the fat house happy water and handed it to Yi Xingwen. And chatted about family matters. How is the performance you've been looking forward to for a long time? It's a miracle. Do you like it? Xiao Lan was excited. Although it's a bit troublesome to create Manchester Star. If my good friend likes it. No. No. He Xingwen waved his hand to reject his kindness and started a new topic. Didn't you say you would bring new? The God of Creation? Where is the new God of Creation? I sent him a basic course on the God of Creation and asked him to learn it by himself. The cards in front of Xiaolan turned randomly and built a small castle. I still have to watch so many worlds. How can I have time to bring new people? Do you have so many things to do? Why do I see you playing cards every other day? Whale rushed into the bubble and exposed the other party's lies in standard Mandarin. You obviously want to have more time to play cards. Right? The castle built of cards fell to the ground with a crash. And Xiaolan jumped up and said, What do you know? I am studying how the world will develop if I don't interfere. Don't make excuses. You shook his tail. Play cards. Play cards. The playing cards were automatically shuffled and redealt. Xiao Lan looked at the cards and said to Yi Xingwen, By the way, I asked other people for you. They welcome you to play cards. What? The difference in treatment is too big. You said dissatisfiedly, Three? When I went there, you asked for a lot. Xiao Lan said disdainfully, You is everywhere on the street. But he is a living human. If you like humans, wouldn't you make a few yourself? You said unwillingly. Xiao Lan showed a regretful expression. Most races in my world are non-human creatures. There are no pure humans. You also know that the human race is fragile and picky. And ordinary creators will not easily challenge such a difficult creation. He Xingwen glanced at the large blue bubble. In its deepest part, there were several overlapping world phantoms, which were the treasures it guarded. He Xingwen has understood the saying through his long life experience. The world and human cognition depends on the limits of their cognition. And the world itself is far more gorgeous than human imagination.